<laughs> you can't stay away from that hat. Adam Savage, hell yeah. There's that, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeehaw, motherfuckers. Pokemon fame, love it or hate it, you're looking at our generation's Ken Thompson right here. What? What? Are you saying I'm going to make C? February Bullock donated $5. Why am I even giving you money you just told me to F off? Well, I've got no problem with February Pollock. Are the alerts not coming up? Are alerts not coming up, chat? Um, or did I just miss these? They should theoretically be coming up. Hmm. 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 There you go. John, John bought a t-shirt. We don't, we don't have merch chat. Chat, do we want merch? Do we actually want merch? No. Yes? Why don't we have merch? God damn it. Jen Bullock donated 65. Oh, oh, look who finally wakes up. Make a Nessie squishable. Okay. 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 You draw? You literally fucking draw? No, I trace. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. <sighs> March Bullock donated one dollar. Thank you so much for the dono. Right into the scam. Right into the scam. We're raising money for a freedom phone. We're at uh let me we're at $62 out of $4.99, but with promo code Trump, you save $50. <laughs> so so we're actually uh Someone, someone effectively donated fifty dollars by giving us the the. Someone figured out the secret tip. <laughs> Does that include tax and shipping? I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> howdy, Mr. Streamer. Hi, Mr. Roboboto. How are you doing today? Do bit count, bits count towards scam? They don't show up in the meter, but they do count. Oh shit! I didn't realize I had my screen up. Oh no! What was I doing? Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for the 271 biddies, Dither. Hell yeah. People in this stream have so much sympathy for an unemployed person. Fuck you! <laughs> Monopoly money launderer. At least my money's fucking real. You fake ass paper money launderer. How do you even launder that? Oh, man. Can't even get a job, Lel. <laughs> How do you balance your Redmond day job versus streaming? I quit it. That's how I balance it. Because you know what I care so much about? I care so much about chat. Chat's just so nice here. Chat's where I want to be. Nah, I, I quit my job uh, last last week. I mean, my, my two weeks is up on Friday, but... Uh, I'm taking that very seriously. Um, holy shit, I didn't know that. Good luck on whatever you do next. Yeah, I'm I, I'm just deciding to be a professional streamer. Um, so this is this is where we're at now. You were fired, weren't you? I wish, because that means my stock would have paid out. <laughs> Any job offers? Yeah, I've got a bunch of job offers. I haven't really decided on which one. I'm gonna take a couple months off. I think. Hang out with chat. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's okay, Kimoza. I do know the hardship of being unemployed. Hell yeah, Masters BTW. And that's why I like seeing the sub badge by you. Spending all the, all that cash directly into this stream. Print nightmare, <laughs> print nightmare drops, Gamozo leaves. Thinking face? I didn't drop the ball on that. What do you mean? What do you mean? That wasn't my fault. I didn't write that code. Hanging out with us. Chat appreciates it. Hell yeah. Couple months of streams. Hell yeah. More hot tub streams coming up. We could do some hot tub streams. I was going to do one this morning if I got up early enough. And then I got up early enough and then I didn't. Um. <laughs> I wondered about that. No, I actually never saw anything about Print Nightmare in, in, inside. 
send an angry email to Satya Nutella to get you fired so your stock vests. <laughs> Satya Nutella. <laughs> Holy shit. Suppin' bitch, thank you so much for the $6.63 going right into the, the pockets of a scammer. Um, <laughs> uh, there was a message with that. Can we chuckle at funny number? 663. Is that, is that because six, and then if you take 63 and you add the two digits together, you get nine, so you get 69? Is that, is that what it is? N nice, nice. 69, the weed number? Yes, yes, it is the weed number. Why didn't your fuzzers find it? God damn it, Masters BTW. Implying I ever ran my fuzzers instead of just write them. Is FuzzOS going to be used in this project? Absolutely, that's going to be coming up soon. Join Geohot Startup. You can stream together. Is Geohot still doing the same thing? Is that even a startup anymore? I feel like uh, I feel like he's been doing that for a while. Uh, is that a fireplace or a TV on the right? On stage right? Or your right? Because it's a fireplace. There's actually two fireplaces that you can see in the in the current cam camera angle. <laughs> nice. Uh... Probably some fucked up currency conversion. Oh shit! Did they uh, did they donate in a different currency and it got converted? I don't know. Where is the hot tub? The hot tub's right there, right there. But I'm not in it, as as you might be wondering. Um. All right, now you can put the hot tub on top of the chimney to get cheaper heating. I didn't think about that. That's a good idea. Uh, look at this man flexing his fireplace. I actually, actually, I have three fireplaces. That's how you know you've made it. Three fireplaces. Actually. Do you ever use them, though? Yes, I use them when my power goes out, which is pretty often. Uh, is there a way to lock Twitch player to 1080p? Um... Maybe? I have no idea. <laughs> um. Oh wait, wait, the total amount is now 69? Let me uh let me grab the this uh thing and copy it and then we can paste it onto here and then we'll put this we'll put this down here. There you go. Ah I see. So now the sum is $69. Ha, 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 ha. Nice. Nice. Um, if I count fireplaces in both the houses my family owns, I own seven of them. No one asked you, Jan Pollock. There you go again. God, what is going on with Jan Pollock today, chat? Just nonstop disrespect. Just ban him? I know. Today, ban Bullock. <laughs> flexing a fireplace is also flexing that you live in a good climate that isn't hot as balls. Oh, yeah, it's actually wonderful here. Ban Pollock? Mmm. I don't know. They're getting a lot of votes there. All right, all right. Can we get yays for keeping Jan around and nays for getting rid of Jan? Uh, let's see. Yays for keeping, nays for getting rid of. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, okay. Okay, you have decent support. You have decent support. I am... I am surprised. I am surprised. Huh. Well, I guess... I guess we're gonna keep uh, Jan Pollock around. All right, all right. I support disrupting elements. I just want to see the world burn. You can do votations on Twitch, uh, but this is better. I can't trigger you if he's banned. 
damn it. Oh, all right, chat. Now this I can stand behind. All right, so we did some uh, kangaroo court. Absolutely. All right, so we did some analysis um, the other day. Uh, as you can see by this graph. Uh, look at this graph. Um, so you can see that today we started streaming at, at like 9, 9.30, which is like right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Peppo G. Peppo G. Mm-hmm. Monka hmm. Monka hmm. Yeah. So here's all the data for all the dates. So uh, someone someone must be uh, streaming at Friday at 6 p.m. I don't know who does that, but that has skewed up the entire median for all data points for 2021. EU un uh, oh EU friendly. I thought you said EU unfriendly. Yes, EU friendly stream. Linus tech tips. Yeah, I'm wondering about that. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, everything's relatively consistent. We're going to try and start streaming at like 9 or maybe 8 and then cut off the stream uh, whenever we feel like it. Uh, are you going to Black Hat and Defcon? I'm not. <sighs> Leaves Microsoft, becomes streamer, becomes a WoW streamer. I miss DGen hours. Oh, we'll always have DGen hours. Forcing me to have a good sleep schedule? See? See, we're being supportive. Uh, maybe Giant Waffle. He started pro learning programming with a few thousand viewers. Oh, fancy. Becomes a Tibia streamer? Ah, yes. All, all three Tibia streamers. All right. I miss when we program her on this stream. Aw. I do too. Maybe we could write some programming. What is this sleep? Um... I think it's like the S3 state or S4 state. It's like an ACPI thing. It, it like reduces power usage on your computer. Um, this used to be a hot tub programming stream, Sag. Have you seen the framework laptop? I haven't. Uh, how, how bad is it? I just heard. The news today. Okay, I was feeling like I wanted to listen to Creed, and I really don't want to listen to Creed. Chat, what do I want to listen to today? And why is it? Um, Nickelback? I just listened to Nickelback yesterday. Yeah, I want to be a rock star. I, I don't know why I said that in the wrong pitch. Um, look at this photograph. Every time I, hear the, uh, I don't know the lyrics of this song. T Swift is Pog. Mmm. You know what? I'm gonna listen to Red because my friend Stall told me that I need to get more familiar with Red. So I know, I know, uh, Speak Now and Taylor Swift and Fearless really well, but I don't know Red really well. I can't believe Red was in 2012 now. That's fucking crazy. Starts with State of Grace. State of Grace, fantastic T-Swift song. Fantastic. Red is literally the best band ever. No, I'm talking about the T-Swift album, not, not the band Red. Red has some good songs, though. I recognize that. Geohot rap song. Uh, you know, look. Geohot doesn't have shit on my rapping. And listening to his inferior, low-quality rap just is disappointing to my ears. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Twitch rap battle when beef hell yeah let's go Geohot diss track when Geohot more like not hot oh got him chat got him <laughs> yeah when are we gonna drop a diss track what are we gonna drop a uh what what's gonna be in the diss track 
talking about uh, how he couldn't hack it in CTF, so he had to he had to move to cars. Pfft. Loser. <laughs> Give us a rap. Oh, uh -huh. my raps you have to pay for. I see we're early today. Hell yeah, real tilted tree. Uh, talk about how he settled with Sony. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> good luck crawling your way out of our vat of maple syrup. Whoa. Geek pirate. Yikes. Are you, is my mod abusing chat? Oh, April Pollock <laughs> donates $1 for the rap battle. Hell yeah. Well, at least Geo has a job. Yikes. I mean, that's what mods are for. <laughs> Sony's been real quiet since he dropped that fire. <laughs> <sighs> Wait, there's a Canada flag? Why do you have a Canada flag? We need to make me more emotes, actually, in this chat. Canadian streamer. Yeah. Do they even get internet up there? Like, they probably can't afford it after all the taxes for their free health care. <laughs> Going to Geohot Conference next week? Comic-Con? Oh, my God. Is that a real thing? I mean, you're basically in Canada? N no. Got him? Yeah, damn right. Yeah, taxes. Am I right, chat? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, fucking April Pollack. What is the best Pollack? Um, only losers pay those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can pay to have dinner with him? What? Like a like a date or like with a large group? Because if it's a date, I'm down. But if it's like a large group, like, no, I'm not. Yeah. Look, when I'm simping, I need some one-on-one -on -one time, you know? Uh, is he going to preach about breaking out of the Matrix again? What? That doesn't sound like a geo-hot thing to say. Um... Save up for a date with Geohot, not the Freedom Phone. May Pollock, May Pollock, best Pollock, coming in with the one dollar. Hell yeah. <laughs> the S word? Oh. Shit. Now we're banned. From distract to date in two minutes. The total has changed. You can take the tracker down now. No, now we're just going to have to get it to 6969.69. And then I can, then I can, I mean, don't, I mean, we can always, we can always put up the oscilloscope one. I don't know why the autofocus is being fussy today. So we're just going to put it on uh, manual. Well, we're going to put it on autofocus. We're going to get it focused and then I'll put it on manual focus. Um, uh, uh, uh. Uh, that looks pretty good. All right. Um, there's always 42069 as a goal. <laughs> we have the 420. It's fine. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Jot was coding a Risk Five processor in Python the other day. Remind me of your streams. Yeah, he's just a copycat. Uh. Comic Con ske conference schedule. This is a troll. This is a troll YouTube video. This is a troll YouTube video. Oh my god, it's not. Wait. It's not, though. The Geek Pirate donated 369. Thank you so much for the 369. How do you like it without the autofocus chat? Let me know if it's a problem, because I will go out of focus. Then I'll come in focus, and then I'll go out of focus when I like do this sort of stuff. Uh, but when I'm in focus, it'll be really crisp. Does that look crunchy? 
New server fun, koala and panda. Ooh. You'll be fine as long as you have good posture. Um. <laughs> Hell yeah, chat. How short are you? You mean how tall am I? Yummy feet, toes, feet against toss, are they? Are feet against toss, dude? What do you think of the WTF project? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Feet cam when? That's on OnlyFans. I stream in parallel on OnlyFans. Uh, manual focus on feet. Yep. Yep. Look. Twitch knows what they want. Okay, how many inches are you? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm known for being pretty tall. You know, when I'm, when I'm walking around, people are like, damn, that dude's tall. People looking up to me. People calling me a giant. So, I'm a, I'm a pretty tall dude. Uh... This isn't OnlyFans, get the speed up, camera. Ah, so 5'7? What? Maybe 5 meters, 7 feet. Uh. <laughs> you got perf, bro? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get some perf. We're gonna get some perf. Alright, chat. Do we wanna write some code today? Do we want to write some code? No. No. All right. Uh, uh, I guess uh, I guess that's just... Uh, yes, but you started streaming, so I can't. Yikes. We want you to write it. What do you think of OSS Fuzz? I think OSS Fuzz has a place, but I like looking for, like, crazy deep bugs not necessarily going wide for shallow bugs i think it's cool someone has to do it i don't necessarily want to do it um all right all right chat we'll write some code so picky oh 7469 nice oh the geek pirate was the one who got that to to an even number all right, here we go. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Did you see lib XML2 isn't maintained anymore? Implying it was maintained before. Hey, got him! It's got a lot of bugs in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So, chat. We're going to do a couple things today. We are going to... Chat, do you... <laughs> we're going to abandon the project? When have we ever abandoned a project? When have we ever abandoned a project here, chat? <sighs> Do we need a do we need to make a new project uh emote? Can we get new project on an emote or is that too much text? New proj looks at printer. <sighs> Cargo new is the project on GitHub? This one isn't yet. You need to finish a project so you can put something on your resume. <sighs> Damn it, chat. Gamoso Cargo New. I remember when you used to use the tools you write. Oh, fuck you, T-Corn. Go fuck yourself. I remember when you didn't sell out for a big paycheck. <laughs> Back when you used to do real work. 
<laughs> Gamoza's side projects? <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, is it legal to trace drawings and turn them into emote? Should we trace this and turn it into an emote? Because we could do that. Is that legal? Can we do that? Just the head? <laughs> okay, okay, chat. Okay, chat. We'll, we'll fucking do it. We'll make a new emote. Uh, uh, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the dimensions are for emotes, but we'll uh, we'll start with this for now. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There we go. This is how I do art, chat. This is how I do art. Yeah, it turn out? I don't know if that turned out, chat, without the rest of the horse. Let's get to coding and then starts drawing. Yep, that's what we do here, chat. Let's just add a little bit more hair here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Stick to the day job. Oh wait. God damn it. Uh what are Twitch chat emote uh which what are emote uh sizes? Uh settings. I like how Twitch has viewer rewards and we don't use them because chat doesn't deserve any rewards when you're being so mean. Bullies. Uh settings. Uh emotes. 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 Emotes and what's the resolution of emotes? Uh, add an emote. We've got six open slots between. Oh, we, it can be 4K to 4K. It can be an arbitrary square. So we'll take this and then we'll go tool options and uh, we'll just do a square. There we go. Uh, let's do 1,700 by 1,700. That looks pretty good. Um, okay. That looks like a good cropping. And then... Uh, new... From clipboard? Wait. Wait. Why is that not the right size? What? Oh, I have to make a new one? Oh, uh, 1700. I know how to do art chat. 1700, lock both of those, and then we can move that here, and we pick where we want it. Actually, we could crop it a little bit more. Let's do 1600 by 1600. All right, there we go. There we go. And now, new. What? Did I not, did I not copy it to clipboard? Uh, and we can also copy merged. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then this can go into here. And this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, 
uh, Gamozo project, and then we'll export this as well um, as a ping. Okay, and then we'll upload this from stream assets, Gamozo proj. Actually, do we want it to be transparent? I think we do. I think we do. Uh, 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 this, delete. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, it seems cached for some reason. Oh, I didn't hit export. Sick. Okay, there we go. There we go. Open. Uploading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's going to look terrible in dark mode. We might have to change the color. It'll be the most scuffed uh, emote if it's transparent. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, fine. Fine. We'll have... Uh, uh, we'll change the color. Chat, what color? What color do you want this to be, chat? Vote for the colors. Bright yellow. Okay. Pink? Hot pink? Yeah, I don't think yellow is going to work. It's going to be too... It's, it's not going to be the right color. Uh, I don't know what pink is. Is this pink? Is this pink? Is this pink? Uh, is that pink? That's pink. That's definitely pink. Uh... Okay, and I didn't select it? What? How? That That's pink. This, 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 this. Uh, export there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make sure it looks good in both, both formats. Oh, I didn't hit this button. Okay. Will it look good in light and dark mode? Yes. Yes, it looks fantastic, chat. Okay, so now if you F5 your stream chat, you'll be able to have this emote if you sub. So if you don't sub, you won't have it. Um, thank you so much. I got a sub from someone. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Uh, Akis, thank you so much for the two months of support. Hell yeah. Yep, it's showing up to me. God, that looks like shit. I love it. <laughs> P4CN, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Yeah, don't forget, don't forget, if you have Amazon Prime, you can use Twitch Prime for free. <laughs> um, sure, you can lift various arches to your aisle, but can you lift me into happiness? No, that's just not possible. Thank you, F1 NCC, for the Twitch Prime. Is that a NCC 1701? That's Star Wars, right? Yash69, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Oh, my beef, thank you so much. Holy shit, everyone wants the emote. Everyone wants the new emote. It actually looks kind of cool. Like, it actually kind of looks kind of cool. Sag Gamozo Proj. It looks like absolute dog shit. I love it. <laughs> Baiting subs with emotes, hell yeah. We got a hype train going. I don't know what we do with a hype train. Uh, uh, yeah, choo choo. Oh my god, no need to sub. Damn, using channel points. Now that's a that's a scam train. <laughs> All right, Jad. <laughs> now, now we've made an emote. Honestly, that's pretty good. <laughs> It actually looks kind of cool. I'm on dark mode, and on dark mode, it looks pretty cool. Um... <laughs> All right. All right, chat. So, we have a couple things that we need to do today. Uh, one of them is make emotes. Um, 
Dark mode like a hacker. Yep, yep. That's what we do here. Uh, uh, hacker typer. Uh, yeah. So, uh, basically today we're gonna be working on kind of improving some of our code. So there's a couple things that I want to do. I really want to improve the fact that like right now we don't have any. Uh, when whenever we change uh, trait requirements on some of the generics that we use on our graph. It becomes like a really big problem because we have to go and add it to a bunch of things. So I don't necessarily th know the best way I want to restructure that, but I kind of want to change that code shape. The other thing that I want to do is I want to change all of the uses of my like magic numbers where I have like an int max indicating an invalid register or an invalid loop label. I want to actually change those into options wrapping a type. But we're going to constrain those types using the Rust type system to say that like FF uh, is a variant that they can never be encoded as, and that will allow the option to not have an increased size by having to add like another bit or another byte, indicating the validity. So that's one thing we can do for code cleanup. I want to do an optimization pass today where we have it where um, basically operations like adding x plus 1 and then doing x plus 1 again gets simplified into x plus 2, uh, which is a, a relatively complex thing that we want to do for a couple different operations, like adds, subs, uh, and ors, and xors. We can't really do that for... Actually, we can. So we're going to write an optimization for a couple common, um, uh, like, symbolic uh, uh, simplifications that we can do. Um, and then we're also going to, uh, write a memory, uh, manager where we can ha we'll add instructions where we can read and write memory. And once we have those, then we can start working on a lifter. And hopefully today we'll either write a risk 5 32i, uh, RV32i emulator, uh, or lifter, or a 6502 lifter. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one I want to do first. Um... But I want to be able to lift a real program, especially I want to lift printf, and I want to see how we can optimize printf. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's in. Uh, don't hack the FBI. The question is, which Linux source file is this? This is set group. This will be like uh, sysgroup.c, probably something like that. Yeah, th these have the syscalls. So we have the syscalls for uh, groups, sorting groups, searching groups. Oh, there we go. Got a, is that a, we got a binary search here? Yes, we do have a binary search here. Yep. Uh, oh, set groups, set current groups, syscall define. So here's get groups, the syscall. Oh, user parameter. Let's see. Let's see. Any bugs? Any bugs here? Oh, no, they use a two user function. Oh, sad day. Removing firewall. BK, become a software developer. Oh, man. Um. All right. I actually started writing a Risk Five emulator yesterday. Hell yeah! Have you been enjoying that? Have you been enjoying uh, Risk Five? It's pretty awesome. Imagine using Nano on purpose. There's one thing you use Nano for, chat. And what is the one thing that you use Nano for? Because there is a thing that I use Nano for, but it might be different than the thing you use Nano for. VimRC, you're totally right. You're totally right. Having, what I do is I use Nano or Edit to edit my VimRC so I can add no undo file, no swap file, no backup file, and then I can edit my VimRC with Vim and I don't get the stupid tilde and dot swap files and dot undo files. And there you go. Um, <laughs> all right, chat. Which one of those uh, couple things do you want to do first? Do you want to do the optimization pass first? That's what we're going to do first, chat. We're going to write another optimization pass. Um, literally elevated intellect. Dude, I hate the default swap files and stuff. Editing vimrc, I just git clone my dot files. <laughs> I just have mine memorized. Sounds like tilde files, PTSDs. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, I was unsure if you were speaking hacker type nonsense. Wait, no, those are all things that we're actually going to do today, chat. 
Yeah, I have my VimRC memorized. It's very easy to memorize. I embed Nano into my bootloader so I can build my OS as I go. Nice. Do you write it in Holy C? All right, chat. So we're going to make a new optimization pass, and this is going to be called... Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Swap fellas have actually ruined Vim's reputation. Yeah, I agree. What color scheme do you use? Default. Uh, complete default color scheme. Optimize one. The Ligma pass? What's Ligma? Uh, awesome. XX Awesome Sauce Pass XX 420XX. Oh my god, do the fucking glasses fit the emoji? Oh my god, they do! What? What? <laughs> oh, that's a pog champ, right? Oh, I, wait. I did it wrong, chat. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, we're going to call this simplify. Um, and this is going to be uh, simplify some basic expressions. Yikes, people don't have channel points? Yikes, what do you even spend your channel points on? Oh, uh, can you chain them? SGTK? Can I do that? No. Wow. Unless, unless order matters. Yikes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, 137. Ah, oh, comma. Negative 170. Jabated. Uh, quick ready to quick emote fuzzer. Yeah. Uh, I spend it on emotional satisf satisfaction of higher numbers. Uh, yeah, what, what can I make my channel points do, chat? Uh, let's see. Uh, channel points. Uh, rewards and challenges. Um... What do we want to do? Chat, what do we want to have for uh, show feet? Date with Gamozo, 500k points. It sounds like you just have 500k uh, points. Date with Gamozo. We need a 10k dump option. Put on another hat. Buy a free month of OnlyFans. Text to speech. Uh... You can actually do arbitrary stuff and get redemptions via the API. Okay, interesting. The 100k points close this stream. Use Emacs sniff underwear. Chat, can we behave today? Uh, there's another streamer who ch that changes his stream color scheme via channel points. Yikes, I don't want to change my color scheme. Chat, <laughs> bop, bop. <laughs> All right, um, okay. So we're going to write a simplification uh, algorithm, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you why we're going to do that. So we have our program here, and our program has a, a loop. It loops from, uh, looks like it loops from 0, uh, it loops from this to 30. So it loops from AX to 30, uh, which will go up to 30. We want to not write 1 into that. And if we run this, we'll see that we have, uh, we have not implemented simplify. Damn it. So to pop in mutes his microphone with them? Ooh. Okay, that could be a fun one. All right, so um, here we have the program when it's optimized. It just sets AX to 30 because it ends, it goes through the loop, and then it sets uh, that to 39 because both of these are just counters. So both of these just get counted in a loop, and it stops when AX is equal to this number, which is 30. If we change this to 50, then it loops until 50, right? That's how math works. Um, so what we want to do is if we get rid of this BX is initialized to 9, it actually is going to emit some terrible code. So it's going to emit this, where it keeps adding 1 to BX because it doesn't know the initial state of BX, and thus it can't propagate that constant. Uh, but what we want this to optimize to is just BX plus 30. So if we do that... 
uh, things would be better. So let's let's write an optimization pass that collapses operations like this. Uh, we'd have the same if we did a sub uh, and that sort of stuff. So basically, anything that is uh, anything that's constant gets propagated automatically right now, but things that have a partial symbolic component, like this is an expression of x plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's not fully constant, so we don't optimize it. So we want to add something where we can simplify those uh, symbolic expressions. One million points go back to Microsoft? Oh, yikes, dude. Yikes. The squish one, I like this a lot. It looks like a, a bug. Um, okay. Uh, have a beer with Gamozo and chat about challenges when trying to uh, emulate x86 code with Vecimo. Oh, Vecimo is fucking easy on x86. Um, someone asked me like a real question. Um, let us add arbitrary entries to your VimRC. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mm. Mm, I don't know. Now, someone asked a real question. What advice uh, can you give a student in a final year of college? Should I grind lead code or work on actual projects? Oh, my fucking God. <sighs> you should work on actual projects. But if you want money, you should grind leet code. Because for some fucking reason, all interviews do leet code problems. Like, I fail coding components of interviews because they expect that they reg you regurgitate something from memory in like 10 seconds. And that's just... I don't give a shit. Why do people do leet code for real? Because that is how you pass coding interviews at big companies. That's how you get 300k, you know, two years out of school, even though you don't know how to write code. Um, it's really frustrating. Coding interviews are really shitty. Luckily, coding interviews normally don't decide your level. They're just pass fail of whether you get an offer or not. And then all your other conversations and design uh, kind of kind of goes into that, but yeah, it, it's really annoying. I don't like the lead code kind of problems. Just inverse a binary tree. <laughs> Reverse a string. <laughs> Palindromes. Uh, yeah. They ask algorithms for front-end JavaScript. Yep, and then they get really mad if you optimize anything or like don't use a recursive function because instead you use a more optimal data structure like making a stack in a, a local variable or something like that or uh, you don't do function calls when you know it would be expensive, or you don't use eight conditional branches when you can do, like, three. Um, you know. You know. I don't know. I, I really don't like coding problems in interviews. I've never studied for them, and it definitely is a disadvantage to me, uh, but I really don't like encouraging that. Um... Is it really common to make that much as a software dev in the U.S.? Yeah, uh, like... It's reasonable in Fang to make like 180 to 200k out of college in the US. Uh, but that's Fang. That's the top. That's already the top, like, probably 1% or 0.1% of people coming out of school. So it's not really that common, anyways. Uh, what about who's, someone who just finished their first year of college? Um, find projects that you enjoy. At the end of the day, enjoying what you do is a lot fucking more important than making an extra 10k a year. Uh, unless you're making 10k a year, in which case, chase the extra 10k a year. Um, but at some point, it, it becomes more valuable to actually have a life that you enjoy. You know, what's more important for perf? Branch predictability or data locality? Uh, I mean, it really depends, so you know, what the ratio is between the two. Uh, I mean, data locale, like... Uh, uh, cache miss is going to be like 80 to 150 cycles and a branch miss prediction is going to be somewhere between like 20 and 150 cycles, probably around 50 cycles. But a branch miss prediction can be very, very, very expensive depending on how much uh, speculative state has been discarded. Um, so it really, it, it really varies. No uh, point in making more money when USD is devaluing itself. 
Yeah, two percent inflation. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, what's the average salary of a software dev straight out of college in the U.S.? I have no idea. Uh, the the best thing you can get is uh, um, uh, if you go to bls.gov. This is census data. This is the only place you should go if you want to get like actual like big amounts of data because the sample sizes are large and uh, it's actually good. Then you go to wages by area by and occupation. You can go by metropolit uh, metropolitan areas, but you can also go to nation for national. And then you can go for 800 occupations. And then you can go into computer shit. And then you can try and look at basically uh, uh, what specific role. So there's programmers and there's also like software developers. Uh, I don't really understand how they differ the two, uh, but I just take like the larger of the two. But these are like the, these are, uh, I think, median salaries. No, these are mean salaries. So these are mean salaries, so it'll be skewed a little bit upwards, but this is basically, uh, you know, census data, um, software developers and QA. So like somewhere between 95K and 115K is mean, and the average person has what? 10 years of experience or something like that? The average person isn't out of school. Um, but then if you go into these even further, you can see the percentiles, the 10%, the 25%, the 50%, 75%, and the 90%. You can see the sample size, 1.4 million, um, and those sorts of things. Uh, but then further, you can go and actually look for metropolitan areas because they vary a lot based on your state or your region or your metropolitan area. Um, so like this, you can see by like rough areas, you know, like San Francisco. If we look at San Francisco, it's probably a little bit higher pay there. And yes, it is. So uh, this is a really good resource if you ever want to know like a baseline to negotiate. Um, but this is uh, averages and like it doesn't really factor in age and those sorts of things. So that's kind of on you. If you're in Fang, use levels.fyi. Um, uh, if you're in Fang, go to levels.fyi and, and look at these and you can compare roughly the leveling at companies. So like you can see like an L7 at Google is 700K. So like L3 is what you get out of school, 192K. And then like maybe a couple years of experience, you get this, which is like 270K. You can see years of experience, two, two, three, four, 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 six, two. So this is like two to six years of experience, 270K, right? So, and that's at Google. Google pays well, Facebook pays well, Microsoft doesn't pay too well. So like equivalent at Microsoft, if you're like a, a four at Google, 270, for at Facebook, 270, and then an equivalent to like middle of the band at Microsoft, 180. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not very competitive, but different expectations. Um, I'm in Fang in the EU, uh, but I make half of what Levels.FYI says. Uh, not sure if it's a US thing, it is. Um, uh, so on Levels.FYI, you can also filter by area. So you can, you know, go here and uh, I guess you can go like, you can look at this, view data points, and then you can filter this and you can be like, I live anywhere other than the US. I live in like London uh, uh, or something like that or some other place. I don't know if Facebook employs in London, to be honest. Uh, I know Google does. So like London. Uh, oh, that's London Barry. I don't know. You, you can you can filter by cities and stuff like that. Um, you kind of just have to find an example of like where where they're posted up at. Uh, but yeah. Yep. Anyways, there's not much UK data. Yeah, there isn't. There's a smidge, but yeah, there really isn't that much. Um, glass door isn't bad. However, eh, glass door can be uh, a little sketchy at times. How many hours a week are those jobs in the U.S.? Uh, uh, 40 is an average work week in the U.S., but it's pretty common to work like 10 or 20 hours. Um, what do you think about the future of binary exploitation reverse engineering compared to pen testing and web app sec? Um, I mean, uh, I feel like they both have infinite futures. Um, binary exploitation will become more widespread, but not more common. 
uh, there's a lot of companies that are making their binary teams for the first time. They realized after writing like 10 million lines of C that they actually need people who do more than like look for uh, SQL injections. Um, but you'll find that a lot of these companies have no idea what the fuck they're doing. So that's kind of slowly, uh, slowly kind of getting better. Um, ultimately, binary security is, is very niche. It's still in the US. It's I mean, there's probably thousands of people employed to do it, but there's probably only in the hundreds of people who actually understand how to do it. Um, all the big tech companies are in Ireland for the tax dodge. Hell yeah. Uh, hello, Gamoza Labs. Absolute stud back on Twitch after a very long time. Uh, good to see Gamozo, uh, as I haven't watched for a long time. Uh, here from Pakistan. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Love that you're viewing from Pakistan. That is wonderful. A uh, nice hat. Cheers. Glad you're enjoying the hat. I've been enjoying the hat. For my companies, they're not a single data point outside of the U.S. on levels. Yeah, that's relatively reasonable. Netflix pays really well. They pay okay. Um, Netflix doesn't have the best total comp, but they pay really high salary. So if people aren't familiar with how Fang jobs work, uh, so companies will pay uh, most of their stuff in stock. So if we looked at like a Google... L, uh, let's see, like senior, because that's kind of comparable. And then if we, we'll add Netflix to the mix here. Um, so Netflix has only senior, and that's true. They don't really hire many junior candidates. So if we look at like senior at Google, 355K, you get 190K base salary, get $130,000 a year in stock, and then you get a 40K cash bonus a year, right? You get kind of that ballpark thing. Um, this stock will be vesting basically every quarter, and you, you basically, this is what you get after selling all of your stock every year, but you get that stock kind of in chunks, uh, which changes it from like getting paid every other week, which is the common pay structure in the US. Netflix uh, pays pretty well, um, but uh, first of all, you have to be senior. The thresholds to get in there are a little bit higher, but they pay really good salary. And salary is really important when it comes to things like buying homes or getting loans because a lot of places don't know how to deal with this pay structure because they see you make 190K and they're like, but why does your W2 have like 360K on it? And they get very confused um, and that can make it hard. So like having pure salary is actually a really cool way of being compensated. Uh, the downside is Netflix doesn't have that much upside. Uh, so there are some like crazy data points that you'll see here or there. Um, but ultimately... Um, like, some people are reporting, like, in the 700s and stuff, uh, which is pretty fucking rare at a place like, um, at a place like Netflix. Whereas at, like, Google's, you can get into the L7s and the L8s where you just make that sort of money a lot easier. Basically, the upside is a lot higher at other companies because Netflix doesn't really have the best structure for growing as a, um, IC. They have, like, you can make more money if you go into management. And, of course, there are these extraordinary circumstances where people are making a shit ton of money. You can see these people have, like, 20 years' experience. Um, but uh, it's a little bit tighter of a band, right? You can see 75th percentile is 570K, whereas at these other companies, like, you can just go into a higher band where you're just making more money than that, even in the 25th percentile. So stuff like that can, it can change it quite a bit. Have you been in Thailand before? I have not. Do you work in Fang? Uh, I arguably people consider Microsoft to be in Fang, but not really. Um, where are you working next? Haven't decided yet. Get hired at Netflix. I haven't uh, found any security teams doing binary security at Netflix that have responded. I've like hit up Netflix through like five different channels, and they just haven't responded. Um, I don't think that's because they're not interested. I think that's because they're just not fucking responding. Um, Netflix is mostly a Java shop that hires uh, 10 to 12 year uh, devs. Yeah, exactly. Um, how much are taxes there? Taxes here are very low, especially in Washington, because we don't have state income taxes. Um, uh, a reasonable effective tax rate and FANG is probably like 30 to like 25 to 40 percent, uh, probably like 30 or 35 percent is a reasonable, like effective, all inclusive tax rate uh, here, which is uh, which is really fucking low. Um, how's Apple? Uh, I don't know. I think Apple pays okay, but I don't actually know much about Apple. I know that they compartmentalize very strictly internally, and I know that they're really closed about, like, who you can talk to and what you can talk about. 
Um, whereas a lot of other companies, you kind of get in, you get access to all the code, which is really cool. Cries in my 45%. Hey, at least you probably have decent government programs. Um, at least you probably have free healthcare or something. I don't know. I would not mind higher taxes. Um, it would mean more, more people in the workforce. Um, are you looking for remote positions? Uh, I don't really care. Um, like some of my positions, uh, talked about like going to Switzerland or Germany. Um, and I would consider them if it's the, the right price, the right level. Uh, it would have to be like a pretty big step up in my career. Um, but those would be opportunities. Um, oh gosh, recruiters are here. <laughs> um, do they hire non-seniors from abroad? Um, yeah, a lot of companies do. Uh, I, I, I can't speak about every company, but it, yeah, it's pretty common for that to be the case. Um, what optimization paths have you implemented so far? We've implemented dead code elimination, register propagation, uh, which is what I consider when, like, uh, basically we have a concept of aisle registers and target registers. Um, so register propagation basically means that when we store to a register or we read from a register, we use the, the value that's already in the IL register, which will be a little bit faster when we go to compile that out. Target registers will be memory accesses, and IL registers will actually get allocated to uh, real hardware registers when we make our JIT. Um, Jalapeno Master, thank you so much for the three months of support. Uh, forget Germany, salaries are mostly a joke and taxes are absolute ass. Um, I think it depends where you work. I mean, if they wanted me to move to Germany, I would have to make the same, I would have to make the same pay that I would make in the US EV. So if I get 10% higher taxes, then you better be paying me 10% higher in Germany. Um, and then you have to pay me even more than that to convince me to move. So like ultimately, um, yeah, I would do it if it was a good opportunity, but like, I'm not going to turn down a job here that pays twice as much. Cause I, the, the moving is not really motivational to me. Uh, I, I think I would prefer to live in Europe. I think it fits better with my lifestyle and the sorts of things that I do. Uh, it's a little bit tighter. It has a little bit better public transport and things that I kind of uh, like in a society. Um, it also has like kind of a better academic culture around it. Even though we have really good academia in the US, it's very spread out. We don't really have the, the same like powerhouses like a CERN. We don't have a lot of like the, the research labs and uh, government funding for science here can be really sketchy at times. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's the highest or best position a security engineer can achieve without losing his touch? Uh, I mean, inf. You can you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can you could pretty comf you could probably pretty comfortably make two million dollars a year as a security researcher uh, in in a like salaried position. I'm not talking about like if you sell bugs because that there's an infinite ceiling to that. In reality, like two million dollars a year is uh, a pretty reasonable number to uh, achieve as a security researcher. Um, let's see. Come on, Linus Torvalds gets 1.6 a year? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As Linus. Must not have negotiated well. Um, do you do CTFs? I used to. Not anymore. Haven't done them for a while. There's some uh, cool companies in uh, Zug, Switzerland. Uh, also, academic culture there is very strong. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, my country, 40% goes to taxes. Yeah, that's pretty... I mean, in the US, it's like 30 or 40%. Um, I would say 40% is relatively low. Anything under 50% taxes is, is pretty low taxes. As long as you're talking about, like, making a pretty large amount of money. Um, well, he writes in C. How on earth is two mil a year reasonable as a security researcher? It's reasonable that you can get there. Like, you could achieve that. It, it is not reasonable to expect that you will ever make that in your life as a security researcher. But if you want to become the absolute best in the world and you're good at social skills and you're good at managing and communicating, 
or not managing, but like leading and communicating and teaching, um, you can get to like 1.5 to 2 mil at a lot of the big fang companies in pure technical roles. Um, now you're going to be like owning massive stuff. Like you are going to be like the lead architect behind like half of the fucking company. Like you are the lead architect behind like all of Azure and you're like, the lead architect of Hyper-V or a uh, large kernel component or some shit like that, right? Um, and security research, like, yeah, you would have to basically own the entire security team for the company. And you would have to basically be making that company the best goddamn security company in the world. So, uh, I could become an astronaut, right? Like, I I'm basically saying, like, 2 mil is probably the upper bounds of what you can make as... A, an extremely technical person. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into business or management or sales or something where you can actually make money. Um, okay, Gamoza, I'll do it for that wage. Now, massive responsibility. Yeah, you are on the hook for, like, the entirety of Microsoft's security organization. <laughs> like, but from a te more technical perspective. That being said, not all companies have roles like that, but you can often create those roles if you need to. Uh... In reality, I would say 700 or 800K is a reasonable place to top out to if you are very good and passionate about security and you are like, you know, well known in the industry and, and really good. Um, going beyond that is going to require that you are committing to a company and you're making something exceptional for that company. Um, and that's basically like on the on levels, right? Like, uh, like basically getting up into like uh like most most places consider uh like this six level, this six or this principal level uh to be where you start to kind of hit some barriers. So like it's reasonable to work your entire career even at a Google and not get past L5, right? That's completely reasonable. Um Pushing past L5 or into like the principal bands at like other companies is often you're committing to doing, pulling on some large responsibility, getting some big ownership, inventing some major things, that sort of thing. And that will push you into these like L6 bands. And then pushing into L7 is just more of that. You have a larger team, you have larger responsibility. Like I would say like uh, L6. And, like, principal is probably reasonable for, like, if you are well-known, well-established, and that sort of thing. And seven is, like, you're well-known, well-established, and you also are effective at communicating and doing crazy things. And then from there, you can keep going. Like, L8, this is that, like, million-dollar number that I said is, like, kind of the upper bound of what is reasonable to get through conventional means. Like, I think it's reasonable to get to L7 by just being a hard worker and learning a shit ton. Uh, and that might be you're working weekends or you're working your ass off and that sort of shit. Getting to like L8, this territory, you have done something exceptional. You were there at the right place at the right time when something was created, when something was founded, that sort of thing. Uh, whatever, whatever. Um, that like... That's basically, and then beyond that, right, is, th this is ar arbitrary. Like, L9 and beyond, those are fucking arbitrary titles that are given to you because, like, everyone's in the right mood. <laughs> like, like, you don't, you can maybe get to L8 by, like, really grinding hard and really pushing hard, but getting past there is, like, the people who are distinguished engineers at Microsoft or technical fellows at Microsoft, these are people who, like, have been there since its inception. They're, they're the people who like wrote the memory managers, wrote the schedulers, wrote the hypervisors, the core OS functionality, and they've been maintaining it for 20 years, like that sort of shit. Like, that's a big fucking deal. Um, L7 is probably where you could start having, a, like, I would say L6, you could do almost pure technical. Um... Like, I would say in an L6 position, I would expect that I am basically just doing really fucking good technical work. And then L7, you're inventing things, you're m creating teams, you're spinning up new tools and projects and creating all sorts of shit. And that's like, that's probably where things become a lot, a lot more serious. 
Uh, yeah, technical fellow. Those sorts of roles are just, they're, they're, you don't climb to those roles. You get rewarded with those roles, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. You ask them a question about the history of computing and they were there. Yeah, absolutely. They're honor titles. They're not actually honor titles. They are real titles. Uh, actually, uh, I think Distinguished Engineer is an honor honorific title. Technical Fellow is a real thing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that that's kind of how it goes. I would say, like, this five level, like, at a lot of companies, let's get another one for reference, like, Amazon in here. Like, this level here, these, like, six, uh, this, like, five band, like, in this territory here is probably where it's reasonable to get by existing right? And that's like, you get one of these jobs. First of all, all of these, all of these are extremely hard jobs to get in the first place, right? Like you're already the top like one or 5% of programmers to even get an entry level job at these companies. But once you get in one of these companies, I would say it's reasonable to get to like a 64 or even a principal or an E5 or an L5 or an SD3. It's reasonable to get to those places by just being a decent worker for a long enough time. Pushing past there, getting into the sixth territory and deeper into principal and partners and those sorts of roles, at that point, you probably have to acquire a pretty unique skill or talent, right? Like, that's, that's, and then beyond that, like the sevens, people have to fucking know you. You have to be a big deal. You have to have major impact. And you have to work under extraordinary pressure. Like, when you're getting into the 6 and 7 territory, like, you're talking about doing, like, month-long projects with teams that are understaffed with a, a couple weeks of effort, never, like, fucking those things up. Like, it's... It's... Fucking crazy. Um, yeah. So... Anyways... Uh, that that's kind of roughly how those things work. Like I I love talking about those things and 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 that sort of stuff. I don't know anything about management tracks. I have no interest in management. Um, a lot of companies do expect even on the technical track that you do management. Like that was one issue I had at Microsoft was pushing beyond my current role uh, would have been difficult without signing up for more uh, management. Of course, it's possible, right? It's always possible to go deeper and deeper. Uh, um, purely technical, but you're usually going to have to work a lot fucking harder than just picking up the responsibility of running a 10 person team. So go figure out what project zero group makes at Google. Yeah. They're probably all in that like six plus, t uh, territory, um, which is reasonable. Um, let's see, which I think is completely reasonable. I, I think, I think everyone at PZ should be like, I know they have some more junior people that they bring up. Like, I know they do internships and stuff, so I'm sure they have some more junior people that, like, we don't necessarily know as well as the public figures. Uh, but I would hope that anyone who's, like, a public figure in Project Zero is a six and hopefully a seven. Because um, they are they are at the top of what's possible. Um, and there's many people like that at many companies. It's not just Project Zero, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, if you're wondering like how difficult uh, you think like a six or a seven is, I would say it's probably reasonable that like the people that you know at Project Zero could all be L6s and maybe some of the like super famous ones are sevens or beyond. Um, so until you think that you're like competitive with like the crazy Project Zero blogs and shit that come out, like L6 and L7 are probably not very reasonable to try to get, right? Um, like these are very extreme exceptional uh, positions to have um what is project zero project zero is a team at google that specializes in finding uh uh pretty hard oday and and non-google products uh they've found a lot of pretty exceptional bugs uh whether they're like remote codex remote code execution bugs av bugs you know weird apple bugs like uh, most of the ios jailbreaks that you ever have heard of very likely 
uh, came from Project Zero in terms of the bugs. They're usually weaponized and exploited by people outside of Project Zero, but like the initial bugs or the reports or the tickets uh, or even the proof of concepts often come from Project Zero. They are uh, known in the industry to kind of be at the pinnacle of that like binary exploitation realm. Um, of course, security is a very broad industry. There's many other values that you can bring other than just finding nutty Ode. You have to be able to work on compiler mods and mitigations and making designs and working on internal tools where you have source and things you don't have source to and firmware and working with budgets and pricing and management and leadership. There's so many fucking skills um, that Project Zero is fucking amazing technically and I will say amazing things about them because I like doing the sort of things that Project Zero does. But I also recognize that Project Zero is not the solution to security. You know, it, it's... It is, it's more of an art than a, than a, it's not the most valuable thing in terms of security. We need mitigations, we need uh, attack surface reduction, we need compiler modifications, we need safe languages, we need code to be written, we need trainings, we need teaching. Um, finding the nutty bugs is not necessarily the most valuable thing, with the exception of for like, slow moving targets or really remote surfaces where that's kind of what we're going to have to do at the end of the day at the end of the day there's going to have to be some trusted surfaces and when we get to those trusted surfaces eventually we just have to make sure they're secure and that's going to be through a shit ton of analysis and research and bug fixing um like those are going to be like the core things like a very thin kernel or a very thin hypervisor that you have to find those nutty bugs in but then hopefully those will provide isolation such that you can have shittier bugs in lower level surfaces, but they won't matter because they won't be able to escalate into uh, uh, more, senior, uh, more serious stuff. Get into this team. Uh, I've been kind of in the queue for Project Zero for a year. They just haven't had headcount. So that is kind of the plan. Um, have you ever talked with anyone from Project Zero? Yeah, I know a decent amount of the people at Project Zero. Um... Uh, I'm sure they're well paid, uh, uh, they're employed directly by Google, yep, exactly, although they are, like, a relatively fringe team, um, I know this because I've been waiting for a headcount for a year at Project Zero, so, like, um, they do a very niche thing, and they probably all make a lot of money, and they're all extremely skilled, but, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that's, like, the best business, uh, value, uh, for Google, so sometimes it can be hard to get funding for stuff like that. Um, do you think there are a lot of uh, security holes that are not publicly known but used by some people? Yeah, those are O days, and they're used all over the place. Um, yeah, it's, there's an infinite supply of security holes that are not publicly known. There's so many fucking bugs out there. Um, should I push uh, making projects in C uh, since I enjoy it already uh, a lot or switch to another mainstream language uh, to get a job already? Uh, almost, uh, almost a year from graduating. Um, there are plenty of jobs in C. There aren't nearly as many, and sometimes they're not as high paying as, as backwards as that may seem, as C is like a lower level language. It's pretty common that, um, it's pretty common that C jobs are going to be like shitty embedded jobs where like they don't actually respect you as an employee you're just there to make sure their product ships as fast as possible and they don't really care about quality and they just want to get it out the door um then there's a lots of like high-end uh high paying c jobs but those are a lot more rare those are your like systems devs things kernel devs operating system dev uh hypervisor dev those sorts of roles of course there's a lot of performance dev in c as well uh, but a lot of companies, like, don't necessarily know they're advertising that, especially when HR is who's, like, doing the hiring. Um, Demarcus W, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. And they're hitting a lot of good people. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for that. God damn, we got a lot of subs coming in today. Holy shit. Sharing the wealth. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for that. Now I can live my unemployed life. Uh, <laughs> let's see. But yeah, I would say you can get a job with C. Um, and honestly, C is a great language to know because if you know C, you know C Sharp, you know C++, you know a little bit of Java, you know PHP. Like everything's fucking derived from C at the end of the day that if you understand C pretty well, uh, you would be relatively effective in, in other languages. That being said, 
a lot of companies at this point don't really give a shit if you know a language. Like, that's not really impressive anymore. Like, knowing a language is not impressive. They want you to know a framework. You know, if you're a JavaScript dev, it's like, do you know the whiz-bang, uh, super slow, bloated, shitty performance uh, framework that everyone uses for this year? Um, and they're more interested in things like that. Um, of course, people are really just going to quiz you on your fucking algorithms course from second year of college, which is dumb, but whatever. Um, yeah. How important are social skills from a purely security uh, te uh, technician? Extremely important. Social skills are the difference between you being a staff engineer and you being two levels below as a senior engineer or a, a, a mid-level engineer. Your ability to communicate the value that you bring to a company, your ability to get people excited, your ability to teach, your ability to lead and to mentor people and to just create new things and to be confident about those things and communicate them effectively and manage things like documentations and, uh, documentation and tickets and, and understanding kind of what humans expect, even though it's not directly social, but like knowing how to design APIs, knowing how to design command line interfaces and, uh, and web interfaces or UIs, like uh, those are all social skills. It all requires that you communicate with people, you understand what people want out of a product, they under you understand like what they need, you can maybe empathize with them, you know what things have and haven't worked in the past. Um, I would say so social skills are like literally when I say it's the difference of like two promotion levels. I don't mean that of like getting the right opportunities or like smooth talking your way in. Like literally having the social skills, but the exact same technical skills is legitimately easily a difference of two uh, levels of promotion difference. It's it's huge. It's huge. Uh, they're only important if you want to make more money, have more fun and have a better career. That's not necessarily true. You can have fun just being a fucking engineer who just pounds out code. If you just like coding and you don't want to come up with crazy ideas, you just want to go into work and have a list of like tickets or things to work on and you just like writing code and you enjoy that, um, there's really nothing wrong with that. Um, eventually, you take on a lot of responsibility that you start being stressed about things that are kind of not healthy to be stressed about. And... I don't know. Is that worth the money at that point? No, not really. Um, if you enjoy that sort of stress where you like seeing massive undertakings happen at when you're at the helm, then then absolutely those are good things to do. But uh, oof, I'm screwed. Um, if you can't tactfully explain a, a bug to someone who isn't as technical as you, not to be a, a dick in general uh, is very, or just not to be a dick in general is very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's a big difference between throwing someone a stack trace and actually writing up a good bug report and empathizing with the fact that they have to uh, work on a patch and they might get punished by their bosses for that because people get punished for writing bugs for some reason because we seem to think that uh, we can write code without bugs somehow by punishing people, uh, but whatever. How do you improve social skills? Uh... I don't know, socialize? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Find, find like some good friends who can give you good feedback. Like when you're in a, in a setting where they can comfortably pull you aside and you can be open to criticism where they're like, wow, you really came off as a dick in that meeting. Uh, maybe you should present your ideas better. Like, I don't know, having, having someone who gives you good feedback and can uh, question you like socially is, is important as well. Just have friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get off Twitch, stop watching fucking programmers on Twitch, and do something with your life uh, is a good step in the right direction. Uh, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Sag. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's mostly joking, but in all seriousness, you get more political capital in your company with good social skills, which can buy you time to uh, do actual coding time. Absolutely. Your ability to communicate your ideas is the difference between your boss telling you that you have a shit idea and the difference between them giving you one year to fuck off and do your own thing without being, uh, like, micromanaged at all. So, and now his fear account goes this year. <laughs> but first, donate. Yeah, don't forget to donate. Don't, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, smash that like button. Um, 
Stop watching programmers on Twitch. Start watching hot tub streams on Twitch. Wait a minute. Uh, learning how to take feedback is extremely valuable. What the fuck do you mean by that, Nightwolf? What, 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 what do you mean? Fuck you. I take feedback just fine. Uh, <laughs> lose, losing to people uh, with worse ideas is motivating. Um, yeah, like, um, it is important to, uh, recognize when, uh, you are losing a social battle and see if you can, uh, socialize your idea, if you think it's a better idea. And if you can't socialize your idea, then you should assist someone in their idea to make sure that it's de demonstrated that it's a failure sooner, you know? Uh, and I don't mean sabotage it. Don't do that. Just... You know, if if you think you can speed up their idea to get to the point where they recognize that it's not a good idea, then fucking help them with that. Help them write some code quickly. Like, help them turn out some stuff in, like, the first few weeks to get it to the proof of concept stage where they have the oh shit idea where they're like, oh yeah, this will not work at all. Um, like, subscribe, and then fuck off. Yikes, godling. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Some hostile people in chat today. <laughs> uh, jam on the accelerator so it gets to the wall faster. Exactly. Exactly. Kill it with kindness. <laughs> it was a joke. I know, Godling. Um, uh, and sometimes the re result may be that it actually did work. Yeah, or it took less time, or it took fewer resources. Sometimes uh, the best solution is not the best solution, you know? Uh, the best technical solution. You know, as, as someone who does purely technical things, uh, yeah, there's often an easier way. And sometimes, sometimes the best solution is to just convince people that they don't actually need it, rather than to make it, <laughs> even though you want to make it. Uh, I have now been chewed up by Kimos. <laughs> uh, does programming and hot tub streams, uh, oh yeah, I do both uh, programming and hot tub streams, so everyone has to stay now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. New niche programmer therapist. Yes. Um, yeah. So today, uh, we're going to talk about your coding chat and we're going to be talking about how you think Java is an acceptable language. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to get you through this. I know this is a hard time. I know that sometimes your mental state is not very clear and sometimes you think weird, bad thoughts. But chat, we can get through this together. We could advance past Java, and we can get to a good language like Rust. <laughs> uh, I'm okay with the hot tub streams, but if you start uh, the ear-licking ASMR, I'm out. Damn it, then you won't like that I just bought one of the, the fake ear uh, microphones. <laughs> But JavaScript is the best programming language. Ha <laughs> Rust is a gateway language to Haskell. Mm, hot take. Hot take. But my slow Java. Yeah. What would you do if you didn't have a garbage collector? You can't write any code in Rust because without a garbage collector, you can't write code. Uh, talking about Java because the JavaScript people are already too far gone. Look. Look. JavaScript people are a different breed. You know, there, there's not really much that you can do to save them, right? I know there's like Christianity and Jesus came back from the dead and those sorts of things and their miracles happen. But mm, liking JavaScript is hard to recover from. I hate JavaScript, but I love it in Windbag. What do you mean? You don't like the classic Windbag scripting? You don't like that syntax? The uh, mixed, uh, like, masm assembly syntax into your, uh, into your uh, uh, breakpoint syntax? You don't like that? I interned at Goldman Sachs and they used exclusively Java in everything. My condolences. Um, what's the alternative to JavaScript for dynamic behavior in the browser? Uh, you just use Rust and compile it to WebAssembly. Which then JavaScript does JavaScript bindings, which is really weird. No, uh, there really isn't a great alternative to JavaScript, to be honest. Um, 
<laughs> what would be a good internships to look at for high school students? Ooh, um, high school internships are relatively rare. Uh, I remember Trail of Bits did a lot of high school internships. I still don't know if they do, but I remember that they made a good effort to have like one to three high school interns, uh, which was really fucking cool because all of those high school interns turned out really well. I really don't know of many places that do high school internships. Um, that being said, like, can you convince someone to give you an internship uh, that normally is a college internship if you know some programming stuff? Yeah, probably. Um, um, yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. WebAssembly is the new Flash. Ah! It's better. It's better than Flash. It's not a be-all, end-all, but it's, it's an improvement. Don't use a browser and then? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the solution. I like Pascal. Um, I'm not convinced, but I'm also not convinced that it's terrible. Um, Flash was decent, not gonna lie. Miss it a lot. Well, it had vector graphics, which I really liked, because now you can play old Flash games and they look okay. I'm gonna turn on autofocus again. Let's see what it does. Let's see if autofocus is friendly. I think it doesn't like the hat, is the main issue. Um... Yeah, I'm getting into uh, Rust, JavaScript, some .NET, etc. Mostly DevOps. Uh, I think I'll be able to snag one if I work hard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you tried Elixir? I have not. We have high schoolers in the chat yet. Yeah, no swearing, chat. No swearing. Uh, I love your hat, sir. You hot? Hell yeah. Thank you. It's to cover up my, my missing hair. Um, yeah, I got this hat. I literally, it was the first hat. I was in uh, Colorado last week or uh, the week prior. And I walked into a store with a bunch of friends and I put on this hat and it was the first thing and I put it on as a joke and they're like, wow, that looks really good on you. Uh, so now I wear this hat. Remember, I remember when Gamozo had hair. Yikes. Yikes. Worked six years on TypeScript crap. Now Rust. Oh, yikes. Yikes. TypeScript. Uh, your hair isn't missing. It migrated to your face. Yeah, it just slid down. Uh, would you consider any type of Java job as not worth it? No, I meme about Java being shit. And arguably, it's an objectively garbage language. But, it's not that bad. At the end of the day, it's Turing complete, and that's all you need. You know, at the end of the day, all you need is a little Turing complete program language thing, and you're fine. Rusty wiped Gamoza's hair because it was unsafe. <laughs> Yikes. What about Scala or Haskell? I'm not familiar with both. Uh, or either, I should say. Um, in what sense? Elixir is basically my favorite language, but web development is still kind of ugh. Yeah, I, have, I haven't used Elixir. Must be, must be pretty good if you think it's good, a buff seagull. Um, if it pays the bills writing Java, don't feel bad, chat. Yeah, exactly. What about Zig? I haven't looked into Zig yet. I mean, I, I don't really look into languages, chat. The fact that I'm writing Rust is a miracle. Because I was a hardcore C person. Like, not C++, C. And CC. The fact that Rust was able to capture me is pretty impressive because I am a very low-level dev and I don't like losing control. And Rust didn't make me feel like I lost control. And that is a really high, uh, high praise to Rust. Um... Yeah. Go is good for web dev? I haven't done any uh, Go web dev. It's good for backend dev, for sure. Uh, Crystal is pretty cute. While it has a garbage collector, it also gives you access to Malik and pointers. Ooh. Have you seen D? D Lang? Have you seen D's nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have seen D. Fun fact, D is the only language that can do C++ bindings. Fun fact. Fun fact. Um, got him. <laughs> yeah. D's line coming to a computer near you. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, my programming language is Copilot. Uh, Pigeon, uh, Masters BTW, Masters BTW, please come to the principal's office. Uh, Masters BTW, please come to the principal's office. Um. 
<laughs> what do you do with your six monitors? Uh, a lot of code, a lot of coding up there. Documentation, code, 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 documentation, documentation, and code. Um, sometimes documentation. Uh, Monkas. Masters BTW, you're in big trouble. Ooh. Is SSE 4.1 a reasonable target nowadays? SSE 4.1 is ancient. Um, he is lying. Never turned on the computer at his back. Yeah. It's just for decoration. It's clickbait so people show up to the stream. Does it work, chat? Does it work? Uh, one screen is reverse, uh, reserved 24-7 for, uh, for hentai while working. One screen? One? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm looking at low-resolution one-monitor art. Okay, dude. Yeah. Rookie shit. Exactly. I can see C++ bindings through C linkage, but direct C++ bindings, I'd be surprised. Uh, D should be able to do that. I think it's the, the, only, the only language that has uh, C++, uh, the ability to call C++ functions. Everything else you need to do, though, like C linkage. Um, uh, one for work, you silly goose. What work? Um, SVG art when? Oh, you want us to make some vector art? Uh, I actually don't know how you do vector art. Can you draw it? Can you use like Inkscape and draw it with like a pen and it will approximate the curves? Actually, I think you can with Krita as well. Um, is C++ dead? No, it's just shit. Uh, what about Rust CXX? It's probably awful. Um, yeah, this looks pretty awful. Uh, I'm sure it works, but it looks pretty awful. Um, yeah. Um, I draw in Inkscape. Really? Okay, like with a pen? Like with a, uh, Wacom tablet? W Wacom? 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 Wacom old tablet? Um... That being said, Elixir is very different from JVM languages, uh, being a FP, 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 and an actor model. F, FP, what is FP in this context? Fixed point? Floating point? Functional, oh. F Functional programming. Oh! God, yeah, uh, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, yikers. Ooh, I'm getting messages? Where am I getting messages from? Um. Okay, okay, okay. Um. The official guide is a great place to start, uh, but don't, uh... Expected to get too much in depth. Yeah, let's take a look at Elixir chat. Uh, is Elixir a good language? Is Elixir a good language? Ooh, it has an interpreter. Okay, okay. EXS. Nice. Uh, okay, next. I don't like the next bo box. Uh, ooh. Ugh. Ugh. I like the explicitness, but I think it should be the other way around. Uh, binary, noctil, hexadecimal notation. That's important. Floating point, uh, scientific notation is good. Um, floats are 64-bit double precision. I'm guessing they're standardized to IEEE 754. What are fucking atoms? A constant whose value is its own name. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, are there specifically atoms? Okay. Okay. I hope that wasn't like Java shit. Um string is that. Teacher Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, chat. Nah, uh, just looking through it. io.puts. Mm-hmm. Is binary. I see. I see, uh, anonymous functions, okay, kind of like a closure syntax, linked lists, what 
Wait. They never mod modify an existing list? Return a new list? Oh, fuck. It's Lua. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, that, that makes everything terrible. Do we forgive him? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Oh, no, hating Lua. Immutable linked list. Mr. Fahad, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. I've seen you around a lot here. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Uh, what's this? String concatenation. God damn it. Weird operators, dude. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Nope. All right. Uh, let's go back to writing some Rust code. Um, so... Um, okay. Because yeah. <sighs> 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 fuck Lua and MATLAB for using one index arrays? Yeah, it's pretty awful. Elixir has its place, but the only language I would recommend Gamozo, uh, for Gamozo is Zig. Yeah, I think I would like Zig. Chat, we're gonna go get a, we're gonna go get a beverage. Beverage. Okay, so today we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to be doing a Taylor Fladgate 30 uh, port, um, which is one of my favorite ports. So I'm super excited for this. That's some nice bokeh. Hell yeah, we got bokeh for days. Bokeh for days. 1.4. It's an F1.4. Port? Nice. Hell yeah, dude. Thirty years age port wine, hell yeah, yeah. There you go. Age for thirty years in wood. Tawny port. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, brother. We're drinking the good shit. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's so good. Um, don't tell him chat, but that's actually glass, not wood. Ah, <laughs> uh, hell yeah. Isn't that older than you? It is. Uh, Lua picks starting at one at a time in history where it was not guaranteed that zero would be the de, fact, uh, de facto uh, default. Yep. It was written by an independent team in Brazil uh, who weren't able legally to talk with other people uh, and use outside top, uh, technology. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, Lua is actually a really good language for what it is. Um, in between drops and drinking the $100 bottles. So relatable. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's so good, chat. Best known, best known for its legendary vintage ports, Taylor Fladgate is also a leading producer of aged tawny. Uh, this style of port acquires its characteristic tawny color, complex mellow flavors, and a smooth silky palette as it slowly matures in a seasoned oak cask. This seductive 30-year-old tawny owes its complexity and elegance to three decades of aging in wood and has been aged to full maturity for immediate enjoyment. Taylor Fladgate ports represent over three and a quarter centuries of family tradition that began with the foundation of Taylor Fladgate and Yeatman in 1692. 
Please store the bottle upright. <laughs> hey, Desu, how are you doing today? Good to see you. Uh, phew, my heart feels better now. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about these scripts? Sick. Uh, yeet, yeet, man. Yeet, yeet, man. Yeet. 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 Yeet man. Yeet man. Yeet man. Portugal wine is the best wine? Yeah, I absolutely love Portugal wine. Uh, <laughs> can I get a motherfucking yeet? <laughs> Why did I do it in that pitch? <laughs> Why did I do it in that pitch, chat? All right, chat. Why wouldn't you use LVM for your IL and JIT? Because LVM is slow, shitty, complex, hard to work with, hard to build, hard to change. It's a piece of shit. I hate LVM IR. Um, that's why. You're becoming a true streamer. Your voice is raising higher in excitement. Yes! I'm so excited to do the stream today, chat! Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, because why not do it in that pitch? <laughs> Can we get some ay ay ay's in chat? <laughs> He's so excited. He just can't hide it. All right, chat. Ay 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 ay! Hopefully, crane lift will come. Yeah. All right, chat. All right, chat. So, uh, for those who missed it, because now we have three... First of all, can we can we get chat to appreciate that we have 342 cuties in here right now? 342 cuties in here. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool, chat? So since we have 342 new cuties in here, let's get everyone up to date let's smash that like and subscribe button don't forget to donate to our donate goal today but what we're gonna be doing is i'm gonna give you a little rundown of what we've done so we've been working on an emulator and oh my god we got an anonymous gifter a little ghosty boy gifting five cute subs to five cute people hell yeah and we got some good names in there that's what i like to see thank you so much Pog, don't forget we have new emotes now. You can spam, you can like and subscribe, get excited, you know, whatever. Anyways, easy dodge. Um, easy dodge. All right, so we are working on an intermediate language or an IL, which we're using uh, to basically represent anything that we want to lift. And when we say lifting, we mean we're going to read the assembly of uh, whatever binary we want. So if you're not familiar with assembly, um, assembly is in, in, in cell. Yikes. Oh. Yikes. Uh, if you're not familiar with, uh, um, if you're not a familiar with assembly, this is assembly. These are the instructions that your programs get compiled to, or if you're using a shitty language, get interpreted with. Um, so, basically... What we want to do is we want to make a language such that if we read these instructions, you know, we see that this is subtracting 10 from RSP. We then move Fs into RDX. We zero out a register. We load some memory. We get an address, so we do an addition. We do some floating point stores. We do a function call, those sorts of things. We want to express any architecture in our own language that's super simplified such that we can perform optimizations on it and turn it into a simpler language, or more specifically, get rid of the things that are unnecessary for the optimization, or unnecessary for uh, the code running. So uh, we are using, uh, I need my music to start again. We're going to listen to uh, Taylor Swift uh, speak now, because it's the best fucking album ever. And album speak now deluxe edition. Hell yeah. Hell yes, yeah, Steinerl. Thank you, a Steiner L, Steiner I, Steiner L, Steinerl. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. 
Um, so, basically, what we want to do is we want to make a very exotic, uh, we want to make a very exotic IL. And what this is going to do is we work in a realm of fuzzing. So I'm a security researcher. I find Ode. When you see about crazy Ode and you hear about things getting hacked and shit uh, that are not web-based hacks, um, that's the sort of stuff that I do. Oh yeah, I made uh, I made this the other day. Um... <laughs> In all its high-res glory. Anyways. So, I work in a specific realm where I do something called snapshot fuzzing. And snapshot fuzzing is... Damn it. Why is it not making the right document? New file. 4K. Create. Alright. So, um, I specialize in snapshot fuzzing. Uh, and snapshot fuzzing is basically a technique that is used um, for finding bugs, or more specifically, fuzzing is used for finding bugs, and snapshot is just a clarifier. And what snapshot means is that when you have a program that's running, you have all your RAM here, uh, which you can download. So you can download this. So when you have your RAM that you download, you have this here. And then you also have a small amount of state in your CPU, which is like registers, right? So these are your registers, uh, uh, pegisters, registers. Um, and then sometimes you can have device state, uh, but we're going to ignore device state. We're not going to talk about device state at all because um, it doesn't matter to us. Anyways, when you have all of those uh, different states, and let's get a white background here. Come on. Hello? Mom? Why can't... Oh, because I'm in a race mode. Yeah, okay. Um, bink. Ah, oh, damn it. There we go. There we go. I know how to do art. Um, all right. So, um, basically, when you have that memory state, that RAM, and you also have that uh, CPU state... Um, what I can do is when you're running an application, let's say you have a small little application. Let, let's say uh, you have a word processor. Um, and your word processor interprets a document, and let's say it handles an RTF document, right? RTF1, I think, is, is how that works. So this has a bunch of tokens and a bunch of shit in this document in terms of the actual file format. So this will eventually run into whatever word processor you have. So this word processor is going to start up. You have like a splash screen. That's like a little smiley face. Then it's going to go and like initialize the UI where you have like all these buttons and, and you have the actual like document in here where you're like writing your text and that sort of stuff. Has to make the UI, has to do the rendering, has to do all that sort of stuff. Um, and let's say the document hasn't loaded yet. Like it, the application is just initializing right now in theory. Um, so no scribbles in the document. And then at this point is when it will probably actually load this file. And once it loads this file, it's going to then parse it. So that's usually going to be like an open file. Uh, this is on, I, I don't know, that's, that's Windows. Let's just say it's Linux. You'll have like an open that will give you your FD. And then you'll do like, uh, you'll read from that FD and you have the contents of that file. Uh, and then you parse that. Right? Oh, that's a paren uh, payload. And you can't see this. Sorry. I know the cam's in the way, chat. There you go. Um, basically, you have this sort of environment where... Uh, Basically, the file's going to get open, payload's going to get read, and it's going to parse that payload probably into some object representation of your actual document of, like, you have a header, you have a, a list, you have some a paragraph, that sort of thing, and it gets converted into, like, whatever internal representation they want to use for rendering this document. So, when we do snapshot fuzzing, what it allows us to do is instead of... Uh, instead of fuzzing this whole process, which is what traditional fuzzers would do, and let's say it takes 
uh, like five seconds for the splash screen. And then it takes like one second to load the UI. And then it takes like literally 10 milliseconds to parse the document. Well, we don't want to spend five or six seconds per fuzz case just to do 10 seconds of actual fuzzing of the input that we actually control. So as a snapshot fuzzer, what we do is we have this, uh, we have this RAM and we have the CPU state. And once we get to here, like right after the file has been opened or right after it's been read into memory, we put a breakpoint there. So we put a breakpoint on that. And once we have a breakpoint on that, then we can save all of our RAM and all of our CPU into a file or over the network or whatever you want to do. We can just save the state of that RAM and the CPU. Now, what that means is that now in the future, we can go and um, in the future, I'm going to zoom out a bit more here. There we go. Uh, in the future, we can take that RAM and CPU that we saved off and we can load it into an emulator or a hypervisor or create a new thin application and basically take that file and load it into a new, let's say, a new process. And then we can continue execution. Uh, and all we have to do is we have to change the register states that uh, that we need to affect. Maybe we have like a length in a register state. And then we also have to change the input that's in memory, or maybe it's not in memory yet, in which case we emulate that when we actually read the file when it calls like a read syscall, right? Um, so now our fuzzing loop has been reduced from six seconds uh, into now it's like the 10 milliseconds that it actually takes to parse this input. So snapshot fuzzing has that beautiful effect. However, what we're going to do is we're actually going to load that RAM uh, and that CPU states, and we're going to load that. That's our snapshot. And we're going to load that into an emulator. And the reason we use an emulator is because we can get faster than native perf. Uh than native perf, perf, faster perf. There you go, faster perf. And we also can um, add instrumentation. Uh, so when we, have fa uh, when we have instrumentation, we can gather code coverage. We can kind of explore different things that this program is doing when it's in that emulated context. So that is why we're writing an emulator. Now, right now we're looking at the NES, but here is our crazy goal. When you have um, uh, this memory state and the CPU state, it is always the same every time we start emulation. So if we start emulation here, we're going to have the same memory and register state with the exception of a, a new input that we inject in. And that could be a new packet. That could be a new file. That could be all, all sorts of different things. So since we have the same register and memory state, we can actually constant propagate those values. So that is what we're working on right now. We're working on an IL, an intermediate language, that will allow us to basically lift whatever we want to emulate into our IL where we can reason about it, we could do symbolic execution, we could do optimizations and those sorts of things. But we have a twist. We have a little twist. Uh, this is supposed to be a twist. Is this a twist? There we go. There you go. But there's a twist. Um, so we have a little twist here. And the twist is that since we're working with snapshot fuzzing, and we're emulating from a known state, we actually can assume, we can actually assume the state of this program when we go to emulate. So let's say we have a program where Rax contains a one and RBX contains a two, and we loop while uh, incrementing Rax. Uh, we increment Rax and we increment RBX um, until Rax is greater than or equal to 30, right? And then when that happens, it, it exits. So when that happens, if we know that Rax and RBX are one, then this whole thing can collapse into that Rax is 30 and RBX is, uh, what, 32? 
Uh, no, it's actually, it only looped 29 times, so it's 31. Anyways, so we can do that. We can constant propagate that through. But our goal is to also do that for memory. And the reason that is important for memory is that you have a lot of situations in code where we had, we just read the file in. So we have like equals uh, buffer is equal to read. So we just read some file into memory. Now, we then go and we do some branches and we do like if debug, if debug printf some crap, right? Now that debug flag is not controlled by our input. That is set by like, let's say a registry key. So if that's set by a registry key, God, I keep writing the wrong thing. Um, if that's specified by a registry key, then this value is technically going to be constant because that registry key is not going to change during our fuzz case, which means that this, we know by reading that memory that it's zero which then means that we can then delete this code and just not even have that in our emulator. But maybe later in the code, something sets debug to true. So if that were to happen, if we were to set debug to true, we then observe that we had a memory right here. Then we look up in a database that we emit code that assumed that that value is constant. And then we have to rejit this. So we have to relift this. And this is why, this is why it has to be a lot faster. Um, this is why our IL and our optimization and our JIT has to be really fast because we're constantly going to find situations where we have to go and we have to invalidate our JIT because we found out it was incorrect. And then we go back to the original where it actually uses debug because now we know that that value actually can change, right? So that is the goal of this project. And uh, for a lot of fuzzing, it basically means anything that con is constant should hopefully propagate. So a good example of this Hopefully, uh, and I don't know if we'll get to this today because we're going to have to write a lifter to do this, is printf. Printf percent %d of a value. This, what I want to do is I want this optimization to propagate this constant because it will say jit printf where uh, register zero is a pointer to this, right? It's a pointer to that memory, and r1 is a value. Now, it will go and jit printf. It will lift printf, it will create that graph, and then it will see that pointer points to constant memory. And if that memory is constant, then we can actually constant propagate the entirety of the printf function such that instead of getting printf, we actually will just get whatever printf does internally, which is probably uh, just this will converge into a loop where we do like a, a val mod equals 10, you know, sort of thing, uh, val uh, div equals 10 or val mod 10, uh, and then write this to memory, right? So printf will literally just cease to exist entirely because that is known to be constant. And the, the thing I think that we're going to call this project, the, the, the way that we're going to consider this optimization is um, uh, this is going to be like constant until proven guilty. So when we go and JIT something, we are going to interpret all memory as constant. And then we're going to set a permission bit in that memory to indicate that we treated that, on, uh, we treated that as a constant value. And then if we ever observe a write to that dynamically, then we will have to look up, we'll have a VM exit and we'll look up in our database where we actually need to fix up because that value is no longer constant. So yeah, prove until pu pr uh, proven guilty. So, so far, that's kind of what we have here. So um, if we run this program, this is going to optimize. Uh, we have this graph on the right here. This is our program. Um, we're basically looping until a value is equal to something. And the output code that we get, actually, if we say, if we say that we know that upon entry to this code, ax is 0 and bx is 9, then we get this, because it just knows what the results are. 
it computes the results and it sets those in the registers and that is it. But if we don't know what BX is, it can't optimize that through, it can't constant propagate that. So we get this, where we have uh, AX is known, so AX just gets set to its value, but BX is actually read and computed. Um, now, we want to do an optimization pass on this, and that's what we're about to do, is we're going to make this so when we have an expression like this, where we have BX plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, we collapse it down into the simplified expression. So that is the optimization pass we're going to do now, and that's probably the last optimization pass that we really need to do before we add memory support and start working with like a more realistic scenario. So yeah, that is our crazy design. And the goal basically is anything that isn't affected by the fuzz case is treated as a constant and the program will get re-optimized to handle that. Um, uh, more specifically, like it, if something, yeah, if something isn't affected by the fuzz case. So for example, if you're fuzzing RTF against Microsoft Word, all of the checks against documents and muxing the types and a bunch of rendering stuff is just not needed because it will never happen. So that is, that is the plan. So we're going to write this simplify uh, optimization, which is going to allow us to basically determine um, uh, what sorts of things can be compressed in instructions or simplified. So this is a basic uh, symbolic uh, simplification. Uh, basic simplification of expressions. All right, so uh, we're going to steal some code um, from existing ones. So we're going to go here. We don't need dot open anymore, I don't think. And then we're going to do some code cleanup, I think, after this, because this code needs a little bit of work. Um, and I typoed the file name. <sighs> Okay, sp simplify, uh, il source simplify.rs, uh, basic expression uh, simplification. Okay, so, and more docs. We're gonna write docs? I don't know, dude. Uh, pub super, so uh, the optimized module can call this, fn simplify, mute self. And this will yield a bool. And we're going to say that we didn't optimize anything now. And this is uh, uh, simplify expressions uh, with known uh, results. Wrong again? Oh my fucking god. I'll source simplify. I'll source opt uh, simplify. Maybe today's not a good day to be coding. Uh... All right, there we go. Simplify, not here, that's okay. We just have to say uh, mod simplify. Pass the Palmer's Peak, already gone. One glass, one glass, and I'm gone. Okay. You up aired the RM, not cargo, sick. Um. Simplify. Uh, what? Oh, capital. All right. There we go. We got the basics. Okay. So, uh, that code just doesn't work for some reason. Um, so, now what we need to do is we need to find operations that we can simplify. So, we're going to go through each instruction uh, for operation inputs in self.instructions. Iter mute, maybe. We'll see. I might actually have to do ii. We'll see. So, we're going to match on the operation. And if it's an operation add... And add is a good example of something that we want to potentially simplify, right? And we want to simplify an add in a couple conditions. We want to simplify an add if 
Um, basically, we can collapse ads if uh, both inputs have at least one immediate. Right? Um, so how do we want to do that? Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know how I want to do this. Um. You can check ILRXX. Yeah, of course. Uh, but what I really want to do is make a database, I think. We're going to write this. I don't know if I want to... Um, I don't... Hmm. Optimization. Uh, we have search regs. We have two re uh, to explore that we can use. Because uh, that is labels. Um, okay. We're gonna use that temporary. Um, self dot opt temp dot to explorer dot clear. Okay, and then clear um, states. Uh, this is compute which instructions have at least one uh, immediate input. Okay, so we're gonna do for each operation. For ii and zero dot dot self dot instructions dot len, we're gonna say. Actually, we can do this. Match op. Um. Um. Oh, this is actually a list of booleans. Hmm. Optimization. Explored. Okay, we can use that. Um, Explored.clear. Okay, if the operation is an operation immediate, then... Um, Then uh, self dot opt temp dot push true. Everything else do nothing. Is there a reason to use iter mute instead of mute ref x? I don't. It's just a style choice. I don't think there's a difference. Um. This and this is uh, instruction. Okay, and then instruction here. Okay, and then push that into uh, explore dot push. So if it's an immediate, we know that it's an immediate. Simple. Um, uh, extern create standard print. Um, We'll print the self.opt temp.explored and oop, print ln. And this is standard. And we can get rid of this. All right, so this will print where all of the immediates are present. Um, okay. Oh, yep. This needs to be uh, self.opt temp.explored.push false. Okay. Um, semi. So that's going to push false. And then we have a list of what has immediates. Uh, what is explicitly an immediate. So now what we want to do is also do that for other operations. And I think what we'll do is operation. So what sorts of operations will we simplify? Um, we can only simplify things if they have constants. Um... We could actually go by pure. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Um. I don't want to do this in, a, in, in an efficient manner. Uh, I can say if it's an ad or we could just start with ad for now. Dot push. Um, yeah, we're going to make a new temporary here, I think. So we're going to go into here and we're going to say, um, uh, ba -ba 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 Vec, uh, and then this will have immediate tuples. Oh boy, optimization, and this has to have a t uh, a word a woe a word, and then this contains a woe woe, uh, and this is a tuple of immediates, um, temporary value. Does that give plus five to mana? I wish. Okay, so then what we're actually going to do is this isn't going to be explored. This is going to be mtuple. I think is what I called it. Yep. mtuple.clear, mtuple.push. Uh, and then this has the value. And let's see if I can do that. Uh, I need a default, I think, for that. Uh, does word have default? Word, 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 default. Nice. Uh, whoa, default. Okay, and then here, good. And then this will be self .op temp dot uh, m tuple dot push none. So this has to be a sum. I think this is fine. I think this is fine, chat. Uh, this will be an option of two woes. Then. Actually, we're going to do val val. Because that should actually be a little cheaper. Maybe. Eh, this might be cheaper. I, it's hard to say. Okay, so if it's an ad, we'll do self to op temp. Uh, here, uh, self dot opt temp dot push, match this uh, dot uh, m tuple dot push, and then here we just have the actual values. So if it's an immediate, we have this. If it's an ad, we have this. If it's uh, if it's none of those, it's this. So then for an ad, this will be, um. Actually, this might be an option, woe, option. Option, option, and then this can be a none and a none. Okay, and then this is a sum, val, none. I like that a little bit more. And then this will be a self dot optemp.m tuple get inputs zero uh dot zero zero dot zero as you size don't at me chat don't at me chat uh and then this is one Damn it, chat! Don't at me! Bastards. Okay. So we got that. We have an optimization there. Uh, missing generics for optimization 357. Uh, this will just take a whoa. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, chat. 
Deref that. Okay. Uh, copied. Okay. Nice. No oh, shit. Uh, mismatch type. Simplify. Whoa. Word. Uh. 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 What? Azref. 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 Um. Whoa, whoa. Oh, shit. Um, dot, uh, map, x dot zero, deref, Jesus. Okay. Um, Get that. What? What? Because it should be this, right? So we're getting this value. We get that value, and then we map that to dot zero. And then. Uh, that's true. Yep, you're right. Because they're both options. Thank you. Flat map. There we go. Okay. So now, for ads, we can see that everything's true now. Because, uh, wait. What is that print? Oh, that's explored. Um, uh, optemp. Imtuple. Yikes, I'm really struggling today, chat. Um, okay, so this will go through. Why is it not flat map? I have no idea. Okay, so now... This should be propagating that information. Right, so when we have a none... Yep. So none, none for everything else, for ads we get the immediates, and then down here, when we have an add, we can say, um, if self.optemp.im tuple, uh, let's just say, let uh, m1, m2 is equal to this, for i, i, and zero dot dot self dot instructions dot len, if m tuple, I, I, uh, if M1 is none and M2 is none, continue. And this is, I uh, cannot simplify expressions without any immediates, and that's not 100% true, and we'll get to that Y later. Uh, and then we'll do, um, let op is equal to self dot instructions i i dot zero so let's actually get the operation okay so then what we want to do is if there is an add at this point we know that we have immediates right we know that we have immediates so at this point at least one thing is an immediate, and if it's an add, um, um, how do I want to do this? Do I want this to also do constant propagation? Do I want to support that?
Um. So. Hmm. I want only one of them to be true. Oh, one second, I got food. All right. Um, how do I want to do this? Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I'm gonna be eating for a bit here. Um. Probably want to store a bit more information. Yes, I agree with that. Um, ILRA is this, ILRB, input zero, oh, zero, this, mukbang, hell yeah, ILRA, LRB. Then, um, hmm, hmm. So we get both of those. Sorry for the eating noise. Um, basically, we need to determine where the um, we need to determine. What the operation is that we're consuming. Mm. I can just do that, I think. All right. Um. Um, hmm. Um, um. Left XYZ, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. I'm glad you're enjoying the mukbang we got going on here. Hmm. Um. That probably gets those immediates. Hmm. Um, M tuple get ILR A as U size. If this is some, uh, if this is some operation immediate, some val. We don't care about anything else. Then self to op temp. Uh, oh, this is just gonna be that tuple. Um, M A is equal to this. Some else none.
if it is an immediate and it has a value. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I don't need those options. It's going to be an operation. A woe and a woe. What sandwich you got? It's a uh, pesto panini. Pesto panini. Delicious. Um. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking delicious. Um. What's going on here? That matches there. Oh boy. Match. That, that, that. Where am I missing a bracket? <clears throat> Where am I missing a bracket, chat? We have false, then that. Am I going crazy, chat? What did I break? <clears throat> Something in here is, uh, oh boy. Uh, if this is equal to, there we go. Uh, self.opt.temp.im tuple, uh, ILRA as you size. There we go. Okay. And it looks like operations... Have to have some generics on them. Um, so they also have a T, a TR, or more specifically, optimization needs that. So now we have a TR and a woe. And then this has a TR and a woe. All right. Nice. Nice. Um, X at this, and that's X. And then we can just say the defaults of these, um, word, defaults, word, default. So if we don't know what the value is supposed to be, then it's that. Because now we're going to be muxing off the enum variant, which is the operation. Um. We have an add. M. A. Um. Oh, I do need none, don't I? Damn it, chat. This needs to be an option. Whoa. Option. Well. Okay. Now we got this chat. Now it's going to work. Maybe. Um. Okay. Of A and B. There's a none. There's a sum. Is it going to work, chat? No. No, it's not. LRA, LRB, MB. Okay. Is that ballpark what I want? Um. Hmm. None. None. Is 
unexpected tuple fun option. Hello? Um. Uh oh. <clears throat> Working code just kind of cringe. Enum partial left, right. Yeah. Um. Oh. Oh. Uh. Um. Uh. Push up. I don't need X at. I can just do up. So, hmm. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's try this self dot instructions I L R A. As you size, if it is an operation immediate val, let's try this left, right, yeah. Um. TR not implemented default shit. Um, I hate I hate that because like Vec has a default implementation, which is really annoying. Like that's really fucking annoying to me. Because Vec has a default, and it's frustrating that it has to be a recursive. Where do I send money for the fundraiser? I don't know. I think there's a link below uh, the stream. I'm not 100% sure. Um. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> Shit. Oh. Um. Is this model even going to work? If I have an add, if one of the inputs is an immediate, so we're caching basically the immediates that are the inputs, um, as well as the operation type. Um, hmm, and I need that operation. Unfortunately, I have to impl default for this because I can't derive it. This is kind of fucking dumb. Rust being dumb. Um. Impl default for optimization. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, fn default. Return a self, self. I don't like that Rust can't do this. I don't know how hard it would be to make this happen generically. Vec new. Uh, Vec new. Thank you everyone for all the follows. I see those follows as well. Every once, every once in a while, I see them pop up. I get pretty excited. What? 
Bop, bop. New. New. Okay. So now this should build. Yeah. Why doesn't it work with uh, derive default? Because TR doesn't implement default. Even though it starts as an empty vector. I know it's dumb. It It is possible for us to do it, but it can't. That shouldn't matter, right? All right. You would think. You would think. You would think. But it recursively goes through all the structures. Um, you would think, uh, parts in a type definition? What do you mean this is a very complex type? What do you mean, Clippy? Now, fuck off. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't like this? Um, fucking Clippy being so goddamn picky. All right, so now we can go through each of the instructions. We can look up these. And I think what we'll do is MB is this. Is ILR B. And if let sum M A non equals. Triply nested generics. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, what font is that? I have no idea. I think terminus. I don't know. Uh, then we have a M A M B. We have this, else this. Uh, okay, we're gonna change it again, chat. Um. Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. Holy shit, the carrots of a hundred dollars! Holy shit, dude! Oh, I'm gonna hold what the fuck. Nikar Nikaritsnov? Nikarit Nikita I fuck I can't fucking pronounce your name. Nikar Nikaritsna Nikarit Nikov? Nikarit Nikov? Holy shit, thank you so much, dude! We're gonna be getting a fucking freedom f oh, god, I hope they don't literally just take the money and run. I really hope they don't take the money and run, dude. Uh Holy shit. Yeah, we're gonna get a freedom phone. That's gonna be a fucking blast and a half. Good luck, have fun. Thank you so much. Pog champ. Nikita Karnitov. It's so hard to name. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this to work. So here's the new strat, chat. This is the new strat. Uh, else if let this else uh up uh b -b 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 none none. How many times are we gonna change the shape of this chat? Holy shit! Thank you so much for that, Carrot Nikov. Is that like a Kalishnikov, but with carrots? Where it like shoots carrots? <laughs> um... <laughs> yep. <laughs> Karatnikov, exactly. All right, uh, M-A, this is gonna be a nun. Okay. You're going to keep changing it until I implement the proper enum? No, this is the one! This is the one! <laughs> ILRA. 
in B. This is so advanced, chat. This is some advanced coding. Okay, here we go. Here we go, chat. Do a match so it looks sexy. I like if let's for this size. All right, y'all got my shitty Taco Bell lunch. What's going on? What did you get? What shitty Taco Bell did you get? Um, M A M B. A B A B. Uh. Mmm. Mmm. Just describe the whole menu there. Pretty accurate. Um. <sighs> uh, shit. Is this not descriptive enough for what I want? No, wait, no, yeah, mmm, mmm. It's not descriptive enough? Fuck you, Desu used. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. I program however I want. Make it more descriptive. It is descriptive enough, but I don't know if it's optimized enough. You can program however you want. I like the explicit, you can. <sighs> it doesn't make it right. Oh, no. We'll add comments later. <sighs> it pains me. It pains me, chat. Ah, uh, ba 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 <laughs> I think I have to do a nested if. Whoa. Um, we're going to do some advanced stuff, chat. Chat, raise your hand if you want advanced stuff. If you want advanced stuff, chat, raise your hand for advanced stuff. Uh, <laughs> everyone puts their hands up immediately. Shit. <laughs> I heard a penny drop there. Oh, God, how do we want to do this? Oh, there's so many ways to design this. But there's only one true way. And, chat, whatever we do, we have to make sure that we don't do what Desu told us to do. Because that would be admitting defeat. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Uh, avoid Desu at all costs. Desu is lava. <laughs> Desu is lava. <laughs> avoid Desu at all costs. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, shit. Um, okay, 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 okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm. 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 Okay, maybe I can't do it as advanced as... Oh, wait, wait. Um, um, shit. Uh, because I have to go deeper. I have to go deeper. Op is self dot opt. Whoa, opt tempt m tuple get. M A no 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 
No. ILRB dot map x dot zero parenthesis. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. It's not enough information, is it, chat? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. get ILRB dot zero. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Ha! Wait, do we have to quote functionality? Um, add command desu. Avoid desu at all costs. Oh, man. Um, not enough information. Don't let Desu get into your head. I'm trying. What does it mean, lifting Risk Five? Uh, we might, we might write things that read Risk Five instructions and convert them into our IL today. We'll see. Depending on if we can reason through a basic data structure here, uh, that we should be able to figure out. <laughs> that we should be able to figure out. <laughs> Um, um, basic data structures, mongas. Um, I'm trying to have an elegant way of doing this, and I'm not finding one. And I'm very upset. It's Desu's fault, chat. Damn it, Desu. Uh, okay, ILR, and then maybe the immediate, and then the, that gets us the type of that, and that gets us the chaining properties, and that gets us the immediate. Ah, uh, if let uh, <laughs> uh, um, ILR uh, op. Oh, some if let um, if let some. Up is equal to up, then sum up. Oh, God damn it, chat. What are we doing? What are we doing? <sighs> what if I stumbled on? Avoid Desu at all costs. <laughs> Gamoza streams would be a lot shorter if you listened to Desu. Oh, fuck you, Joff Bazos. <laughs> I hope you get stuck in space. Uh <laughs> D colon. <laughs> Oh my god, how do I want to design this? Huh. <laughs> uh... Um... Jeff Bamboozles. Okay, so what we need to do is... We need to do this backwards. Up, 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 up. Uh, this is the previous up. 
I can just do this in the future loop. Um, stream is savage today. Love it. Uh, if this is prev op, if we have a previous operation, then we have a previous operation here, and th then. Uh, uh, um, what does the seal say? Up, up, up. Uh, I hate it, chat. I hate it. I hate it. Now Dasu's just bragging about knowing math. What do we say to people who do math, chat? We call them nerds. <laughs> nerds. Nerds. Oh boy, that wasn't a... Oh my god, I called it flat map. God damn it. N yeah, nerd, ex take that, Desu. Flap map. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, God, no. Dot get. Oh, God. <laughs> it's getting out of control. It's getting out of control, Jeff. Oh no! Loving this ca- Fuck you above sequel! No! Uh... This is gonna work. This is gonna work, chat. I swear. I swear. I swear, chat. It's gonna work. Ah, uh, it's gonna work, chat. I mean, it's junior level code. He's referred it in his retirement. Fuck. Uh, M A M B. Somebody once uh, told me the world is gonna run me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. It compiles and now it compiles and now it compiles and it compiles. Uh <laughs> for <laughs> if we lost him for uh op prev up immediate in self dot op temp dot m tuple dot iterate uh we can just put an ampersand up front because people are saying we want ampersands Uh, thing, print, thing, uh, x turn create standard, standard, <laughs> Moses, hmm, <laughs> Moses forgetting what code is, <laughs> ampersands for nerds. Uh, there is no code. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay, Rebel Elder. If there's an immediate, resolve that to a sum val, resolve that to a sum val, and then based on those, if there's a thing, then do a sh Shit, PrevOps always gonna fail. Oh, mm. Oh, no! Wait. 
Wait. Uh. Chad, are you waiting? Are people being patient or are you being impatient? Um. Ah, uh, this. It's gonna work. 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 It's going to work, chat. Um, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Dial, uh, command. It's just the various variations of L. God damn it, Rust. Be nice. Um, expected that. Oh, this is a sum. This is a sum. Um. <laughs> yes! 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 <laughs> Victory! <laughs> this won't work for, for some tracks. Desu is still right. This won't for, work for some tracks. But we're gonna make it work for some tracks. Yeah, fuck you, Desu! I, I knew that ahead of time. <sighs> um. Hmm. Desu is lava. Desu is lava. Dad <laughs> <sighs> chug the bottle. I can't afford to do that. <laughs> Why are some characters getting over column 80 disgusting? Mm. <laughs> Highlight my nah, no. <laughs> Woo! Uh, he's unemployed has to stretch the bottle. Oh my god. Um He's so drunk. I'm not drunk. <laughs> Love you, Kamosa. Hell yeah. Glad you appreciate. I gl I'm glad you appreciate that we're trying to dodge Desu as hard as we possibly can. Because, chat, what have we learned about Desu? What do we know about Desu, chat? What do we know about Desu? Desu is lava. Avoid Desu at all costs. <laughs> He's a nerd. <laughs> that is usually right. Rebel Elder. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, chat. All right, chat. Um, K 
Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Monkers. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> That's who is slaughtering. <laughs> I ain't no streamer simp. That's who's winning. Oh my god. Oh, it's a tragedy. I don't like this poll. I can vote for myself. Yes, I can vote. I voted. I'm just <laughs> sitting here implementing my pseudocode, ignoring the chat. This is now a Desu stream. Hello, my, my, name, my name is Desu. Uh, today, we're going to be writing Rust code correctly. It's going to be very fun to watch me do things correct. I go to I, uh, I 80 column format and then I do correct thing and everything works. No excite. <laughs> My company is holding interviews right now. I'm in the corner trying so hard not to bust out laughing. No excite allow. <laughs> no excite good. <laughs> uh, okay. Desu is love. <laughs> Thank you so much for the four months, Rind Rindy D. No excite means perf. Okay. Self dot instructions. I, I is equal to space instruction parenthesis operation colon colon immediate parenthesis Shut up, a bump seagull. It's getting there. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. Oh my god. That is a good type. That is my favorite type. Out of all the types I've ever typed, that is my favorite type. And if you disagree with that type, you don't know what you're missing out on. Uh... Uh, inputs... Uh, tuple. It's a tuple. <laughs> it's a tuple. Can we change the stream to Desu, Gridland, Gamoza? Damn it, people! Type woe cannot be derefed? What? Uh, uh, because that's a ref. Okay, 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 okay. Fuck.
Damn it. That's what I call perf. Yeah, um... <laughs> I should have seen that one coming, chat. I should have seen that one coming. If only Desu could have told me. Um, this is going to be some fun code to debug. Where <laughs> you think we're going to have any bugs? Shit. Uh Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Desu busy compiling code first try. Yikes. 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 I hate everything. Why would I even compile? I just write code to RAM. Oh no. Now we've got unused things. I was trying to be so smart. I can't be smart. I can't be that smart. I can be a little smart. I can be a little smart, chat. We can be a little smart. Kamoza's getting outdated? Desu's where it's at? Fuck Desu. Maybe this is wishful thinking. Why is T-Swiss so fucking good, chat? Uh, okay, now we have to get rid of the woes. No. One woe. We keep one woe, but not a ref woe. Okay, 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 okay. Chat, 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 chat. Um. Um. Chat, give me, uh, chat, I need a moment of silence for figuring this out. Just one moment of silence to figure this out. A moment of silence, chat. All silence. No? What do you mean, no? Oh my god, I'm so fucking dumb, chat. <sighs> I had it right. I had it right, and then I tried to optimize it further, and then I made mistakes. This is why I fail programming interviews, chat. Silence me, ooh. <sighs> Don't make me get Desu in here and have Desu run the, run the stream today. You wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want Desu in here writing good code. Oh, I'm gonna follow Clippy, and I'm gonna make types for things, and I'm gonna make enums. Woo! <laughs> That's exactly what we want. We not, we want all those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... M B I L R A. At least Tessie has a job. <laughs> Uh, 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 
Joke's on you, I quit in two weeks. Hell yeah, Desu. Fuck yeah. You got a good thing planned up, or are you just uh, YOLOing for fun? And all, and the decision was made because of Gamoza's stream. I I made Desu quit his job, chat. I made Desu quit his job. He saw that I was a quitter, and he's like, I could be a quitter too. So then he quit. Damn right. I gave him confidence. No take backsies. Exactly. Making Desu quit toxic. Yeah. Who else wants to be unemployed in this chat? Raise your hand if you want to lose your job. <laughs> Can't lose it if you don't have it. I'm gonna sit out on this one. Ooh, above seagulls overprotective of their job. Um. Mm. Wait. Wait. I like how we're going back to the original design we had that actually was gonna fucking work. Um... Do we even care about the op anymore? No. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes? Maybe. It's a we're gonna we're gonna stick with a maybe for now. We're gonna stick with a maybe for now. Uh okay. So then we can do if let sum operation add. Uh, A, B, uh, I, I, and self dot, uh, zero dot dot self dot instructions dot land. Uh, ba -ba -ba, let me attempt is equal to mutable. Up, oh, nope, immutable reference to a self dot op temp dot whatever we call this thing. God, what <laughs> we're having some troubles here today, chat. Temp I I temp slur zero. We don't care about this. Do I need M? No. U32 is a primitive type. Done. Um, oh. And yeah. You know what to do, Gamozo. <laughs> Gamozo Fraud. That actually turned out really cute. I actually like that a lot. Yep, 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 yep. What am I doing? Chat, what the fuck am I doing? Um... I don't know anymore. <laughs> the bottle doesn't help.
One out of 15 compiles. Gamoza can feel like Desu. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Damn, dude. Damn, dude. Damn. That's sick. Add. Inputs, reg siller. Wait. Wait. Chat be nice to the streamer. Ooh. Fifteen X dev. Um Hmm. 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 Um, I don't know if I can express this in my IL. Because I would have to create a new immediate. Or replace an existing instruction. And adding an immediate is really expensive. Unless I made immediate tuples for inputs or things can take immediates as arguments. And I think I want that regardless. Chat. Desu would figure. Desu wouldn't do shit. Chat. Desu wouldn't do shit. When was the last time you saw Desu do anything? Chat. Uh. <laughs> oh, now I'm on a music again. One millisecond ago. See, there you go. Desu thinks in milliseconds. I think in microseconds. My thoughts last for a very short amount of time before losing them. At least you have thoughts to lose. Yeah, exactly. Desu doesn't have any thoughts to lose. Oh, no, chat. Are we going to add immediates to the language? To the IL? I think we should. I think we should chat. Um, so that's tough because that's a lot of work. Oh, uh, <laughs> shit, chat. What are we doing? I'm so used to having immediates in the stream, and if I don't have immediates in the stream, then... I will have immediates as a register. And then a register is part of an inputs. And an inputs will then become uh, an input to an IL instruction. Is this fine? Do we care about the perf of this? Is this okay? <sighs> P 
curve must be maximized. Um... Chat, 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 chat. Are we screwed? Um, um, we can always ask Desu. <laughs> the typing will continue until perf improves. So I might change the way that I represent my IL to make it a lot simpler. Um, because if we're caching enough about the IL, then we don't necessarily care how expensive, like how complex an uh, instruction representation is in the IL. I want it to be able to like generically enumerate inputs and stuff, but I could potentially store that information like out of band um, or like have a cached representation of them. Have you done things, uh, anything with async and await and Rust? Do you think those things help in projects like this? In projects like this, no, but anything where you're blocking, like network or disk, uh, async and await and Rust are fucking phenomenal. I'm really happy when I get to work with async and await, but in this case, there's nothing blocking, so it doesn't matter. Thanks for the tip about sages. Their food was amazing. You went to sages? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, it's a little hole in the wall, a little quiet, a little awkward inside, but it's wonderful. Um, <laughs> well, what do you put this content on YouTube? The last two streams are there. Yeah, I'll put them up there. I'll probably do that tonight. I just have uh, been busy the last couple days. What do you use unit tests? Uh, what do you use for unit tests in Rust? You and I both know the answer to that one. You and I both know the answers to that one. <laughs> um. It's my little dance. This is my, I have no idea how I want to architect this code. And I'm thinking about just rewriting it all. This is my, maybe I might just rewrite it all from scratch dance. Um. Holy shit, chat, this is hard. Um. Cause the way I would like to express this would be that I have, um. I have like an instruction, like an add, and I have like an output, uh, which is a register, and then I have an input, which is like a reg or m, and then I have another input that's like a reg or m, right? Like this is how I want to express this code. The problem is uh, performing mutations on this is very expensive and very hard. Um... Um, arm or of star. So I'm thinking about doing some stuff. What about an immediate instruction? That's what I have now. The downside is that's really hard to optimize when I actually write a JIT. It is nice to have an immediate field because what I'd eventually do is I would bias towards having add reg reg m. If I have only one immediate, I want the immediate on the right side because then I can do a, a v add a vp add 
uh, B, vector add packed, uh, vector packed add bytes. And then I can have directly into a register from another register. And then I can do uh, a broadcast of the actual, uh, um, I can have a broadcast of that. Actually, I don't know if you can do broadcast like that. Um, actually, Intel manual. I don't actually know if you can do a 64 broadcast. Have the swap have a pass that swaps operands and puts ims on the right. Yeah, so that will be my goal towards the end because I can have only this argument can be uh, memory. Uh, let's take a look at uh, instruction set reference. This live vector pack add byte. Let's see what encodings are allowed here. Um, yeah, so there's an M32B cast and there's an M64B cast, but there's actually no M8B cast. If there's no M8 by uh, broadcast, then I don't necessarily want that. Mainly, I want to be able to bias things to the right so I can use these encodings on 32 and 64-bit architectures, which is arguably most of them. It basically removes an instruction. But for 8-bit architectures, maybe I could just specialize that in the JIT. Um... Hmm... Hmm. Um. So. That's really tough. I can't believe there's no M8 broad. I mean, I can believe there's no M8 broadcast because that would be ridiculous. Ah, shit. That's really interesting that there's no. Um, wait. Hmm. Is there no broadcast? There is. Uh, this might not be a real instruction, though. Oh, wow, there's a VP broadcast B. Where's the memory variant? Here we go. Yeah, VP broadcast B, that takes an M8. Um... <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Um, Type of line 258. Yep. 
Um. Oh. Hmm. So I'm thinking of like... I'm trying to think through how expensive it would be to have pointers for all these things. Um, God, I wasn't expecting this to be so hard. Um, Hmm. Hmm. So I'm thinking of like, can I make a model where I have really heavy metadata? And then I have like a really readable um, IL. Uh... So here's what I'm thinking. So I have like a... Uh... Uh, enum, uh, instruction, and then we have, like, an add out aisle, uh, register in reg or m, in reg or m. And so previously what I had is, like, an impl instruction, and then I had, like, a fn inputs, and then this would return, like, a mutable reference to the inputs. Um, but what I'm thinking is what you do in your previous uh, vectorized emulation projects. I had the same model that I was kind of starting with where I had immediate be an instruction. Um, So I'm thinking about, like, I, I don't know what my thoughts are on this, but I'm thinking about doing this. This would allow me to very quickly iterate through all the input inputs if I ever need to transform registers. So let's say, for example, I have like ILR0 is equal to ILR1 plus ILR2. Or let's say ILR0 is equal to 0 plus 1. And then ILR1 is equal to ILR0 plus uh, 1. And then ILR2... Uh, is equal to, or like target reg zero is equal to um, ILR zero, right? So one of the things that I'm thinking here for basically, or IL, ILR one. Now the way that this will go is this will actually propagate to a one, and then this will propagate to a, um, this will propagate to a two, right? Um... Actually, that still stays at ILR1, which is interesting there. Uh, mainly, it's where I do transformations. I guess that's where I have, like, target ILR2 is equal to target 0. And then target 0, uh, let's say target 
one. Uh, ILR three is target zero. Here's here's a good example. There's like deduplication here. ILR three. This can be optimized where it knows that these two are the same axes and it can omit this one, which then means this uh, register needs to be transformed to two. Um, and the way that I can do that is basically by uh, going through all of the inputs and applying a transform. And you'll see that I do that a lot in optimizations. Um, let's take a look at what we do here. Um, DCE, mm, DCE removes instructions by replacing them with NOP, which will stick with that model. Um, and then down here, uh, NOP reduce. I guess we don't really do any remappings here, do I? Um... Hmm. So. I guess I'm not really mapping registers. What am I tracking? I'm tracking pure. I'm tracking where registers are used. And I'm tracking blocks. So. What I'm trying to think of is like how I want to express all of these. I guess I don't really need in and out annotations. Those are more for like just readability. But what's my most expensive operation? I guess the emulator is literally the most expensive. This is O of 1. We would have a couple more conditions. But we could potentially have like just the opcodes. If we only wanted the opcodes, we could have an opcode structure. Um Are you using NeoVim? Nope, this is just normal Vim here. Um I'm trying to think about how much performance we'd lose. How often am I remapping registers? I remap registers whenever, I guess that's just replacing it with the known result. How often do I actually remap registers, I guess? When are, it's only where I can look through inputs. Here we go. Update register usage. So I do a remapping here. Well, that's actually tracking register usage. But this is still a good example of where I want to be able to iterate through all the inputs very quickly. Um, although, if I just keep this reg use out of band, I think we're fine. Then this one, here we do uh, register updates. But we actually wouldn't have to do register updates if we don't have the register the output registers based on the instruction index but then we'd need a quick lookup table from going from a output register to an instruction and that's relatively rare and i think we do this more frequently this might actually be more performance um because this happens a lot and we wouldn't have to update these we could just when we delete instructions we could just let the register go stale and that's totally fine. Then when we remove NOPs, like when we do this NOP removal, we wouldn't have to update really any of these things except for like uh, the block index. But removing them, we wouldn't have to necessarily do the swaps. Well, we still would just be... Uh, we could also keep NOPs in. Ah, uh, nah. I think we want to remove NOPs, to be honest. Well, NOPs could just remove an instruction then. Basically, if we have the output register as part of the instruction, then you can just remove instructions without having to, like, do this sort of swapping. 
Uh, the downside is now you don't implicitly know the instruction where a operation is performed. But I think we do that rarely enough that it doesn't matter. Let's look at our optimization. DCE. For each instruction, skip NOPS. So we wouldn't have NOPS in our stream in this other IL implementation. So we could skip over that. Get access to the optimization structures, and that's fine. And then we'd have the same metadata as before. Um, and then replace with NOP, that would just remove the instruction. Um, although replacing something with NOP sometimes is needed uh, when you're doing an iteration like this. Um, so we maybe still have NOPs such that the size of the instruction list wouldn't change uh, while changing, like while removing instructions. Malik91, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Register propagation. Here we're going through, we compute metadata. Here we actually get the instructions. So DCE, this is a good example. Everything here is metadata. If we change to a different model, we can have the exact same performance. Nothing changes here. Um, like literally none of the performance has to change when we switch to a different model. Now, if we switch, uh, let's look at reg prop. This is going to create these mappings. We get an instruction here. And here we perform remapping. Um, so we would still need to do this style of remapping, which is a reason to maybe use the RC cells. But if this happens rarely enough, is it worth having an RC cell for these values uh, as they are? Um... Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying, like... Basically, do we want a verbose IL and then we make metadata for perf? Or do we want to have a perf IL uh, where we don't have to have as much metadata? Because in this model, in this... This model, we might need a little bit more metadata. Um, this is also a double DREF due to the RC. And I don't know if it's worth it just for these remappings. Um, basically, the goal of this like RC cell is that we could perform a remapping uh, very, very, very easily. Um, um, hmm. How often do I do those remappings? Update target register mapping. So reg prop, as we kind of show it as an example, that needs to do remappings of registers. Uh, DCE does not need to do remapping of registers. And thus, and this one doesn't even need to, uh, this only needs to check the operation variant. And even that, it just needs the metadata. So that's just metadata. This one, could we switch this to using metadata? Um... So, I don't know how much the performance matters on this. I don't have a commands command. Sorry, Latte. Um, opt. Um, not reduce. We wouldn't actually need not reduce anymore because there would be no not reduce. Uh, replace with mop, we wouldn't need any, well, we'd still have a remove instruction that would actually update the metadata correctly. And then we'd have the instructions and those sorts of things. I'm basically, I'm curious how often I have to destructure these enum variants. Um... And I don't think it's too often. I don't think it's very often. 
Why does the JIT need to be so performant? Because we're going to end up invalidating the JIT a lot and rejitting things. Uh, just because we're going to be const propagating things that aren't constant, and then we're going to find out that they're not constant later, and we're going to have to go and re-emit the code for them. So uh, we're probably going to re-emit the same code like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of times. Um, so we're going to have to have a really fast JIT. And that's kind of the architecture of this, is to have that like super fast JIT. Um, hmm. Um, God, this is really weird. I, I, I don't know if I like the RC. So one nice thing about the RC is I can actually get the count of the RC. Um, I think. Um, uh, that's downcast. Don't want that. I want get the number strong uh pointers and then there's also i could also do uh yeah try unwrap and then also there's an unwrap isn't there maybe not try unwrap is sufficient um This is really interesting because it this would tell me the number of usages of this would tell me the number of usages of a of an instruction or of an immediate, right? So like if I have an out RC cell reg, I actually know how many times this the output of this instruction is used based on that cell count. Which is a really interesting property. Because my DCE could actually converge to just checking those cells. Like checking the counts on the, or checking the RC counts. And basically if this RC count is one, then I can just delete the instruction. Although that's really expensive. Well, uh, how does RC structure that? It'll just be in the RC itself. And the RC is stored in the instruction. And then it has a pointer. So an RC will be a pointer. Yeah, I'm guessing an RC will be a pointer. Yeah. Uh, non null RC box with a strong count, a weak count, and a value. Um. Um, hmm, hmm, the in and out is unnecessary. The in and out are inferred, so we, we don't actually need those, but, um, Do I like how that expresses a graph? Well, hi yo, how are you doing? Um, reg use could be implied by register. This could be an index that would go into reg use. I think that's the RC cell is a bad idea. It's an unnecessary abstraction. I'm better off having this sideband data. Um, then the regular M's. Uh, when I want to do reg transforms, that's only going to happen on reg props. 
And then I need to go through and I need to remap all the registers. Um, hmm. Huh. This is like a really weird problem. I, I really want to figure out like how to how to structure this. Basically, I'm trying to figure out if I can have this be strongly typed. The stronger I have typing on this, the like more coherent my IL is and the more powerful and more extensible it is. Uh, but I will need sideband data to get performance. And that's okay. Just like cached results, cached operations. Reg use I can get easy, pure I can get easy. Actually, pure is based on the enum, so that's really easy. Reg use is easy and blocks is easy. Um hmm. and then that would allow me to have the uh regular immediates. And then regular immediates, I could view the immediates without a deref. That actually might almost be faster. Even though it's more data and it's a conditional check more frequently, it's a conditional check without having to go through a deref. So I think this is actually a faster way to express my IL. Uh... Rewrite incoming, yes, it is. There is a rewrite incoming chat. Um <sighs> It's really interesting from an optimization perspective because basically the the way that I have it right now, when I want to look something up about a register, I actually have to go through another table. Oh god, and that means I can use a um Okay, I'm really curious here, actually. Uh, let's take a look at this. I was thinking about this earlier today, and I do wonder if this is possible. Um, enum foo uh, bar baz. Um... Uh, pub fn size, uh, use size, and then we'll do, uh, core mem size of foo. Eight. That makes sense. Um, so, then, there should also be, uh, U32, uh, core num. That's also eight. Is this eight? Yeah. And it has to be. Um. Hmm. Rewrite it and then rust. Yeah, I. What other problems have we had with this IL design? Well, with this IL design, we actually have a special case of an IL register for a maximum. 
And that will only happen... Basically, anywhere we use max is, like, something that's pretty... Pretty scuffed. And that's because that is how we indicate that a register is not used. Um, this would have to become a match. Right? Rid of the partial application thing my way. I'm not happy about it. Don't know how to avoid combinatorial explosion. Yeah. 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 So anywhere that we use max, we have a problem. Um. So... If we're using max, we're doing something dumb. And I think we propagate res reg use. And we, I think we, shit. Do we even want to compute this? Blocks. Um, blocks, I think we have to do right when we finalize a graph. Pure and reg use, we can maintain while we can even construct our, our graph, which is kind of interesting. Um... Hmm. Fix up branches, replace with knop. Replace with knop, we won't need. That will just need to propagate the usage changes. Although that's now going to have to be a match. Right, and that's really what I wanted to avoid with this model, is that this now needs to be a match to figure out the inputs to this instruction. Um, and that's, let's see what Russ can do. Let's see if we can coerce Russ to do the right thing. Um, we have, yeah, I, hmm. Okay, and then this is like, we'll just say, uh, this is remap. And then we'll do match arg foo. Uh, we'll say this is a mutable reference to foo. Uh, foo add a b. Uh, A minus equals one, and then B minus equals one. This is a foo, and that's on arg. I'm really curious if Rust will make this unconditional here, or more specifically LVM. Okay. That's good. That's really good. Okay, and then we have a not. Um, hmm. Um, 
that's going to get the variance, check the type. Uh, if it's equal to 2, it goes here. I don't like this code, Jen. This could be a lot better. Why are there two compares? There should only be one compare. Needs to check if it's one of these two or or if it's this one. And if it's one of these two, then it can just go and do decrement both. And if it's this one, then it can just decrement the one. And here it goes to LBBO2 to do the decrement both. And then if it's one, then it goes here and it decrements one. <sighs> this is exactly what I was afraid of. Hmm. It is interesting that we're getting a different code gen based on the shape of this. Okay, let's see if we can coerce Rust by doing this. Wow. Wow. That's actually not bad. That's really not bad at all. Um. Huh. Huh. Colon thinking colon. Had to step away for a few hours. What did I miss? Oh, we're going to rewrite everything, I think. Aren't those considerations compiler-related? The compiler could get better results in the future? Yeah. But I'm actually happy with this. This is fine. I can write this. This is more idiomatic anyways. Um, colon thinking, colon. Rewrite it Desu's way? Fuck Desu's way. <sighs> oh... God damn chat. Avoid Desu at all costs. Exactly. D colon. Um. Do I ever remap an output? No. Um. Um, uh, you know, um, let's try this. Okay, simple. What's funny is that this is what my original IL did, and I, I think it's really good. Uh, regs are now arbitrarily allocated. Uh, we don't free registers back. It's going to lead to a higher memory usage. We can always free register. We could have a free list of registers if we wanted to. Um... Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, 
Um. Okay. Just for now, uh, B dot into. I normally didn't like M's in my IL because it makes it a lot more com uh, complicated, but it leads to uh, better optimizations uh, and less moving around of instructions. So I think it's faster. If I need to make a, a second IL, if I need to, uh, that like simplifies even more. I can always do that. Um, I'd rather have a higher level aisle at, at this stage, I think. Um, uh, let's just go with this. Wow. Okay. Um... Add five and six. Uh, default. And that should just work. Actually. Ample. Uh, from U32 for reg or M. FN from val U32 self yields uh, self M val. That's going to make writing the code a lot easier. And then... I can always have another IL if I want to do further optimizations. Or I can always resolve things. I can have an M instruction that takes uh, a U32 if I want to basically propagate immediates up to one, like, local location. Chat, what are your thoughts on this, this design? Then doing transforms on these. I can always replace these with immediates. Um... Hmm. Yes, design. Um. Felix, Sharon, do you intend to stay in the Microsoft air neighborhood or head down to the bay? I'm going to go wherever I feel like it. I have no plans right now. Whatever offers are and and what has cool work and whether or not I would have coworkers where I want to work There's like so many different reasons to change. I don't really care. I'm not too picky on it. Um My only concern here is now we have another conditional on these instructions, but that shouldn't be too crazy bad with like the this remap logic and this um, we have a branch anytime you do anything with the inputs. Early, you sounded like you tried to avoid that. Yes, but I think this is cheaper in the long run. It's like basically the reason it's so hard for me to make these decisions right now is like it's going to be one more branch every time I interact with an input, but 
I don't have to like move the graph around to allocate a new immediate to insert an immediate into the graph and do like fix ups of uh, labels and offsets and jumps and all of those sorts of things. So this allows the IL to be a lot more static and stay like in its vector a little bit better. Um, and that's what's really difficult about this is like it's I kind of have to commit to the design early on. Um, um, hmm. There's so many ways to design this. It's it's really ridiculous. So like one thing that's interesting to think about is like an optimization where I have ILR zero is zero plus one. And then yeah, this is a this is a great example. Um so in this situation, when I fold this, because I determine that's a constant and I can do a constant propagation on that, when I turn that into a, a constant one. I then have to go through the graph. Well, I don't have to right away, but in the future I can go through the graph to then replace occurrences of ILR0 with that constant itself, um, which is ON. But also, instead of doing ON, I could also have the output be a like regger M, or more specifically, this could be a, an RC uh, reg or M, right? And then that means that this is the same value. And that means I would be able to change that value to an immediate and it would propagate through the entire graph. And that means I wouldn't actually have to traverse the graph. Like every place where I like go through all of the instructions to look for, look for like certain operations, I wouldn't necessarily have to do that anymore. Right? <laughs> and that's really fucking weird to me because it it's a lot more expensive because now I have like another indirect branch or not an indirect branch, but a, an indirect memory access. But I won't have to do ON. I won't have to go through all the, like here, here I have to go through all of the instructions to look through these targets, when in reality I could just have like, well in this case I could just have a list of all the labels. Um, this is terrible. Oh god. Oh god. I mean this is kind of what I plan to do. What's terrible about this? This is fine. It's fine. Yeah, I think the, like this is effectively what I think is the simplest way of doing it. Too many combinations. Yeah, well, um, that's why I was thinking about keeping the like left or the right side and then having maybe a flag of left or right. And basically you only keep around the immediate and you only keep around the register. So you know which one's the register, which one's the immediate. You can combine the immediates based on the left or rightness but you don't actually have like that many matches. That was the model I was thinking of doing, um, which is basically the exact same thing as this, except for like ads, you can combine left and right to be agnostic because it doesn't matter, stuff like that. Um, shit. Like, this is, uh, I'm really tempted to do the RC cell. I really am tempted to. It allows me to remap registers and remap outputs instantaneously. 
And it means I don't think I need to move around labels ever again. Um... Nice hat. Hell yeah. I'm glad you like the hat. I love this hat. Apply science to the problem and try it out. Yeah, the, I'm trying to think through like all the ramifications of it. I'm not actually going to use an RC cell. That would be stupid. Um, um, Young Miles. I love this channel. Hell yeah. I'm glad you enjoy it. God, this is a really fucking hard problem. Um, let's, let's pseudocode out, like, roughly why I think this would be really dank. Um, I think this would be really dank if... Here's what I'm thinking. Um... to reg chat you're gonna hate this you're gonna hate this chat uh fn allocates mute self this is gonna give you a new register um more indirection yep yep <laughs> Uh, ooh, index to input. I'll just call this lookup for now. We'll, we'll find a better name later. <laughs> Can't hate it if I don't understand it. I already hate it. Um, ah, <sighs> uh, This is really fucking ridiculous. If I can if I can make this work, this is going to be a, a a very exotic model. Um <laughs> uh basically I want to allocate our registers. So, I want a reg which is U8. There's our regular M which is also a U8. And uh so we're going to ask for a register. It's going to allocate one. Um and then it's going to push a... Well, this is going to allocate a register. When we allocate a register, this is going to push the... itself. Okay. Uh, and then this is going to be a reg ID. And then we can do impl from reg for reg 
for reg or m fn from val reg self self reg reg val this is fucking weird um uh, uh look up reg or mint Oh shit. Um Wow. That is weird. That is weird. That is weird. Um Okay, okay. We're abusing the type system. We're abusing the type system. Uh, reg or M int? It's a reg. We allocated a register. That's our ending up return. We can just say this. It doesn't doesn't really matter. ID ID Okay. Uh what's going on here? Close delimiter here. Uh yep. Yeah. Derive, clone, and copy for both of those. All right. So, let's mute prog as program default. Perg.adds five and six. Um, I can't turn that into a regular M. If I can't use, um, Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Um, how do I do this? Um, five or six. That can't be into regular M. I guess. Can I do regular M here? No. Uh, regular M into. <sighs> Promise I need to. Uh, I need to have access to program to make an immediate. Um, Foster and native script would be an interesting idea. Ooh, what is this going to do here? I might not be able to do these fully generic as I want. That's okay, I can always pass in an enum. Um, A reg's a U8, a regular M is a U8. I guess this is a regular M ref. Then we can have a regular M. 
Not as a reg or M. That takes a reg U8. Make your own trait. Yeah, I would have to do a... I would have to use a trait. Um... So... <laughs> That has to allocate anything or an existing one. That's the problem. If it's an ame uh reg ref or M. Oh god. Kill me, chat. Reg ref. So this is a reg ref. Uh, ba 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 <laughs> Why am I making this so difficult? Um, we have a reg ref. Which can be turned into a regular M, which I don't necessarily need. Uh, actually, a reg ref can be a reg ref or M. And that's going to. Yep, here we go. Here we go. This is the strat, chat. Uh, reg, reg ref. Immediate U32 buffer buster. Thank you so much for the 11 months. Hell yeah. Uh, this is strange. I, 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 it's really hard to say whether or not this is going to help or hurt performance. Because this is bizarre. Impl from U32 for reg, ref, or M. Then this is FN from Val. Uh, this is reg, ref. Uh, this is from a U32. Yield to self. We'll have a self uh, M val, and this will be a self uh, reg ref. Okay. So we add five and six. Those are reg ref for M's. This has a. Uh, it's just a register, whatever we want it to be. Actually, that's going to be a, a struct reg U8. Which no one's gonna get access to those outside. Then 42. Uh, this is reg ref or reg or m. Yep. And then that's just actually create the new register, which is actually not gonna be that. It's gonna be uh, num regs. And this is uh, the reg type. And then this will be reg is equal to self dot num regs. And then we'll do self dot num regs plus equals one. And then we'll push regular M I D and we've allocated that register. Um, okay. And that's basically doing register allocation there. Uh, kind of, it's doing IL register allocation. So we increment number of registers. We push that is a register allocation. We return. This is, uh, not a, uh, the reg ref is actually reg ref self dot lookup dot len minus one. Uh, okay. Eighteen reg ref. Val dot zero. A reg ref is a U eight. That's actually correct. Then convert this to a U eight. What's up, Kaji Pro? How's it going? This reg ref is going to get confusing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's for I would like to say it's for good reason, but it's not. Uh, reg ref for M. And we're gonna add to a reg. And here we're going to do uh, self.reg, 
And that takes our regular M and a reg ref. Uh, this is actually, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, we need more types, don't we? We need more types. This is a regular M. And a regular M is actually a, a placeholder. Um... Reg ref for M ref? Yeah. Regger M. Ref. Yeah. It literally is. Uh. <laughs> it's strongly typed, chat. It's strongly typed. Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> Impl uh from uh regref for regref or mref <laughs> fn from val regref yields itself self regref val uh, <laughs> Create a generic enum. Yeah, that's going to be the correct way to go. But uh, we're starting with this just to see. Don't you dare write self. Uh, M. Mref. Mref doesn't exist. Yeah, an Mref is just, uh, it's just one of these. Duh. <laughs> uh, I want to get into Rust, but are there any jobs in it? There's a non-zero amount of jobs. There aren't too many, uh, but there. Oh, uh, mm, let output is self dot reg dot. Uh, okay, self dot reg. We allocate a reg, and then we do output dot into. And now we have to do uh, let a is equal to a dot into let b equals b dot into okay um, a b that's not quite ready yet um, yep it needs to be regular for imref and that's okay all we have to do is a simple uh, dot ref. Uh, it's the correct way. <laughs> chat, it's fine. It's fine, chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh Fuck. <laughs> Lots of crypto jobs, but there's a favorite out there. Uh, I'm kidding. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Yeah, um, uh, this isn't high quality code yet. We're basically, right now, we're writing this to see if this idea is even going to remotely boil into decent code. Like, it, it, oh, there was a pin suggestion there. <laughs> Um, oh, that is a trait, isn't it? Uh, okay. Uh, Jesus. Um, let's just say this is a reg ref or m ref. These could all be traits. Then we can do a match val. Oh, this is a reg ref or m, and then this is going to give a reg ref or m ref. And then we're going to have, uh, if it is a reg ref or m, m variance, 
Then we have an immediate we need to allocate. Otherwise, it's a reg ref or im ref variance, in which case it's a, a, a ref. And then we have a reg ref for im ref where we do a ref x. Okay, and then here we'll say reg ref or im ref ref zero. Uh, just to see if hypothetically this works. Uh, reg ref for im ref. Yeah, we can say these are these. Uh, okay, and then this is a reg ref. Shut up, chat. You shut up, chat. It's fine. <laughs> um, no comment. I need a drink. <sighs> Yeah, that's an imref. Uh, M. And then this is uh, self dot M M. And I'll give us an imref. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, damn it, chat. Ah, uh, program. Uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All that for add 5 and 6. I know. Okay, we have an add regular 2 imref 0 imref 1. That actually makes sense. A B output Okay, so let's say this is A, and then we can do uh, let's, and then we can program dot add A and nine. Fuck. Oh, add uh, yields uh, regref. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is output. Yes! Yes! Add two immediates together. Um, then we add two of these together. Uh, we got a reg, a reg ref, and an M ref. And then two, three, four. Okay, so the whole reason we did all of it <laughs> is that now what we can do is that when we do an optimization, we can just do um so if we cons prop this on A, we can actually do uh, like self dot instructions zero, which is the original add. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So if we, if let's instruction add out a b is equal to this 
then we can say... Um, wow, okay, uh, uh, <laughs> shush chat, shush, it's fine, okay. If we have an, if the first instruction is an ad with two immediates, which it is, we should get a moose. Okay. Well, we got a moose, chat. We should get a moose. It probably won't compile. Yep. Uh, this is program instructions. Uh, okay. And then we need to do a borrow. Let's say mute on that. Okay. So we got a moose. So we have two immediates. And what happens when we have two immediates? Well, we can actually collapse it. And that means that... Out... is a regref and that means that we can this is fine it's fine so we're gonna do uh if let's regref or m ref m uh regref which it is out is equal to out. Okay, let's see if we got moose here. I think we do. I think this is a moose. Okay, we got a moose there. So then out. We can change self lookup out as you size. And now we can change this to an M. Uh, reg or M, M of A, uh, uh, let's just say five for now. Uh, this is program. Okay. And... Look a moose. Moose emote when? Okay, I don't actually like this model. It's not necessary to have it this strongly typed, but it still works. It still works. It still works. Um. Um. Moose emote when? Okay. Um. Hmm. Dump self inst. It, this would cause a mismatch, but that's okay. We can just change it to, uh, refs. Um, match. Uh, yeah, we, we got there in my head. Uh, and that's okay. Um. We can dissolve. We can dissolve the strong typing on this boundary. So this, this boundary is where we'll enforce strong typing of the typing. And then it will just turn into like a ref internally, right? So in the internal representation, these don't need to be regular ims and regular im refs. Um, these can just be ref, ref, ref. Um, but this will guard you from putting a, a, a bad input, like a target register where you can't use one, right? Um, so yes, I was going like extraordinarily strongly typed and it will definitely relax that a little bit here. Uh, so if it is a uh, instruction, Add out and B 
Um, yeah, so in reality, these are actually going to be ref, ref, ref. And we'll just say these are U8s for now. Um, but I, I actually think this is going to be a good model, unfortunately. Um... But the internet told me strong type good. Strong type is good. Uh, in this case, we don't need strong typing, though. Um, okay, A and B in this case uh, into ref. Regular for imref. We're just going to say this for now. We're kind of breaking things. We're breaking things, we're just hacking things up. We're hacking things up, chat. We're hacking things up. M.0, okay. 74, what's going on here? Uh, dot zero. Oh, comma. Oh, that is a red graph, okay. Okay, and then 87. Um. This is good because this pushes a lot more work onto the uh, front end, which is only done once. The optimizations will iterate a couple times, but these will not. Uh, I really, really, really like this model. I love it. I hate it. I'm going to hate it in two days when I've worked on it a bit more. And that's what makes it so good. Uh, that's a red ref. Okay. Then we have this, and what we'll do is we'll print add, uh, and then here we can do uh, perg.dump. We can just do dump uh, for inst and self instructions, and in two days we can rewrite it again. Absolutely. Right? Add. Frog dump. Yep. Gone. 108. Regra for imref. Uh, prog lookup out as u size is equal to a regra in 5. 108. Uh, we can deref that. Sick. Um. It's ugly chat, it's okay. Self dot dump t dump ref out. This should be right, but whatever. Uh we're just doing this. A this is just a debug print. Fn dump ref self ref. Uh, oops, uh, X is just the U8. This will yield a string. We'll match against, uh, self dot lookup, uh, X as U8. Then we'll do, uh, reg or M reg X, uh, formats ILR this. That's the register, and then this will be an immediate, and then this is just X. Okay. And specifically, we can say this is equal to this plus this. 92. Self dot look up that. Um. And reg dot zero. Strong typing uses U8 everywhere. Yeah, we went weaker. We went a little bit weaker, chat. It's okay. Yeah. 
Now that's fucking cool. Now that is fucking cool. That is cool. Um, and then we would just have a knop here. I like knops. Knops are good. Uh, perg instructions. Zero is knop. Okay, and then all we need to do is, uh, this would have to be collapsed. Um, self, uh, ref, ref, uh, option U32, and then this will be, uh, self lookup, uh, index dot zero as U size, um, if let sum, or if let, uh, if let reg or m, m x is equal to this, then sum x, else none. Uh, gim, 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 and then we have this, just a u8, fuck it. Okay. And then this, uh, we can just say, uh, uh, perg.gim a dot unwrap dot wrapping add perg.gim b dot unwrap. In reality, that would be, uh, that would actually handle those cases correctly. A and A. Uh, let res is equal to this. What? Oh, um. And then this is actually really cheap now, this instruction. Uh, clone and copy can be added to those because it's really cheap. 128. Uh, ba 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 ba. That's really cool. Because we don't have to iterate through the list of instructions. So if we did if we did this, right? Nine, uh, just a bunch of copies of those instructions, they've all been instantly propagated, right? Without actually having to go into these instructions. Um, and we're optimizing very heavily for extremely fast constant propagation, and I think this is going to be really, really valuable to have this implementation. It should be a little bit slower unless you're doing heavy constant propagation. It, it's like a trade-off where we're biasing the optimization of this towards constant propagation. Um, that's really cool. Now do it for sub. Okay, okay. Here's sub. Let me go down to here. Let me change this. Instead of add, this is now sub. And now this is sub. And then this is sub. And then we have to have a pretty print implementation of this, which is sub. And then we do this, where we change that to subtract. And then we change this to sub. And then we go here. And then we change this to sub. And then we go here, and we say sub, and then this, and then we say wrapping sub, and then uh, we change one of, uh, we change this to a sub, five minus six, and then there we go, now it works. Like, um, in reality, this would be like, for inst in uh, perg uh, instructions, then we match the inst, 
And then if it's uh, if it's an add, so in this case, if it's an add, um, then uh, we'll do this. Otherwise, we'll do this. And this is a sub. And then uh, this wrapping sub. Um, yep. Um, okay, and then here we can just probably do inst here. Um... It doesn't like that borrow here, but that's okay. We can always uh, split up. Um, we can always kind of split up the uh, structure into pieces. Um, so in this case, we could implement this on uh, like lookup here, and that's only on the lookup field. Um, so this could be uh, lookup is. A mutable reference to a vector of these. Or more specifically, it's just a vector to those. And then this can be lookup.this. And then we can say uh, uh, program gim. Uh, and then we can say self dot uh, lookup here. Wrapping sub. Same thing down here. Uh, this this is now on B and I think this will work uh, wrapping and I think we now don't have any lifetime issues um, self oops okay and then we don't have not here and we can just say anything else we don't know how to constant propagate um, five minus six. Rug look up that. Rug look up. Oh, it is use size. Okay. Um. A and B. Set that to the out. Look up that. Replace it with an immediate. Only if we can unwrap everything which we can. Um. Out A B. Out A B. Okay. What? What dumb thing did I do here? Chat, what did I do? What did I do wrong? It's obvious, right? Are these not hitting? Oh, I have that as the first arm. Does that matter? It does matter. I see. Yeah, that's everything else. Okay, sick. <laughs> I don't know why I put it up there. Um, okay. I didn't actually know ordering mattered. I thought that was catch everything else, to be honest. Um. So. Today I learned. I think it's time for more uh, port. Oh god. Um So This makes sense as everything collapses down. Um And then let's see if this was B That should also collapse. Yeah. Nice. Then program.dump, dump ref, all the instructions get removed and turns into nops because there's there's no side effect. So what we would really need is like a, a sync, and then we can sync uh, let z is equal to this, and we can sync z. Um, 
FN sync, mute self, uh, a imp, uh, which is a specifically this one is a regref. Um, and we can do self instructions dot push instruction sync. We don't check if both args are ims. N uh, no. Um, we're just doing an example. I know that this would be fine as is. Then that pushes a uh, regref for sync. And uh, we'll just have a sync here, which takes a U8. 95 sync uh, dot zero. And then down here, instruction sync A is uh, print sync any cuties in chat hell yeah we got some cuties in chat self dump ref a there we go sync seven so the end result is that z and is that correct is that correct chat what progress have we made to date fucking none we're rewriting the whole il from scratch and right now we're writing an example okay so, a is equal to 5 minus 6, so minus 1, that then goes into b, which we add 9, and then we add negative 1 in that, and we get 7, yeah. Yeah. And now our constant propagation is... Our constant propagation here is literally fucking on. Isn't that insane? O oh, and constant propagation? <sighs> now, there's actually a deref here. Like, when we actually go through these references, we have to, like, double deref to go through the lookup table. But the lookup table basically allows us to dynamically remap things to different variables without having to uh, go and fix up every location that uses that variable. And I think... I'm taking a fucking big gamble. I think that will be... more valuable than not having that extra level of indirection. Because if you look at our old cons, uh, I guess we didn't have constant propagation, but like our old constant propagation basically required that we would fix up future um, operations. Actually, we had replaced our instruction with immediate and then we propagated that, which then required n, that was actually n squared because it required uh, multiple iterations of the graph to find all constants to propagate. The functions will probably be small enough that you don't even need the not pa uh, reduce pass thing. Um, so in this case, removing the nops is as simple as just deleting them. So like here, this could be a dot. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this being like a dot filter on instructions. Um, and I think that would actually be okay in this case. So the main thing is like... <laughs> removing... All of the nops is on, right? So to go through and remove every single nop is on. I have to go through every iteration and then skip over nops and then kind of compress the list and uh, compress all the nops. But if I were to do like a remove ii, that would then require copying the remainder of the vector every single time I insert a nop. In this specific case, we could go through and we could just do like a, a dot, uh, whatever it's called, retain um, inst here. And then in this case, this would remove uh, all of the nops. So if it's instruction nop, uh, then don't retain it. Uh, return false. Actually, we can just do that. And then... Um, everything else, and then just true, right? So this should theoretically uh, remove all the nops. 
uh, or specifically we can just do this. Um, retain this false, retain this false, retain everything else true. Um, and it doesn't like us borrowing that because somewhere in here we probably use uh, perg instructions. Really? Really? Um... Oh! Holy shit! Is this the thing that, uh, the new Rust can do? Um, 2021. Yes! We did it! We had a real example of Rust 2021! Yes! <laughs> Fuck champ! <laughs> I'm gonna angle up the camera a little bit. Yeah! So historically, what you'd need to do is like instructions is equal to mute uh, prog instructions, and then you had to do like let foo is equal to mute uh, perg dot lookup, and then you would replace these perg lookups and then use these. But Rust twenty twenty one recognizes that you can do that. Usually, it would borrow the whole prog, and now it only borrows the fields that are used in a closure. Fuck yeah. That disjoint fields, I, I don't necessarily know. Um, yeah, disjoint capture enclosures. It's this. Yeah, so that that is what we just leveraged. <laughs> Bleeding edge features. Bleeding edge features. Um, yeah, it tries to capture all of A, and now it no longer does that. Can't wait for them to find out that, like, that's not, uh, safe or something. Okay, and then sync 7. Yeah. Show GIM? Uh, yeah, it looks up the value. If it's immediate, it returns it. That's it. Um... It's very complex. Um, okay, and then we're gonna do a uh, pub fn optimize, and then this will take a uh, prog is mute program, and then this is now constant propagation. So we can do uh, optimize perg. Mute, dump the program. This needs to be pub now. Oops, whoa. Uh, there we go. Okay, so sync seven. Now let's take a look. This is what we really care about. Oh, <laughs> Rust 2021. Uh, what's the flag? Uh, is there a version flag? Addition, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Bunch of debug implementations. Don't really care. Don't really care. Where's the function I care about? Where is it? Mom? Mom? Oh, there it is. 
Um, okay. Get the length of the list, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is getting the length of the uh, program. This is zeroing it out initially. Uh, this is this code actually is present. Um, it's really fucking sad that I can do this. Um, this is the code right here. Is this set lens zero? <laughs> it's, so it gets the length of the list. It sets the length to zero. Uh, we get a uh, we save uh, the variable, which is the pointer to the instruction vector. Um, we uh, zero out an XMM, which is fine. That's being used to fill in the instruction because that allows us to zero out an instruction. Um, here, writing some shit to the stack. We're checking whether or not we're at the end of the list. If we are at the end of the list, then this should probably be branching to the end of the function. Yep, it is. Um, the end of instructions. If we're not at the end of instructions, then we get the variant, uh, the instruction variant. Uh, and this might potentially be getting fields. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's see. Um, Get those, zero those out, then we jump, that's okay. Might do some unrolling things here. We go to here. Uh, that's actually, uh, ECX is actually the variance. It's checking the variance. If, depending on the variance, we either go to do the adds or the uh, adds or the subs. Um, we load the byte value. Uh, we do a bounds check on uh, that value with respect to the lookup table. Um, and then we actually index into that lookup table. So let's, uh, let's fix that. Um, um Get unchecked. Oops. Uh, on slice. Um. Hello. Get unchecked. Where's the? Where's the thing? Where's the thing? Where's the... Oh, God. Oh, uh, output? Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Uh... 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 Mm. Mm. Uh... Okay. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh. Mm. Yep. Okay. Uh. Uh. Mm. <coughs> um. Uh. Mm. Mm. Uh. Mm, uh, uh, okay. Whoo! <sighs> what do you mean he can't move out of a shared reference? What do you mean? Fine. Fuck you then. Okay. Uh, brrr, 
Okay, that looks a lot better. Uh... Ah! 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 I don't like that. Stop! Derefing that. Looking it up in the table. And then we're checking the fucking type? Twice? Why? Damn it, Rust. Why can't you do the right thing? Oh my god, it's because it has to panic. Uh, it's because it has to panic. Okay, so if I change the code to not panic, it might be better. Which is actually really fucking weird, but, uh, yeah. Um... Some A... Some B... Uh, is equal to perg dot lookup. Perg lookup. So you're gonna disable the panic hand? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Above seagull! Come on, dude! Come on! What? What? What is that? What the fuck do you mean? You thought I was gonna disable the panic handler? No. <sighs> you are evil. You're evil to have those thoughts. You should feel bad for yourself. You should feel guilty. Um Um, hello? Hello? Uh... That'll fix it. Shit. What, what, what is, what, what is, what is I doing? Uh, up, up, oh, oh, there. Duh. So fucking obvious. Do the right thing, Russ, please. Um... Julian C, thank you so much for the for the Subarino two months of support. Hell yeah, dude. The right thing, Rust. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, well. Chat, do not write code like this, okay? We are teaching you what not to do. Do not do this, chat. Too late. Rust! What are you doing? Try with opt level three? Oh yeah, uh, that, that always solves the problem. Plot twist, it doesn't. Um, uh, see opt level three. Come on, Rust, you can do it. Thank you, Gabby the Jib. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Glad you're enjoying the content or hating it. Oh, what? That's some shit. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> 
Mom? Mom, why is Russ doing bad code, Jen? It's be- It's be- It's because he uses LVM! Oh, that's why! Alright, let's see here. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh fuck dude LBB4 here's the loop this is going through each of the instructions that's updating that that's updating that so this is oh yikes really Really, Russ? Those are going on the fucking stack? Oh, those are being... Uh, oh, those are volatile. They have to be volatile. Oh, no. No, it does one set line at the end. No, that's on drop. Uh, processed. Yeah, it's these. Backshift on drop. Hmm. Have you tried or got your hands on JAI? I haven't tried it. Not familiar. Um. Ten and twenty-one. Ten? What the fuck's twenty-one? Go to next instruction. If it's equal to two. Then go there. If it's not equal. If it's a sub, go here. Oh, this is this is checking. Is it a sub? If it's a sub, go here and do sub. If it's an add, if it's not an add, then go up here and go to the next one. Otherwise, this is the add code. Okay, so the add code is doing, uh, this is a dull, uh, what the fuck is that? That's checking for none. So that's getting, okay, so this is getting whether or not it's, Whoa, really? Wait. GCC code gen is worse than LVM. There uh, is. Uh, that's tough. Compare two, compare one. If it's equal to zero, then go to 21. Let me check the next thing. If that's equal to zero, then go to 21. What is that? Checking if it's immediate. Oh. Mm. And these are for both parameters. So checking if... It's checking if it's an immediate. Continue if... Checking if it's immediate. Continue. Um... Load the values, do the math. Whoa, what's this? Oh, that's this. It's a bounds check on a uh, prog lookup. Do you see exception handling code is ass? Yeah, I mean, that's why you just don't use exceptions, because exceptions are ass. Um... The code gen's actually not too bad. I was kind of memeing. I was kind of memeing. It's really not actually that bad. I don't really see much room for improvement. Um... Obviously, I can do this on safe uh, program lookup uh, dot get unchecked 
mute is equal to this. So do the actual propagation. Same thing here. Turn this into a sub. That should build or something. I don't know. Maybe if I get parens right. Chat, am I ever going to get parens right today? Or is that just not going to be a thing today? Can't assign to that? Okay, we can assign to that. Uh, chat, what parens did I fuck up? What did I break, chat? Did I insert something somewhere? Is that what happened? Um, line 153, the last for is fine, right? I think it's a compiler bug. <clears throat> uh... Try this. It'd be nice if I formatted my code in a non shit way, but uh, you know. I think I inserted some shit somewhere. Uh. Why do I have two on those? I guess it doesn't matter, but um, is it up here? Yeah, I jammed some shit in up here. It's probably what happened. Yep, there it is. Found it. Found it. Okay. All right, chat. This is gonna. This is gonna have great code, Jen. We're gonna reason through it. We're gonna make sure everything looks good. And then we're gonna ship it. Optimize. All right, get the length of the list. If it's equal to zero, uh, this is probably an early return. One. Yep, early return. Uh, otherwise, get the length of the list. Uh, I don't know. Maybe get the in use or some shit. Whatever. XOR eeks eeks. Go here. Lo uh, load this. Compare RSI with two. If it's equal to two, then go to nine. If it's not equal to this, okay, so we have add here. And what is it doing? It's checking if it's an immediate. If arg one is an immediate, it's checking if arg two is an immediate. Then it adds them together and then jumps. And then same for subtract. I really can't argue with that code, Jen, to be honest. Um, the only thing would be like, could we store immediates in a way that you wouldn't have to do a, a memory access? And the answer is no. Um, or more specifically without an enum, enum variant like this. Um, but there's really no way to do that. Um, thoughts? Thoughts? Is this going to be the design we use? Never done an IL like this. And I think it might be okay. Thoughts? Regs have top at zero, ims have top at one, no enum needed. You still need a comparison. 
you have one fewer memory access, but yeah, you still need the comparison. Um, and also, you can't encode immediates like that, so that just wouldn't even work, unfortunately. Um, thoughts, chat? Um, ship it. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't have these be unsafe because that can crash. Um, I really wish that they weren't able to crash because I create the regrefs, and you would think that I could control those. But there's nothing stopping you from using a making another program and then using the regrefs from that program, which is pretty tragic. And I don't think there's really any way to, to link those two strongly to ensure that you're using refs from the same program. Bind the regrefs to the lifetime of the program. Couldn't you make another program that just has the same that has the same lifetime? Right? I guess, is it impossible to have an identical match to the program lifetime without unsafe? <sighs> um... So... This is gross. Damn right it's gross. Um, actually, it can infer that. If we go to rig ref, you could box leak one program, which would give it static. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought there'd be a way to coerce lifetimes. Um, That's tragic. <laughs> Give a const generic ID uh, and have a global registry. Oh yeah, that's fucking tragic. Sick posture, yeah, I love it. It's comfy. I'm feeling real good right now. It's great for my back. Keeping it nice. Um. It's getting into variance and subtyping, which is complicated enough as is. Hell yeah, it is. Um, um. Huh. Okay. What if sub returned a reference to the register? Like, like literally an actual reference. And then, or like, when you create a register, it returns a reference. And then when you input one, I will turn that into an offset and then truncate that to the whatever the size is for the type. And then I don't have to worry about on the optimization side, which is where I actually access these fields frequently. I only worry about it when I push the instructions. What do you mean you don't get what the difference between phantom data ref t and phantom data function uh, yield t is? What? 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 Um... Hmm. Hmm. 
I I can make it hmm. Thoughts? Have this return an actual reference to the register? I mean, does it really matter to have the bounce check? Not really. It's a predicted branch. Um, but theoretically, we could do that, right? Quiet drop check sounds. Chat, what are your thoughts on this design for an IL? Uh, we can remove things a lot easier because we don't have to do fix-ups of references. We can... Um, thoughts? You don't want any thoughts from me. Gamoza Barrage. God damn it. I actually really like that emote. It turned out really well. I'm like actually really happy with it. Um. Wait, so we throw away the stuff from before? <laughs> <Come on, so laughs> that's actually such a good fucking emoji oh my god uh i think this design is really neat and fits well with the goal of doing lots of constant propagation yeah i think i agree It also means we don't have to do fix-ups. So we had a couple things that we had to do with this model. When we removed NOPs, we had to do fix-ups of uh we had to do fix-up of registers, register references, and we also had to do fix-ups of um branches, right? So we no longer have to fix up branches and we no longer have to fix up these because branches, the branch targets will also go in the reference database which will just mean that they, like, a branch will uh, refer to, like, a different thing that can be fixed up in one place, and that will update all of the branches that reference that uh, instruction. Um, no hiding under the table. <laughs> <sighs> really, the main cost is we have one, we have one every time Every time we want to register, uh, access a parameter to an instruction, we have to do one more four-cycle dependent memory access that hits L1 cache. Whereas before, we didn't have that four-cycle penalty. But before, we would have to do, like, ON operations to fix up registers rather or keep a database of like register fix ups and then do one big on where we fix up a bunch of registers instead of just changing all of the occurrences of a register um would you want to allow arbitrary expression operands instead of uh just im and reg binge's aisle has a similar similar level of indirection but instead everything is an expression um which then has more expressions and operands i don't want it to uh recurse uh, because that would require uh, really expensive traversal operations. Um, that's much easier to work with, and that's what I would like for the structure to be. Uh, but we want to keep this as a flat vector. We want the instructions to just be a flat vector. And then we'll have to, if we do a flat vector of instructions instead of blocks, that means we'll have to do a forward lookup for uh, labels and have that like label lookup database that we did before. Um, but it's just... It's just going to be better, unfortunately. Um, I just want this to stay really compressed like this, because uh, this is a really good state. And then what's the size of this instruction? Um, uh, 
So it's an enum variant. I would imagine this is either going to be eight or it's going to be four. I would hope it's four, but it's probably going to be eight. Oh, it's four. Fuck yeah. So it's literally one, two, three, and then a bite for the variant. I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy about that. Um. Yeah. Basically, anytime we const prop an instruction, it will immediately const prop to the rest of the program without us having to like make a new instruction. Uh, we just replace that instruction with an op or remove it. But I think there's this uh, there's this system of equations, right? That 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 we have to worry about here, which is basically if we do this, where we do like a dot retain and we don't we don't place in nops, we just remove instructions. This means we have an O N move operation for each optimization stage. So let's say this is a const prop, and then we do the same thing for DCE. And if in DCE it does the same fucking thing, then we're also going to have to have another O N. So there's this other thing where we can just put in a NOP, which is an O of 1, and we just read that value so it's hot in cache. Um, so if we write over it with a NOP, and then at the end of all the optimizations, then we remove all the NOPs and do one big ON, it's like, it's a really fucking hard balance, right? Does that make sense? Like, if we... At some point, if you do so much DCE, you might reduce the graph size enough that you would be better off reducing it right away such that you have a smaller graph that you're actually looping over. But, like, how the fuck do you know that, <laughs> right? Um, why remove knobs at all? Just ignore them later. That's another option, right? But that's, that's the main issue is the knobs... Let's imagine we like unroll a loop and then we DCE it and we have like a shit ton of knobs. We have like a hundred knobs in a 20 instruction function. Now, every time that we want to process all of the instructions, all the knobs are there, right? So it's like, what do you do? Fuck if I know. <laughs> like, it's a really hard balance. Uh, if you remove them, you pay O of N to remove them. Or more specifically, you're already iterating through N, so you're just paying a little bit extra overhead. So removing them is probably actually the correct way and to not have NOPs. Uh, but there is technically a balance where it would be cheaper to leave NOPs in and then remove them all together. Have some threshold of outstanding NOPs to process until you flush the removal. Tune the threshold to see what's best. Yeah, that's probably a relatively reasonable um once that threshold like after an optimization pass or maybe all of the different optimization passes before you go to rerun all the optimizations again maybe just see what happens so um yeah isn't that fun chat <laughs> isn't that fucking fun we make our problems exceptionally hard here uh but that's okay because we're gonna get perf but I think we're going to go with this reference-based model because we're going to do such heavy constant propagation that I think it will be worth it. It's fun! Depending on the final size of the M slash reg types, I feel like it'd be possible to remove one of the memory accesses by doing the operation first and then ignoring it if the reg M pair isn't valid for constant propagation, uh, i.e., Treat the enum tag as part of the variant, uh, as part of the value, and then check the resulting tag value after the fact. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think theoretically that would be faster, but that's already what the processor is going to do, right? The processor is already going to prefetch and speculate that value and start operating on it ahead of time, uh, such that, like, what you're doing is kind of already implicitly done by the processor in a much more efficient manner. So I don't think it's worth doing that. Um, Unless I'm misunderstanding that. But but I feel like that makes sense. Um, okay. Chat? You ready? Um... EA mod on my hardware. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
It's really important for everyone to understand that what we're doing here is above and beyond. This is not normal. We're doing this for extra perf. Extra perf. All right. Uh, do we want to call this vanilla scoop or do we want to make a new project name? It has to be ice cream related. I'm taking ice cream, ice cream related names right now. Right now, chat. Ice cream related names. Take an ice cream related names, ice cream related names, Rocky Road, ice cube, ice, ice cube, S ice cream sandwich, cream ice, that's very creative, uh, there's a new project, milkshake, milkshake. Milkshake. Waffle Cone was actually the name of the last aisle I wrote. I had uh, Sugar Cone and Waffle Cone. I like Milkshake. Gelato, Acai Sorbet, Churned. Churned is relevant. M I. M Il K Shake M I L K Shake <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Chat, you're pathetic. <laughs> Code Queen, thank you so much. Or uh, to Torubaka, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Code Queen. Hell yeah. <laughs> we all got yelled out because of him. <laughs> nice one. It hurts, doesn't it? It does. I love it. Uh... Yeah, I don't necessarily need that. Um Uh Uh, no standard, uh, milk shake, a high performance const prop, uh, oriented intermediate language. What? 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 Am I crazy? What a...
Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yep, 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 yep. Chat, you're so fucking smart sometimes. All right, there we go. The aisle's done. Mm. There we go. <sighs> High performance, cons prop oriented intermediate language. Um, instead of directly having registers uh, and mediates, etc., as inputs and outputs of IL uh, instructions, instead we use indices into a uh, list, uh, a database, a list of the actual underlying inputs. This allows us to have uh, multiple instructions reference the same output, e.g. Uh, result from an add, and when we go to constant propagates that uh, value, we can simply um, update the underlying and without having to update all uses of the uh, register itself. Is that text width is 79? Thoughts? Is that relatively descriptive? Um, uh, this increases the cost of all uh, inputs and output accesses uh, by one uh, memory access but i think in the long run uh, this will be faster as we don't need to uh do o n sweeps of uh we don't need to do o n sweeps of operations to uh, further further propagate uh changes um Remove the second instead. This. Thank you, Yepit Simon, for being a fucking pedant. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, this increases the cost of all input output accesses by one memory access, but I think in the long run this will be faster, so we don't need to do on sweeps of operations to further propagate changes. Um, and what else? What else? Um, um, yep, when we propagate a constant, it'll just propagate through. Instead of replacing the instruction with an immediate variant, um, this also increases the power of uh, express ability as... Uh, oh, uh, we can say... Uh, this aisle also uh, allows for immediates in many locations for operations, which will um, simplify some of the uh, uh, JIT uh, code gen where we can use um, uh, AVX 512 uh, broadcast operands, uh, for example, uh, or EG egg, uh, vp add, d, zmm0, zmm1, uh, uh, memory uh, 1 to 16, um, without having to treat immediate loads as a separate instruction. Um, I am thinking about potentially having an immediate instruction because it could be an optimization pass to uh, move immediates up to dominators to basically, um, like, immediates could be moved to... Ah! It's possible. So when we do register scheduling, when we actually JIT this code out, we'll eventually end up put, putting, like, some immediates potentially in registers. And then if we wanted to, you, like, use those immediates in other places, we could. Um, however, I don't know if it's worth it. 
I don't know if it's worth having an immediate instruction because I was thinking what we could do is only have a graph and the immediates are used in a lot of places in the graph. We could remove the immediates, replace them with an IL register, then put an immediate in the like dominator block of those. And then the register scheduler could find a good register place to put that immediate in a register. And then we don't have to do a memory access. But loading that is still going to be a memory access. And this is going to be a lot more compressed because the constant table is just constants. We don't need to have a broadcast cable table. Um, and I feel like I'd rather use that register scheduling for more important variables. It's like, uh, it's a really hard decision. That's always something that we could add in post because we would, all we do is we'd add another immediate instruction and then add an optimization pass that pushes immediates into those if they're used enough. Um, and that is a design that I don't think really would be too hard to go back on. So like this design, right? The reason we're rewriting this is we're changing the core design of the IL such that it is like so hard to go back and like fix this. We also had to go and like clean up all this code because it was shit anyways. Um, but we want to make sure that we're really happy with the core IL and then anything that we have as a an idea for like more perf or more abstraction, um, if it can be added on top of our core that we're building, then we don't have to add it now. Uh, but we have to consider anything that may affect the core of this uh, IL right now. So, chat, what are your thoughts? Um, struct ref. U8, and this is uh, internal uh, internal uh, reference to uh, registers. Uh, internal reference to um, inputs and outputs of instructions. This should never uh, be given out as, uh, eh, whatever. It's internal. Um, internal reference to inputs and outputs of, oh, well, lots of typos of instructions, um, and then we have add here, and this uh, uh, adjust the uh, internal, internal uh, representation of this value according to the uh, largest complexity graph you have. Um, the smaller type for this variable, the smaller uh, instructions and data structures will be, right? So we can have that be a U8, but there's nothing stopping us from turning that into a U128, although that's pointless, uh, cause it's an index into, uh, into an array. Um, so we have a ref U8, we have an instruction, and then this is reg, 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 and then we can say, um, output is equal to X plus Y. Okay, and this is uh, IL instructions. Get that U8 out as a type. Uh, it is intentionally put in a in a structure to make sure that you can't uh, uh, you can't create it. I do this a lot. You'll see this a lot in my code. It's strongly typed uh, such that uh, data structures. Um, I do this so you can't create references out of thin air and you can't accidentally supply a U8 somewhere that doesn't have it. Uh, inputs and outputs are indices to a list. Isn't that basically pointers? Yep. Except pointers would be larger. The only reason we're doing this is because they're smaller and it's a little bit more local access, uh, m more local accessing. Um, that's why, like, when I initially talked about this idea of, like, an RC cell, right, I never actually meant an RC cell, because at the end of the day, this is a, a pointer to an allocation on the heap, and that's, like, really fucking sparse memory accesses, you have TLB problems, you have L1 locality issues, this keeps everything really fucking dense and next to each other. Um, so, yep. Yep. Okay. Chat, are you happy now? Um, oh, these are ref, ref, ref. 
Okay. Chat, are you happy? Oh, for now you're happy? Uh, and then we'll say graph, and this is um, a linear representation of a graph. All instructions are uh, sequential, except for branches, which may divert flow in the graph itself, but blocks must be sequential instructions. Uh, this is not the ideal shape of a graph to work uh, with in theory, but in uh, practice, this is a much more efficient representation of a graph um, compared to having uh, uh, multiple uh, blocks in a list of blocks, etc. Yeah, and the main reason is we can just kind of... Mm. Hmm. I don't know if we need to do the vector of instructions anymore, chat. The point of vectors of instructions... The point of the vector of instructions, instead of like a vector of vector of instructions, was that it would be a lot simpler um, and like removing instructions and moving things around would be a lot easier and like walking through all of the instructions would be easier. But now I don't really know if we'd ever walk through all the instructions. There are cache locality benefits of it. Um... Hmm. So what I could do is a vec of vec of instructions, and basically uh, it's a list of blocks. And then branches take an index into this to find the block of instructions that they branch to. Um, now this means more heap allocations, which is higher overhead on the allocator. It means cloning this data structure is more expensive. It means walking all of the instructions is, a, is more expensive. But I, I genuinely don't really know when we need to walk instructions anymore with this new model. Like, that's actually really interesting. It'd be a heap allocation per block, which is worse than, than otherwise, but it's not terrible. And I'm trying to think uh, it would mean that uh, there's a little bit less cache locality if, as things are moved around a bit more. Um... There would be no way to sequentially go through all instructions if, for some reason, we wanted to do that. Which, honestly, we do actually want to do. Yeah. We want the vector of instructions. Because when we do constant propagation, we kind of want to go through all of the instructions and just propagate shit. Um, like, go through every single instruction and do const propagation. We don't really want to traverse a graph to do that. It would be more expensive to do that. Um, you could write your own bump allocator for the list of blocks so they're more cache local. I mean, yeah, like whenever I say a vec of vex, I also mean like I would probably have my own, yeah, like bump allocator sort of thing. Um, usually I build it out of vex. A lot of this, uh, this graph is going to be designed to be reused such that the graph will not have to be freed back to the heap and reconstructed. You'll be able to just release the graph back. Uh, and that's another reason to not do vec of vex, because you would have some graphs with more blocks than others. And if I, basically, if I just have a vec of instructions, I can repurpose the graph for any arbitrary subsequent graph. Of course, the allocation persists, but that's the goal. Um, but I don't have, like, random allocations that are no longer used. Vec TA is now nightly. Yes, it is. It's actually really nice. I haven't played around with it yet, but I do like it quite a bit. Um... That's been a nightly for a couple months now, I think. Okay. Uh, instruction. Um, this also, uh, the graph is also designed uh, to be reused if needed, uh, such that allocations don't have to be regrown in the future. Instead, we can just uh, dot clear um, on the 
uh, members which are temporary. Um, which uh, are to be replaced. Uh, list of all instructions. Um, in order, uh, blocks must be contiguous. That also means we have a lot better prefetching from the allocator, which is great. Uh, okay. Um, can I make Minecraft in this language? Of course, you can make Minecraft in any language, except for JavaScript and Java. Don't use those languages. They're bad. Um, A is the allocator. Yep. Too late. <laughs> That's the joke. Uh, impl graph. Um, chat, what are your thoughts of templating like the words? Here, like we did before, where we had, like, the words, where we would, like, change the architecture size versus having it be, like, a compile time global. Technically, the template is a compile time thing, but... Ah, we're gonna do the template. Um, but instead, we're gonna have a trait that it requires that it implements. Instead of having a list of F plus Y plus B plus Z plus R... Instead, we're just going to have word implements word, which we actually had before. And then we'll also have the uh, um, target register is a uh, implements target reg. And then we can handle the, the required traits on those traits themselves. Um, seems really over-engineered. I do need it to be dynamic sizing. That, that has to be done from day one. Otherwise, that's going to be an absolute fucking pain to change in at the end. I'm okay with it just being like a type system thing where I change a global type. Uh, but I think there's really no reason to not do this. This really makes sure that I keep the code quality really clean as it forces uh, it forces that I don't uh, assume variables are certain sizes and stuff. So I, I do think this is a good way to go. Um, impl graph. Uh, let's do... We can just do default here. Okay. And then we can do... Uh, uh, config test. See you around, Zorobaka. Thank you for stopping by. Glad you had fun. I know it is starting to get... It's starting to get to the time where people start falling off due to time zones. Um, I could potentially try and wrap this up really soon and then just have a, a better time... Like, stream during peak times tomorrow as well. Uh, we're just gonna do a little bit of this for now. Um, use... Uh, uh, extern create standard... Uh, use standard star, uh, use create star, fn test, or just stream tomorrow until time peaks. Only 55, uh, in the morning, or 0.55. Um, word. Don't leave chat. Okay, now... Word. Chat, what are our thoughts of words? Are we happy with words? Um, um, generic uh, word types. Uh, use to back. Um, use to specify which types can be used. Uh, as the backing architecture with for uh, RIL, right? Okay, uh, default, good, debug, clone and copy, bit and, bit or, bit zor, not, partial ord and ord, uh, display, lower hex, all of those things are good. We'll say a core on these. Okay, the sign type backing a word, the number of bits in word, the minimum value, uh, the maximum value, convert to the signed variants, uh, wrapping add, subtract, RHS from self, 
wrapping arithmetic, overflowing shifts, overflowing those. Okay. So then we define these. And I think these implementations are all good. I, I really don't think this code is worth scrapping. It's pretty good. I don't think we have to rewrite it. So U8, U16, U32, U64, U128 are the uh, architecture widths that we support. And then here we can say uh, mod word. Remember when you would stream for like 16 hours? Yeah, I'm trying to not burn out on streaming. So I'm trying to keep it healthy. I've been playing a, playing a game recently, so I've been like trying to enjoy that when it comes up and stuff too. Number of bits in Word, 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 yep. And uh, we can use uh, use Word, Word. What game? I've been playing uh, Tibby on a new server that came out a couple days ago. Uh, what is it called? Um, Black Talon is the name of the server. Black Talon dot online. Um, it's just a Tibia server. It's got a lot of changes, a lot more RPG elements to it. Um, I don't understand anything about it, but that's what I really like. I like kind of being oblivious to like how things actually work. Um, so I'm kind of excited to, to get into that, but it's kind of more of a fun server. Uh, it's not something I expect I'll play long term, but it's uh, fun in the in the meantime because a lot of things have changed. I like not understanding a game. That's kind of the best part of a game to me. So, um, okay, generic word types used to specify which types can be used as the backing architecture with for our IL uh, word type. This is used when we're working with constant values or actually running an emulator producing them. This is just a generic wrapper over uh, most integer types with the operations we will need on them. Yep, bits, min, max, min, max, bits, wrapping add, sub, check, shift, left, try into, unwrap, or. Oh, uh, try into is now in the, um, whatever it's called. It's now in the uh, prelude, which is really awesome. Um... Arithmetic shift right self by that, returning the result. Overshifting will result in not zero or zero, depending on the sign bit. Interpret this as uh, RHS bits and sign extend it. Yep, zero extend. And I think all of these are correct. Uh, sub add, those are easy. Um, check shift left, basically overshift it. Um, and then this is overshifting as well. And then this one. RHS bits, so get the maximum amount and then shift it or by that because that will leave just the top bit there, which is correct. Sign extend is shift it by bits minus RHS. Um, uh, self shift by bits minus RHS, which could be like one. And I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's good. Prelude, hell yeah. Okay, I think everything's fine here. Let me know if there's anything I should comment or restructure or reshape. Um, to be honest, I think I'm going to change these like this um, just because uh, even though it takes up more space, I think it's a little bit more readable. So um, there we go. There we go. And then those get documented by proxy of the, uh, the traits, so we don't need to explicitly document these here. And then we implement these for U8, U16, U32, U64, and U128. Um, nice. And then we have target regs here. Um, trait target reg. Ah, you know what? SP IL source target reg.rs. Um, uh, trait which uh, is required to be implemented if you uh for traded switch trait which is required to be implemented for the uh target register types uh when you create an il uh or for when you create an instance of the il okay and trait target reg right now it just needs to implement debug so uh target uh, register um, for an IL target. Um, this is often an enum of all of the registers 
uh, for the target, but it could be um, whatever you want it to be. Okay, and then this is debug, and it's clone, and it's copy. Um, what else did we have on target reg? Uh, into U size. So clone, copy, and into U size. Uh, as long as you implement uh, this trait. Okay. So target register is debuggable, uh, clone and copy. That basically makes it easier for us to copy it around. Uh, debug makes it so... Um, uh, or format debug. Yep, okay. Um, clone and copy means that we can make copies of it very cheaply, and we kind of pressure the user into using a cheap storage mechanism for this, uh, normally just an enum. Debug means that we can print it when we actually pretty print the IL. And then into use size, make sure that we can use it as some way of indexing into an array or a list, something like that. Um, OK, so for Word, uh, we can pull these in here. Uh, here we go. Bam. Debug and ors or not. Target reg is from target reg, which is uh, mod target reg. Use target reg, target reg. Okay, and we're splitting those up into nice little libraries, which is good. This is a public trait. Um, this is also a public trait. Um, um, do I want this to be a pub unsafe trait? I guess I don't care. If you go through all of the efforts to implementing all of this shit on your type, we can always make it an unsafe trait later if we want to. Okay, and then word. Damn it, chat, pick it up. We're slacking towards our freedom phone. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We'll get there, chat. I'm not worried about it. Enum. Um... Uh, this is going to be a value, and this is a generic value which um, is referenced by ref. I can do, what is it, putting in brackets? What is it? Do you put it in brackets? Uh, let me see, milkshake... Uh, we're gonna make that pub right off the bat. Um, okay. Um, yep, that is correct, the square brackets. Um, this indexes a uh, value type in the... Uh, for a given graph. This index a value type for a given graph in the uh, values field. In a given uh, graph in the values field. I don't know if I have a good way of referencing a field, do I? Do I have a good way of referencing a, uh, a field? Chat, can I do that? Currently rewriting it. Yeah, we're completely changing the architecture of the IL. We're going to have um, uh, inputs and outputs of instructions are actually indexes into a list of values. And that means that when we do constant propagation, all we have to do is change the backing value. And that means anything that actually referenced that register just gets updated. So it's one level of indirection added to every single uh, instruct like every single access of an input or an output of an instruction, but it means that we don't have to do like O N walks to do fix ups of registers which have changed. So I think it's going to be better. Um, we played around a lot with uh, kind of how the code gen looked. We played around with like a, a, an example. We played around with enums to make sure that those were getting emit to a relatively reasonable state. Uh, but basically, the idea here is that we're making all accesses to like inputs and outputs probably probably 5 to 10% more expensive but we're hopefully 
reducing O of N problems into O of M problems where M is like one one hundredth the size of N. So that's the goal here is basically when we when we want to do constant propagation, which is what this whole IL is designed around is heavy, 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 heavy amounts of constant propagation. Um, we're optimizing heavily in that direction that constants will just automatically show up uh, uh, where they need to. Um, so it's a little experimental. We also had some like code quality issues here. You know, we had like uh, these, a lot of these templates were kind of getting out of control um, where we like had these. So now we're correctly doing it where TR has a target reg and word is a word. And then we can add our crazy constraints onto those as we need them. And we don't have to keep updating that in a million places every time we add one more constraint on these types. Um, but other than that, it's roughly the same. It's going to be a VEC of instructions. And then these refs, you will, with an instruction, you will then look up a reference inside of here. Uh, we won't have to update instructions when we remove a NOP anymore because these reference, the output is now part of the instruction. So the output register is not... Um, the output register is not tied to the um, instruction location, so we don't have to go and fix up registers when we move instructions around or add things or remove things from the graph. Um, we're also going to support having immediates uh, for these operations. Technically, by just changing it where we can insert instructions, we could go back to the old model, but there, there is... There is incentive in x86 to have immediates in uh, in the IL representation such that we can generate, like we have an example uh, up here, uh, we can theoretically emit like a VP add with a memory operand, and the memory operand could be the constant. So we can have an optimization pass that tries to move as many immediates as we can to the right side of expressions. And then the JIT, if there's an immediate on the right side, it will JIT one instruction rather than having to have an immediate instruction that loads it into an inter intermediate temporary register which also spills potentially more valuable information just so we can access an immediate so there's a couple design changes there that means that we have a couple more enums we have a little bit more cost in accessing these things but the goal is that it will reduce the amount of times that we have to visit these nodes which will in turn make it overall faster um, we're taking a shot in the dark. It's really, really, really hard to know how much time is going to be spent in which area uh, of these loops that we don't necessarily know. Um, on a scale of Python to Lua JIT, how good do you think we're going to end up looking? I mean, this is probably going to be the fastest JIT for, for like, fuzzing. Uh, it's probably just going to be the fastest JIT in the world because it's going to be vectorized JITs. So we're going to be able to run, you know, multiple VMs in parallel. Uh, will the optimizations be as good? Probably not. Will the code generation happen quicker? Will the optimizations happen quicker? Will it simplify things better? Probably. Um, so, Rust allows you to make function enums. I mean, these are tuple enums. These are, these are enums that have three associated variables with them. Okay. Then, uh, an immediate value. And this is a woe which implements a word, um, uh, a, an IL register, uh, reg, um, and this is uh, IL register, uh, yeah, an IL register uh, unique identifier, um, increase the backing uh, size if needed by the graph. So we have a register there. We'll also have, so that's pretty good. Um, all right. And then we're going to uh, require drive clone and copy on these values because we want to be able to move these around very cheaply, which is important. Then reg also needs those as well because we want to be able to move these around very cheaply and have the compiler reason about these in a, in a simpler manner. Um, where does the specific implementation of an enum? It, it, this, this, is a, this enum has associated fields with it. This is not a function. It's not a function at all. It's a, it's, if there is an add, 
then there are three variables that are typed ref, ref, and ref. And like, okay, now there's a U size that's also associated with that. So it allows you to tie variables uh, with the specific enum variants. It's, it's basically an enum and a union combined together. Um, it's a typed union, yeah. Exactly. Um, vectorization equals wider reg register and more work done per cycle equals faster. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so for 6502, I think we've decided on doing an 8-bit emulator, uh, which means that we'll be able to run 64 NESs per core. Uh, and then we have 384 cores, so we can run like 20,000 NESs in parallel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gonna be fucking crazy. Um, so you basically do the same thing eight times. Well, you do different things in e each one. Each one has different inputs, whether it's controller inputs or fuzzer inputs or those sorts of things. Um, in this case, yeah, it would be a 64x speedup. Um, in reality, it's more like a 32x speedup because scalar instructions are typically a little bit faster than vector instructions. Um, but yeah. In reality, things will slow down depending on how, how much the inputs differ, because things will diverge. How do branches work with vectors emulators? Uh, you mask off the lanes that have diverged from where you are. So you basically try to incentivize uh, having things stick together as long as they can, and then when things split off, then you mask those lanes off and you stop updating the registers on them. So uh, a certain percentage of your time, some of the, some of the VMs won't be updated. Uh, so it's not a direct 64x speedup for that reason, but usually it's like 30 to 40% on a lot of real targets, which is actually really interesting. Um, and then I go back and I continue all the existing branches. You can think of all sorts of branching strategies for it. At the end of the day, if you can find more work to parallelize, like it comes down to what is the cost of basically deciding to like zipper up the things again. You could have two things branch to different code, but it's the same code. So in theory, they could run in parallel, but how expensive is it to compute whether or not they're running the same thing? How expensive is that to optimize it? How expensive is that to deduplicate it? Um, at the end of the day, the runtime cost of deciding whether or not you want to turn something on really determines the algorithm that you use. In reality, you could solve for it. You could basically say, anytime I'm running this specific instruction, turn on the other VMs. In reality, uh, I just do it based on PC. If they're executing the exact same address, then they just run the same code. Um, and that that's basically the, uh, the trick there. More specifically, if they're at the same location in the same graph. Um, so, slightly different. Um, okay. Uh, 75, TR, target reg, unused, that makes sense, uh, that's gonna be in here, uh, TR, and this is a target architecture register, um, okay, and then those are required to be TRs, which is good, and then TR is not used here, and then here we have uh, values, which is a vector of values. And this is uh, uh, underlying register uh, registers, immediates, etc. that are referenced ref or inst by instructions. 84. All right, chat. Favorite instruction? P shuff B. Pack shuffle of bytes. Mmm. I would say VP turn log D. Vector pack turn log uh, on D words. The, the ternary operator is fucking insane, and I'm going to have a ternary operator in my IL. Basically, any, any bitwise operation that takes three inputs can be turned into a half cycle instruction in AVX 512, which is fucking amazing. Um, okay. Bam. Yeah, it's it's probably my favorite instruction on any architecture. It's unbelievably cool. 
Uh, you can do some like crazy things when you're doing like crypto implementations with it as well. Um, obviously, you're just better off doing crypto on GPUs anyways. But if for some reason you need to do crypto on AVX 512 CPUs, the ternary instruction is fucking insane. Absolutely nuts. Favorite instruction. Bar none. Not even close. Um, value TR. Whoa. Uh, and I think there's like a good uh, write-up where someone talks about like all the fucking crazy things you can do with it. Is it... Um... Let's see. Yeah, so this kind of describes it a little bit if you're interested. Um, so this goes into like some of the different things you can do. Real world examples like MD5, SHA-1, SHA-2 hashing. You can collapse a lot of those expressions. Um, but it also talks about like what the uh, instruction actually does. But anything that takes in three inputs and is a bitwise operation, you can express with that instruction. Uh, in half a cycle latency, or half a cycle reciprocal throughput, uh, which is fucking insane. When do you get consumer AVX 512? When you spend more on a server processor. <laughs> when you consume a nicer processor. Um, <laughs> I think they're in Xeon W's now, and I think some of the new gen cores are gonna have it because at this point uh it sounds like they're able to just put it in so easily that they're just going to do it they're on core 11th gen yeah that's what i thought um all right um i have an uh i5 uh 11600k which has avx 5 hell yeah what is the emulator for? Uh, well, it's gonna be for Super Mario Bros. One, uh, but technically for anything, for anything. Um, but this is uh, we're optimizing a little bit biased towards SMB One, but it, it's supposed to just be anything. Let's do. So now we need a IL register allocator. Actually, due to all of the checks against Max in here. R? Hmm. Do you tell these max checks? This might actually be faster than the old version. Just because even though we're working with enums, we don't have like these weird fucking overloaded integer checks, which is really cool. Do you need the speed for something specific or just fun? Uh, I needed to find new speed running strategies. And that's basically the goal. Find new speed running strategies. Um... So, I need it, chat. <laughs> Damn it. More Mario's per second. It's not Mario's per second, Nikito. It's oops. It's one ones per second equals oops. <laughs> 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 uh get fuck Nikita. I guess pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, get fuck Nikita. Oh wait. But you're wait. Wait. Well now I'm confused. <laughs> How's chat doing today? You having fun? You enjoying this shit show of a of a of a stream today where we just throw everything away? Cause it's been a blast for me. Um Your stream is to me uh, what you said about that server you're playing on currently. A very temporary and a fun server. <laughs> very temporary, something I'll burn out with very quickly. <laughs> Damn. Ouch. 
Uh, I'm using Android Studio, so no, that sounds fucking miserable. My condolences. Uh, was playing WoW and watching you code, apparently? Hell yeah. Uh, I've been a little burnt out on WoW. I don't know why. And I, I started a guild, too, which is unfortunate, because I haven't been hyping it up as, I, as much as I should. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't, like... Um... I don't know. I don't know. Any recommendations for material on distributed computing? No idea. I have no formal background in distributed computing. Uh, gotten into live again. Mythics Plus mostly. Oh, interesting. A lot of people aren't feeling it well right now. Fucking true. True. Burning Crusade is my favorite expansion, but honestly, I've been enjoying coding right now. Um... And when I enjoy coding, I enjoy coding. There's always Crowfall or New World. Ha, I don't like realistic style games. New World looks pretty meh. Um, I don't like the... I don't like realism. I think WoW has got the graphics right for an MMO. They're, they're cartoony enough that you can get away with having cool ideas and things without things being, like, fucking cringily too close to realistic. It's really not my my cup of tea. What's the most machines you ran a fuzz around? I don't I don't know. Probably like fifty machines. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I have no idea how many machines some of my like cloud jobs have gone to. Maybe maybe thousands for all I fucking know. Uh, but like probably probably a couple hundred machines. I hate realistic graphics in MMO. Yeah. The other thing I don't like is the realistic turning. I really hate. I hate games that don't let you fucking mouse whip. Like, just let me mouse whip. Don't put an artificial acceleration and deceleration on fucking turning. It's so annoying. It's like The Witcher. A fantastic game. God damn it, is it clumsy. Like, Hollow Knight is a great example. I didn't like it when I first played it because I didn't like that there was no momentum to the player. And then I realized the skill cap just goes way up. Because, like, there's no artificial barrier to you, like, turning around midair and doing shit. Like, uh, that's... Mwah. Mwah. Love it. <laughs> I know it works for, like, controllers a lot better to have that. But on a computer, let me whip the mouse around. Please. Witcher 3 is an amazing game, but the controls feel shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, PUBG was my first time being pissed at a purchase because of the momentum turning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, were they trying to be, like, super realistic with it? I'm gonna open the window. It was cold this morning. Um, Titus controls, I want to be the bushy. Uh, yeah, yeah, very accurate. Okay. Um, so this is a uh, current available register. And this current available register index, and this is going to be uh, a reg. Uh, next reg, and this is a reg. And we don't have default on that, but we can. Mm, I don't want default on that, because then that allows people to construct regs. Uh, actually, let's be really careful where we have defaults. Um... I like strong typing, and default breaks strong typing very quickly. So instead, what we'll do is impl uh, this uh, for uh, impl graph tr woe. Uh, create a new empty graph. Uh, pub fn uh, new yields a self. Self instructions uh, vec new. Uh, values vec new next reg and this is reg zero bam that's what I like to see chat okay uh, current available register index and then what we can do is pub fn alloc uh, reg actually this doesn't need to be pub um, allocates a new il register and this is going to take a mute self and it will return a result self. Chat, we're gonna do errors. Are you excited for errors, chat? Enum error uh, type results t is equal to uh, core 
results results t error um result type for the il and then this is uh errors that can arise uh during il operations <laughs> <laughs> um okay chan what are your thoughts of having uh error put in a error and result put in uh il source error.rs something in here um error types and handling uh for the il thoughts chat you like this uh, mod error, uh, use error, a result error. No depths re? Wow, you got auto modded for no depths. <laughs> this error, please. No depths. No depths. No fucking depths. Get out of here. Uh, okay, there we go. Bam! But this there a good... Fuck you, Tilted Tree! You don't get a say in it. <laughs> uh, okay, ready for this chat? Self. Dot. Next reg. Dot. Zero. Dot. Checked add one. Uh, let ret is equal to self dot next reg. Um, you get the, uh, current, uh, free, uh, register, um, make sure we can, uh, make sure we didn't run out of registers, um, and then here we'll do self.nextreg is equal to self.nextreg checked add dot map error, actually, is that a result? Yes. Um, okay, or error uh, out of IL registers. Capital IL. Bam. Bam. Ret. Uh, return out the allocated register. You like my really verbose comments? If you don't, fuck you. Uh... Also, thanks for streaming this. You're making me want to pick it back up. Hell yeah. Uh, okay. Out of IL registers. Um, attempted to allocate an IL register, but we ran out of them. Now, unfortunately, since this is indexing it here, we're actually going to run out at 254. No, 255. Oh, no. Wait. 255. Well, we can't return 255. How would we uh how would we get around that, chat? How would we get around that? Without adding state, and I don't think there really is a good way. I think we maybe just eat the loss of one operand or one instruction thingy or whatever you want to call it, uh one register. Um this returns a reg. Wrapping add check for zero. Hmm. Does that work though? Because I think you need another variable. Um, because if you do a wrapping add and check for zero, you'll get an error the first time you do it. But then if you try and allocate again, uh, it'll continue because you're now at zero and it's now like valid again. Um, that's my only concern there is it doesn't guarantee termination. Whereas this will never allow it to update beyond a certain point. Right? 
That's my only concern. Does that really matter? No. If I get an error, am I just gonna bubble that all the way up to a panic? Yes. But we're gonna go with this. Uh, get the next free register. Uh, make sure we didn't run out of registers. Odds are, what, what are the odds that we have a graph that uses exactly 254 registers and doesn't make a single one more? Like, fucking zero. Um, next reg is next reg. Checked add one. Okay, or out of aisle registers, and then we return that out. Attempted to allocate an aisle register, but we ran out of them. Um, so what are your thoughts, chat? Should we do a debug here? Uh, derive debug, so we can now print this error type, or should we make a string for it? Should we implement a string for it? Um, if we're close to that boundary, it's probably bad anyways, yeah. Like... Should we impl debug on error and make our own pretty strings? Debug doesn't print the comments, no. Debug should be dine. String. Chat, we need votes. We need votes. String, yay. Just implement debug and look at the fucking enum variant. Nay. Yay, nay. Yay, nay. Human readable strings. Nay, nay, nay. Oh boy. Oh, it's really fucking torn. Implement display. That you. Can't, that's that's just wrong. Um. Nay. Okay. That's what I do in most of my projects. But I was trying to decide if this is the time to do it. We have we actually have a good document comments on it, so that's good. Okay. So now what we should be able to do. Um implement display? That's what error recommends is implement display? Really? I thought it's debug. I thought it require error requires debug. Um graph is equal to uh we'll just say IL. And this is uh, I L uh, graph new. Okay, we made a new graph. Okay, and we can't do that. We need uh, target reg requires debug plus display. Really? Shit. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, and then uh, type arc with is equal to u32. This is something that we can change. Uh, this is like what you would write as a user of this IL, which why the fuck are you using my IL? You leech. Write your own. Um, and then we'll just say AX here as that register. This isn't going to work. Uh, derive clone and copy. Um, and honestly, currently, we don't need into U size. I can't remember what we use that for, but we'll get to that when we use it. Uh, we can add that constraint when we need. What else? Uh, doesn't satisfy target reg. Um, okay, impl target, uh, reg for target reg. Uh, create target rig. Yep. We'll just shadow that, and that's okay. Um. I think that's the best way to do it, right? Require a trait. If I want to, if I want to basically make a type that requires multiple traits, I think the trait is the only way, right? There's not a better way of architecting that, is there? I don't think so. Error had description, but it is deprecated, and impl display is now preferred. Okay, cool to know. So debug is supposed to give you, like, the raw, like, enum variants or whatever, or, like, a more raw representation. Because I thought when you did a box dine error, it just, uh, turned it into, like, the debug. I, I can't remember. Like, a debug string or whatever. Um... Okay, and then this also has to implement debug, and that's okay. That makes sense. That one will definitely leverage. Nice. Okay. So now we can do il dot. Uh, we can just do loop. 
Um, IL dot... Uh, can test return results now? That's a thing, isn't it? Right? Right? You can do that now? Um, Alec Reg. Hell yeah! Wait. Out of aisle registers. Okay. What is this assertion in Rust C? One and zero? Okay. So this is cool. So you can now... You can now have uh, results and tests. That's probably been around for a fucking long time, to be honest. But this is really nice. So there I go. I loop, run out of aisle registers, and I get my error. That bubbles up. We get the correct message. I'm really happy with that. Thoughts of calling this alloc reg versus allocate reg? Um, thoughts? Alloc reg versus allocate reg? I think Russ says alloc. Um, these things matter to me. <laughs> Damn it. Just reg. Alloc reg. I'm used to alloc. Alloc is dine. I work at McDonald's, thank you. <laughs> Alec is pretty standard, I agree. Okay, allocate a new aisle register. That is going to get the current register, which starts at zero. Then we're gonna make sure we didn't run out of registers uh, by doing a checked add. We're updating that index. Uh, make sure we didn't run out of register. Uh, update the next register and make sure we didn't run out of registers. There we go. Uh, check to add one, okay, or out of registers, return off the allocated register, ret. Nice. Malik reg. Here's a blog post of the future of error in Rust. Holy shit, this is fresh. Oh shit, are we gonna get good error handling in Rust? Because that would be really nice. Um... Error handling today, blah blah blah. It's easy to lose context accidentally when reporting errors. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I agree with that. When we run this, we want to see this chain. Yes, I want to see chains. Um, holy shit. Holy shit. I've been asking for this for four years. We'd like to get to a place with the default tools you can... Uh, Reach for one error handling uh, is the right thing to do. Unwrapping a type uh, will preserve the original errors. Uh, this is available in the panic hook. Error trait and panic runtime integration. Um, error trait and the panic runtime. Moving error trait into core. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's in standard right now. It sucks. Once we've gotten to where it's usable in core APIs, uh, creating a panic from an error type, which is good. Panic error, which is good. Once they can uh, process these error types, uh, change the default hook to report panics for the er error trait. Specialize, uh, accept and unwrap to use these new error aware panic interfaces, which is good. Error reporter, like to make a basic reporter in standard and some uh, facilities for making it easy to use. I actually think this should go in alloc. I think that you should be able to have a stack. Um, I think you should be able to have an alloc stack where you have like a list of errors that you chain or accumulate or put in boxes and chain them together with a linked list. Um, so I'd really like to see that where you can get these sorts of errors. Uh, but this is really important to me. Um, yeah. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, the Rust air, link, air handling group is stacked. Yeah, I'm curious why they want standard. Um, is that because they want unwind? Um, display for individual ones. Can't do that now. Adding a convenient method for printing a chain of errors and some clever limits. Plan on fixing this by adding a report type to the standard library that wraps dyn error uh, and implements display, such that it prints each source's desired. Uh, and then ref dyn error. I don't think this would need to be in standard, right? I, I don't see why this would need to be in standard, and this can't be in alloc. 
Um, the only thing I could see here is that you need dynamic allocations or refs. Um, yeah. It will probably be added to Alec as it requires nothing platform specific. Exactly. Um, I would really like to see this in an OS. I would really like to see this in an OS. Like, this would be really important to me. Um, I did this, if you've ever looked at my, uh, GitHub, Gamozo, Labs, uh, Falker Visor, Grilled Cheese, um, you'll see that I have an air handling thing that, uh, I called R state. That's basically assertions and it allows you to have a stack of errors that you kind of accumulate, uh, via a linked list. Um, and it's so fucking cool. Uh, this I did all at, uh, how did I do this? Um, I had to have a stack, I think, that was part of your globals. Um... Can't remember where I stuffed it, but yeah, I think I had to have a stack. Yeah, our state push. Yeah, this goes on the current task. Um, so this requires an allocation. But if you have something like this, dude, the error messages in my fucking OS were so goddamn good. Like, even with all optimizations and inlining, you'd have like a full unwind with source line and all those things because all errors uh, went through this our state interface and nothing else. Um, this is really fucking cool to me. Really important. Um, I love having error stacks that aren't just uh, uh, unwinds because unwinds are susceptible to optimizations and stuff. So, all right. So, now we have a way of allocating new aisle register. And what we'll do is um, when you make a register, it hasn't actually... That's just a super simple function that actually creates a new index. And then we'll have another one, which is alloc uh, regref mute self result. Um, actually, fn alloc ref. This will take immutable self, and then it will take any type that implements into a reference. Or more specifically, not into ref. Uh, this will be implements. Um, implements uh, create ref. Something like that. Create ref or make ref. Something that implements make ref. Uh, yeah, that's actually sufficient. And then I implement make ref on reg. And then I think the trait is trait make ref. Uh, this takes in a, uh, um, I think this is going to have like, uh, It takes in a self and it yields a ref and it also has to take in um, a graph, a mutable reference to a graph tr woe. Um, uh, call it site. Mm. I think that is a decent interface. Uh, make ref uh, tr and woe. So it has to be able to turn, be able to be turned into a reference for this, right? Uh, and then this is make ref. So a value that implements this has to be able to allocate into that graph. Um, do I even need that? No. Uh, enum. Oh, we already have enum vario, uh, value. Um, uh, impl into value. Anything that can be converted into a value can be passed in. 
And then this has a uh, tr woe. So if it can be converted into a value for this for this graph, then we convert it into that value. So this is um, uh, convert a value into a reference. Convert a value into a reference, and then here we'll do uh, this will return a ref. Ref u8. Um, so we'll do let um, ref is e uh, ret. We'll just call it ret. Return value is equal to uh, ref of self dot values dot len dot try into dot map error. Discard the error. Um, actually, let's see what try into gives us on this. Um, this is a try into on a u size. Try into on u size. What does it create? Um, damn it. Try into is an error, which is a US try from t error. I don't know what type of error that is, to be honest. Um, chat, what kind of error is that? Impl t u try into for t. Try into u for t. Let's, uh, let's just try this. Um, error out of values. Okay, uh, and then we'll just say ret, and then this, and then this is our result. Okay, uh, that's an okay. Nice, and then here we'll just say uh, out of values. Isn't it infallible for you? Uh, numeric types. I'm not 100% sure. We'll just say this for now. See what happens. Uh, try from int error. Bam. Okay. And this is uh, ran out of storage in our... Um, ran out of storage in our... Uh, bu -bu 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 ran out of storage in our uh, values array. Um, more specifically, uh, we ran out of indices in the uh, ref uh, value. Or, yeah, we could just say that. Um, out of refs. So this is the uh, ref. Uh, ref. Uh, type was exhausted. Uh, uh, the ref type ran out of <laughs> indices. I don't know. Or ran out of values. Ran. Ran out. I don't know. What, what the fuck do we want to call that? Ran out of things. Okay. So now we wrap that error, which means we also propagate that error. So this is get the uh, ref for the value we're about to create. Uh, make sure that that is a valid, uh, make sure that that is a valid value for the typing that we're using for refs. And then we can do self.values dot push um, val dot into. This is a store the value and then return the reference. Okay. Yep, and then how do we want to do this? Um, I saw the I saw the message. I think on documentation. Uh oh, and let's make public in that Alec reg. Yeah, all these things are not used. Out of file registers. Yeah, lots of dead code. Uh, the dead code will go away as we like add more uh, functions. But I think there was a documentation warning this. Uh, nothing named ref in the scope. 
So we can do crate ref, but I think that's going to explicitly say uh, crate, which I kind of don't like. Chat, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, chat? Um, hmm. Ref crate ref? Okay. It's a, uh, yeah. And then, uh, cargo doc open after you generate it because I have private items on. All right, here we go. So if we take a look at, yep, that ref's ref, this ref's graph. What about referencing values, that like specific field? Like, can I ref that? Is there a good way to do that? Um, and we have values, ref, which is a reg. Okay, sweet. And what did we specifically do this on? This was on um, error. Error, error. And then the ref ran out of errors. Fantastic. Uh, attempted to allocate an aisle reg. Chat, why is writing documentation so fucking fun? Tried to allocate an aisle reg, but we ran out of them. So now if we look at this, we can see a reg, and we can see a reg is a U8. Increase the backing size if needed by the graph. Well, that was a fun work day. Time to keep watching Gamoza. Hell yeah. <laughs> How was your work day, dude? Super productive today. Um, all right, so we have errors. These are good. Documentation is good. All right. So that is anything that can be converted into a value. Um, I feel like I got a ton done, but none of it was visible. So, oh, yikes, dude. That's never the best. That's never the best. Hell yeah, brother. Um, okay. So now we need to construct like add and sub. I think we're ready for that. Thoughts? Thoughts? Is there anything that we should split off into another file right now? Word is isolated. I think Word is good and nice and self-contained. Target reg is nice and self-contained. Air is nice and self-contained and documented. Uh, is there anything that we should move to another file before we explode this thing more? Um, thoughts, chat? We have the ref and the reg, but we only just have those. Those are just thin wrappers. Um, let's also make those clone and copy. As well as instruction will now be clone and copy, which is actually really cool. Um, clone, copy, clone, copy, clone, copy. Graph, we don't need to worry about implementing anything on that. Struct field should work for reference fields. It does, but I think it will say struct field. Oh, oh, sorry, struct field, oh, sorry. Um, talking about field, uh, let's try that. And then, yeah, we could rename it if we wanted to. So let's call this. Um, where was that at? Values field here. So we can do graph values. Is that going to work, chat? Uh, and what was that type on? Ref. Oh, that's Pog. Index uh, for a given graph in the graph values field. Fuck yeah! That's what I like to see. That's some good documentation right there. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, we could always rename it if we wanted to by doing the uh, what we did up here um, by having the link in the reference. But I actually like that being explicit. 
Um, do I? Do I? How does this look, chat? In, oop, oh, oop, oh, values. Oh, that's pretty pog. That's pretty pog. That's pretty pog, chat. Okay, we've got uh, a ref. We have a reg. Uh, these all take refs. We have values, which can be immediates, which is a word, uh, which is changeable at, at compile time. Technically, I could maybe make the... I could template the ref and reg fields as well. I don't know if I want to. I really just need wrapping add on those types. Um, I need wrapping add and, like, get, or, like, as you size. So if I had these generic, if ref and reg, um, if they implemented wrapping add and they implemented into you size, I think that gets me everything I need because I could use that to index, uh, like, these fields and stuff. Um... That would give you so much fucking power. You could literally, like, change the complexity of the graph. Like, you... Wow. Have you ever said that's pretty pog IRL and people look at you like, what the fuck? I say that with my fucking roommate. Uh, it's pretty cringe, to be honest. <laughs> um, chat. Let me know. Is there any architecture, any designs, anything here that you think we should change? What are your thoughts of us turning the these types into generics? Um Are the people who say Pog out loud IRL like the people who say OMG? Yes. I don't know why you're so judgmental today. Uh, <laughs> God damn, chat. Plus one for generics there? God shit. You're the one who called it cr You're cringe, Nikito. <laughs> um. Hmm. Um. No generic? I'm also for no generic. If we're making it generic, what else are we putting in there? See, the thing is, generics don't have, like, too much of an increased cost. Um... Ref and reg... Uh, I'm so torn. Oh, that's a good song. Let's listen to some Natalie Ambergia. Uh, Ambruglia is her name. Let's see. Playlists. Torn. There we go. Oh, man. It's got Cranberries, Alanis Morissette, Cardigans, Vanessa Carlton, R.E.M. Oh, this is a good playlist. Generics uh, for uh, U8, U16, U32, U64. So for this specific one, it would have to be anything that can coerce into a U size. So these would have to coerce into a U size. They have to implement wrapping add and into U size. And I think that's fine. You got a good long stream going there? Ah, it's a short one. It's a short one. It's a short one. Um, I really like writing code like this now. I, I like... I love documenting stuff like this now. I love just, ah, uh, it's so fun. Like this, 
This made me feel bad. Because we hacked this up too fast. We let it get out of control. This, mm, it feels so fucking good. Seal feels so fucking good. Uh, Osmandio, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Um. Okay. Okay. Um, Rust Standard has sometimes 3x the amount of comment lines than code, and I think that's beautiful. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know. I I'm thinking about making these generic. If I make these generic, then you just have to impl uh, into you size, and it's on you to panic on those, I think. If you over oversize the type like if you do u64s on a 32-bit architecture that's kind of on you um and then these are not words these are just like indices thoughts this is like an indice index um, but index is a thing, unfortunately, in Rust. Don't you want to run this on original 6502? I mean, yeah, you gotta. You gotta be able to do that. Um, so that's index. Uh. Now, do we want to tie these types together? You could have different amounts of refs than regs. Um, dynamically recompile 6502 to 6502. Well, eventually, if you keep doing that, it'll converge to no, uh, no cost. Um, what do we want to call that, chat? These refs map, uh, try into... That's actually okay. Uh, actually, they need to implement try from minus one for generics there. Hmm. 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 Colon thinking. Um. You don't like it? You don't like the generics there? Why don't you like the why don't you like the generics there, chat? What is a bigger bit width earn you there? Bigger maximum block size? Yep, higher register allocations, larger maximum block size. Or more specifically, a larger number of inputs and outputs. Let's, let's implement an add. Let's see how we like it. I mean, this just already is trying into. This one is checked add. So if it implements checked add and it implements try from u size, try into u size, it just works. We're gonna fucking do it, chat. You know what, chat? We're gonna fucking do it. Can we get some pogs in chat? Where's Desu when needed? Desu is gone. Desu's dead to us, chat. We don't care about Desu anymore. I'll source, um, uh, index type. Is that a good name for it? Index type? It's like an index type, index trait, index, uh, uh, simple number, a simple num. Desu is a nerd. Thoughts, chat? What do we call it? Indexer? Yeah. 
Indexer, that's not bad. It's not bad. Um. Avoid Desu at all costs. Indexer? Indexinator? Thoughts? Any thinkers in chat? Yeah, there's no thinkers in chat. Fucking smooth brains in chat. <laughs> this is chat. We're <laughs> just backseat coders. B call it Bob ID. Call it I. Fuck. We'll call it an indexer. Uh, a very simple trait that um, we use for uh, values which uh, index into arrays. Uh, we use this for our graphs where we dynamically... Uh, we allow... A user to configure the maximum uh, graph size based on the uh, uh, index variable variable sizes. Um, the index variable sizes. Light of hell. Thank you so much for the for the resub. Hell yeah. Um, where we allow the user to configure the maximum graph size based on the index. Wait where we allow the user to configure the maximum graph size based on the index variable width. This, uh, um, a smaller, uh, index size leads to, uh, smaller, uh, in-memory structures and thus better performance from, and better performance from, uh, cache locality, but also can constrain a graph too much. Okay, now we're gonna have a trait indexer, and this implements a try from u size. It also implements try uh, an into u size, and it also implements clone and copy. Um. Marker trait for uh, simple types which can uh, be used as indices for... Marker trait for simple types that can be used as indices for... Uh, reference, uh, for... Uh, use, yeah, that, that. Okay. Um, and uh, a trait uh, for simple types that can be used as indices, and then we'll do, uh, it has to implement wrapping add, uh, and what's the template for the real wrapping add? I think it takes a self. Yeah, it takes a self, not a ref self. Self, RHS, self, yield self, uh, self dot wrapping at, oh, can't do that. Um, okay, uh, Add self and uh, RHS with a wrapping arithmetic. Um, a lousy 174 69s, but freedom is worth to you. <laughs> Imagine having 12 monitors, but only using half a monitor to code. Damn it, Zarsec. Do I actually want this to be, uh... Um... 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 Chat. Will I need to construct these indices? I need to construct them directly from a size here, which gives me a lot of power. And then, will I need to do math on them? No. No. 
I only need to be able to... I don't even need... Oh, I need wrapping add for this one. Because I allocate by adding one... Um... Uh, increments, uh, self by one, uh, using, oh, not wrapping, overflowing, or checked, uh, uh, by one, checking for overflows. Because I think that's all we need right now. Uh, macro rules, impl indexer. Uh, takes in a type, which is a type, and then we'll do this, impl indexer for type k. Only u16 and u8 have into u size? Okay. That's fine. Um, impl indexer for this, fn checked inc, self yields an option, self, and we'll just do self dot checked add one. Okay, and then we'll uh, mod indexer. And then we can do macro rules. Uh, er, whoops. Impl indexer for uh, u8. So we can use u8s. Uh, u16, u32, and u64s. Hell yeah, that's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Cyrevolt, thank you so much for the 690. Freedom ain't worth it. Hell yeah. Hopefully I haven't missed any other ones. I keep forgetting to check that. I have not. Hell yeah. Thank you everyone for all the subs. Don't, don't forget to like and subscribe chat. Don't forget to follow if you like the content so you can come back later. Don't forget to subscribe if you have infinite money. <laughs> um. Um, should I say like as you size then? Should I just do that then? Um, get the internal uh, value as a uh, u-size. Fuck yeah. Um, okay, and then as u-size, we'll put this down below. Just the ordering stays the same. Checked ink, just checked add. Now we can implement all of these. Try from a u-size, and then these are uh, as u-size, and I think... Uh, how do we do a config u size in Rust? How do we do that? Config uh, uh, is u size always pointer with? Yeah. Um. Right? Does that work? Um. You size cast. Ooh. Interesting. So I think this is fine, right? 
if the target pointer width is 64, then impl indexer for u64s, which then allows us to check dad, which works in any mode, and then also self as u size, which is a u64 as a u size, which is fine. Um, make it a compile error if they try using a u64 for an indexer. Exactly, right? Basically, it just won't be present for that. So if I did uh, cargo test target i586 p uh, uh, unknown Linux GNU. Uh, is 686 the one that they want you to use? Um, cargo uh, rust up target uh, add 686, I think they have. Yeah, they do. I think they use that instead of 586. So now we can test against this. And that looks great. So now what we can do is uh, we can make this pub trait uh, indexer. And then here we can say that uh, this is anything that implements indexer. Uh, same for this one. I that implements indexer. I. OK. Oh, fuck. Yeah, now we're getting to now we're templating uh, ref index. Now we're templating like a champ chat. We got a lot of Rhode Islands in here. Any any Rhode Island fans here? No, no one. No fans from Rhode Island. Pretty fair. Pretty fair. Um. Okay, then a reg has a... Uh, oh, shit. All right, it's also... Okay, so we have a ref, and we have a reg, and then we have a reg index here on an instruction, and this will take a... Um, ref index? Thoughts? 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 Is that gross? Ref, ref index? Ref? Just index? Well, we're also going to have another indexer for regs. <laughs> now, do we need them to be different? No. Do we? Is there really a situation that you're going to have a U16 for references, but a U8 for registers. Thoughts, chat. Thoughts. Thoughts. I really don't see a situation where we have one that's, like, threading the needle like that. Like, it doesn't really make sense, I don't think. Because there's going to be, there's going to be one reference for re every register. So there will be more references than registers, but is there really ever a situation where you're going to have 254 registers, but a thousand, oh, like, that they're unrelated to so keep them, oh my god, you fuckers, okay! Assholes. Uh, This is on a graph. Chat. 
Chat, you're evil. You are fucking evil, chat. Uh, 91. A value. Expected three. Because a value also needs a, a ref index. Yeah, these are ref indexes. And then this is also a ref index. Oh, no, values are not. Values are reg indexes. Instructions are ref indexes. These refer these reg. Okay, and then reg ref. Okay. Uh, values.len that try into. What's going on here? 104. Um, default. Uh, chat, you're evil. What do you say? This is type confusion. Yikes, chat. 115 checked ink. Okay, and then we have 129. We have a try into. Uh, here we have a val into. That's going to convert the value into a value. Okay, uh, 129, val into, uh, this is ref index. So values, no, values use reg. These are reg indexes. Values use reg indexes because those are actual actually holding the registers, and then ref indexes that error. We might just delete that try from in error, just because that's going to be gross. Um. Chat, you made me do this. Don't pretend like you didn't. Hey, it builds. Okay. So a reg index and a ref index. So really only refs should have ref indexes. So it's just refs. Instructions have refs. These have refs. Uh, ref reg, ref reg, ref, ref reg. We did it. Okay. So now you can pick. Now you can pick. We can do a U32 here, and now this will take longer to run. Um, out of IL registers, uh, it's ref then IL registers. So now it takes longer because now we can change that. There you go, chat. There you go. There you go. Are you happy? So new reg index default. Allocate a reg. Uh, checked ink. If it's out of IL registers, then uh, that's an error. Otherwise, return out that register. So we allocate unique indices for registers. Um, and that we need for the register scheduling uh, later on. And then we have references that we allocate here. So won't be able to emulate 24-bit machines. Yeah, you could make, you could impl all these things for 24-bit machines. You can implement all of these traits yourself for your crazy... 7-bit machine if you like seriously it would just work you would need to provide the storage and the functions for it but like if you implement if you implement these functions 
for your type and you constrain it to whatever bit size you want, you got it. It will literally work. <laughs> it will literally work. Um, <sighs> using types like I1, U24, and non standard types? Yikes. 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 I was just looking for this. Yeah, that's pretty advanced. Um, okay. So, now we can allocate registers. We can get a reference from a register. And now what we want to do is we want to implement add and sub. Um, macro rules. Impl impl op a b and then we'll say impl uh this is gonna just be fn uh we have an ident uh this is just funk so say pub fn funk um and we want to have a mute self Esden raid me with 36 people hell yeah how was your stream I know you probably aren't here yet cuz clicking into a follow when you're running it from your own stream is kind of hard but thank you so much hell yeah that's fucking awesome how's everyone doing how is the stream did people enjoy watching the stream? Did you enjoy making the stream? Hello, raiders. We need a raid emote. Uh, that's something we really need to do, to be honest. Um, actually, we don't need those. Um, we have A. Actually, we'll say X. And X is... Uh... Uh... It's a refer M? Fuck you, Moose Mounted Mage. Hey, Esden, how are you doing? Thank you so much for the raid. Hope you're having a wonderful time. Hope you had a great stream. Y, ref, or M. Wow, rude. Uh, this is going to return. I'm unsubbing. Oh, God. Rude. And not even subbed. Um, how do I do this? Um, these actually don't take, uh, these take reg refer ims. Oh, nope. We decided, we decided that these take refer ims, they return refs, and then we do runtime type checking. Right? We're gonna do runtime type checking. That's what we decided we had to do, right? Um, impl refer m. How the fuck did I do three quarters? What, what did I hit that generated at three quarters? What did I, how? How did I do that? Um, okay. We had a good stream, continuing to build an FPGA demo scene platform. Hell yeah, that sounds fucking fantastic. Uh, let's see. Pub fn function. If it is a ref or an immediate. Or, I think we'll say if it implements ref, uh, uh into ref. Um... And I think that's a real thing, isn't it? It is on pin. So if it implements into ref, then we can take it in. So refs will implement into ref. Um, and that is... Alec ref will give you a ref. 
and it will take in a value into ref can optionally also take in a reference. So uh, what we need here is a trait into ref um, fn into ref mutable reference. Uh, actually, we can just take self. And this can turn into a... Uh, this also has to take a mutable reference to uh, a graph. Um, and then this will yield a ref. Uh, this will actually yield a result ref. Because it will end up going into here. So we'll either allocate a ref or we'll grab an existing one. Okay, so into ref uh, has these. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's looking great, chat. That looks so good. Um, okay. And then ref takes our ref index. Okay. Um, so then... Impulse into ref. Let's just try this. Impulse op uh, result. I just want this code to actually, um, uh, okay, self, uh, here we'll just say self dot alloc ref, uh, self dot alloc reg, chat, why are we doing this, why are we making this so nice, uh, okay, we'll implement add, that's it. That will just cause that to explode. It's going to be like, yo, generics. Wee, wee. Um, can I do TR here? Or is that not in scope? I think this is actually okay. Uh, into ref. TR, whoa, ref index, uh, reg index. Oh, this is fantastic, chat. This is fantastic. Holy shit. Uh Holy shit, chat. Is this going to work? Alec reg. That gives a reg. That doesn't impl value yet cuz we haven't impled anything for value. Impl Uh, for value, tr wo reg index. Okay. Uh, impl. Uh. From. Uh. From a wo for this. Uh, fn from val wo yields a self self m val. Holy shit, chat. Um, from reg for this. From reg. Reg index for this, bam. Okay, 83. Uh, this is actually a reg reg index. Mm, 121. Okay. Uh, let reg is equal to this. So allocate a register, create a reference for it. 
Uh, I can't leak private type. Uh, ref. Yep. And... Uh, into ref. Okay! <laughs> so now we can do il.add 5 and 6. Nice. Making ref pub. Refs are pub. You can't you can't construct a ref because it's strongly typed. Um Okay. So this is uh allocate the output register. Yeah, that's good. Yep. That's why I don't use type, right? That's that's exactly the reason why you don't see me using like type, and you see me using a uh, uh, named or I guess tuple structs. Um, allocate the output register. Let uh, out is equal to this. We can say out is this. Out is this. Um, okay, out. So we allocate the output register. We allocate a register, we allocate a reference for that register, um, and then now we have a reference, which is what we actually give back to a user. Um, we have a 191, and into ref is not implemented for integer. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to implement that. Um, impl. Uh, into ref. TR woe ref index reg index for um for woe right into ref is going to fn into ref take a self and the graph okay and then this is going to yield a result ref ref index. Um, and the way this is going to work is we're going to do graph.alloc ref. And alloc ref takes something that can be converted into a value. And a woe can be converted into a value. Which means self. Oh, oh, oh. oh, now that's chaining. Oh, 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 shit. That is fucking awesome. Okay, so now this works. We can do add five and six. And then we can do let uh, value of that. And then we can do aisle.add v and nine. Uh, into ref, not implemented for that yet. Dude, this is pog. This is pog. Um, rip compile times due to uh, rip all the compile times due to the generics, but fuck it. This is super slick, right? All right. Into ref for a graph. This will return a ref. We'll alloc a ref, and we want to implement this for uh, actually a ref. And you know how you implement a ref on a ref? You return OK self. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bam. Uh, into ref. Uh, oh, this is ref, ref index. There we go. There we go. So now we can add values. We can just pass in numbers. It will automatically get converted. It'll automatically allocate references if it needs to. It'll do all of that shit for us. So we can give it constants, we can give it immediates, we can give it values and all that sort of shit, and it will just fucking figure it out for us. Um, um, let's also, uh, let's go back to this. We wanted to test this i686. A u64 should fail to build. 
Yep, indexer is not implemented for U64, but if we run this as 64-bit, indexer is implemented for it. We have missing documentation, but that's fine. Um, this is um, convert uh, a self into um, a uh, reference uh, using graph as the uh, uh, using graph as the graph. Uh, to uh, allocate the reference from, and then we have one other thing that we haven't documented, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, into ref for the trait. Missing documentation for the trait, and this is uh, provide uh, conversion from um, generic inputs to IL instructions uh, to uh, references in the uh, graph. Okay. Nice. Nice. So we can add those. And now what we need to do is, so those get converted, those impl into ref. So now what we should be able to do is self dot instructions dot push instruction add. In this case, it's always an add. Um, we have the output register, which has been allocated as a reference, and then we have x.intoref and y.intoref. And we might have to do those outside of this self. Um, oh, yep, and then these are fallible. Um, into ref, into ref, and then, uh, oh, these both take self. Yep, and that's okay. Let x is equal to x into ref self. And same for y. So convert x and y. And then we have x, y, this actually add the instruction. This is not ready yet. Um, okay, perfect. What happens? I'll add vv. That's totally fine. Right? Can totally just do that. Um... Those are already references. So now what we can do is we can take a look at what this uh, graph actually looks like. Uh, IL uh, dot instructions. Um, we're just gonna add debug on this, which will go directly, uh, refs need debug as well then. Um, it'll give us the raw structure. So we can see here when we add five and six and we add V and V, you'll see that we output to reference zero. That's the output register. We add references one and two. And then in the next instruction, we use references zero and zero, which is the output, which is V. And we create a new reference three. How fucking cool is that? <laughs> How fucking cool is that? Wow. Wow, this is going to be really nice to write. Like, I'm not going to have to, like, allocate the constants like I used to have to, where I do, like, dot .m. Um, really, really, really powerful. And honestly, the performance of this is not really bad. This templating stuff really is more of a compile time thing, and it will all kind of bubble down uh, to pretty efficient code. Um, at least I would expect it to. Um, so even though it's, like, pretty pretty wide, pretty bloated, it really shouldn't be that bad. Uh, so we have impl, uh, we have from woe for a value, from reg index for a value. So technically this is actually correct, but eventually target reg, we need to restrict that, um, where some of these things can only take in certain types. So like an add can only take in certain types. Uh, so let's change this to um, an operation now. And we'll have an op, and this will take in a uh, ident. Is that an identifier? And can I do this? Can I do that? What token would I have to use if I wanted to do this? But I don't think I can. It'd be nice if I could, but I don't think I can. Oh my god, I can. Okay, add sub. 
<laughs> Holy shit, chat! Look at that, add and sub, bam! So now I can go down here and I can do uh, isle.sub uh, the result of this, uh, let's just override V again, and sub, uh, 9 from that. Now we should have all of this stuff built out. Yep, there's a subtract now. <laughs> this is powerful! Um... Yeah... Yeah... Actually, I don't know if we need target regs. I don't know if target regs need to be a uh, part of values because we're never going to replace a target reg. When we're outputting to a target reg, it's explicit like it's only going to ex be explicit in reg reads and writes that I don't think we need to have that be part of the value table, which then means any place that uses a value has to be able to use any value. So that means that if we replace a value, like, if in this model, if we were to replace an immediate with a target reg, that's not valid because an add cannot have a target reg as an input. But if we do this, this is now valid in every single possible case. Um. So. That. I think is what we want to do. Uh, so the reg writes will specifically have those because we're never going to be mutating target registers. We might replace a target register instruction, but we're never actually going to, like, replace it under the hood. That would make no sense in any situation. Um, in which case, we can simplify this a little bit. Okay, so that can be a war or a reg index. And then 178... Uh, there you go. And that's not going to fit on one line. Bam! 94, unused parameter for graph. Target reg. That makes sense. So we need to actually throw that in now. Uh, but that's, that target reg is actually not going to be part of a value. That's going to be part of an instruction. And what we can do is, um, output is equal to, uh, target, uh, um, target register. So, uh, reg read, and we'll have a ref, ref index, because that can be replaced. Um, and then we have a, a target reg, which is the input. And then uh, target register is equal to O, and then all of these will need to be able to handle these encodings. And this is a reg write. What did you do to learn Rust? I read the Rust book. Um, Rust book. Oops. Do I have that? Oh my god! I literally read the Rust book, and that was sufficient to get me very comfortable. Now an instruction now takes a TR. Gorgeous! That's what I like to see. That's what I'm talking about, chat! The Rust book is one of the best intros to a language ever, honestly. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Uh, you're, you're totally right. Totally fucking right. Um... Holy shit, this is going to be nice. So we have the target uh, target regs and these these instructions, we would end up replacing these instructions in the stream, whereas these ones, we would remove the instruction and then we would replace the reference with the const propped value. The Rust book is very good. I wish more langs had similar resources. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um... God, this is really nice. This is really nice, chat. Uh, SP isle source value dot rs. Um, generic uh, value types uh, which can be replaced for any input or output uh, of an instruction. Ba -ba 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 okay, bink, 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 bink. Bink. Okay. Uh, value from reg index word, all these sorts of things. We're gonna have to pull those in. That's gonna be a little bit of a problem. That's okay. We'll set up some uses for that. Mod value. So we're splitting these things up, making this code a little bit nicer. Uh, we'll use uh, value value. Bam. Private enum. Not anymore. Uh, reg up here. Use crates reg. 
Um, and then crate, uh, use crate word. Uh, actually, we can use uh, word word. Okay, and then use indexer. Indexer, I think I can do this. Oh, I do have to do crate. Nice. You inspired me to do something with Rust from my bachelor's thesis? Hell yeah! I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. I'm glad you're having fun doing programming. Glad that stuff is interesting to you. Um, because it's very interesting to me as well. Clean up those. Let's hopefully get rid of some, uh, warnings and errors here. Uh, 201 print. Let's turn this into a print LN. Um, uh, 111 on into ref, not used. The graph is not used in this case, and that is very true. Um, we have a uh, private documentation for a graph. Um, link only resolves because you have document private items. I'm okay with that. Value, uh, ref is not in the scope. And do we actually need ref in the scope? We don't. So we can say this is a ref here, and then this is create ref. Okay. What else do we have? Uh, reg reg index. Um, private type reg in a public interface. Uh, value doesn't have to be pub, does it? Um, it does if we want to implement the into on it. Oh, no. This can be um, pub uh, crate. Uh, pub super. Only super needs access to value. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Value is private. It's 43. Um, yeah, like... What do I do here? Never constructed for those. That's fine. You should be adding a default implementation for graph. I kind of agree in this case. So let's change that. Um, uh, default for graph. That's how we're going to structure this. This will be default. Um... Okay, add and sub we'll put towards the end where we'll start implementing instructions. 138 is not required because it is that. Okay. Now, uh, 80, uh, new. Yep, this is now a default. Okay. Um, these aren't constructed. These aren't constructed. AX is not constructed. That's fine. Then we have these. Uh, what do we want to do about these, chat? I always do uh, document private, but... Do I just turn off this warning? Thoughts? Like... It'll break without it? Um, I guess I can mark them pub crate, right? Do I do that? I don't know. I kind of don't like that. <sighs> this index is a value, the given graph. Uh, for the value in the values field. I don't know. We'll just leave it at this, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't really see a great way to capture that, unfortunately. So we have value that's been stripped out, which is really good. Um, convert from a word, convert to, from a reg, and those just wrap them directly. And that will give us the ability to create a value. And then that value, so indexer, we have done, word is done, target reg is done. Error, we can maybe keep open. Then we had another trait in here. Um, into ref. So this, we're going to do uh, spil source into ref. 
into underref.rs thoughts um instead of into ref as one word target reg i think that's okay ah i don't know one word or two words thoughts chat Okay, uh, provides conversion into um, references by allocating, uh, uh, by allocating a value um, in a given uh, graph, traits graph, okay, into ref, this, here, this, this, bam, bam, or, uh, make into ref. Yep. Uh, mod into ref. Uh, la da 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 da. Sort by length. Uh, use into ref into ref. Okay, and then here we'll do uh use. Create ref and um, as well as graph and then uh, use create indexer indexer and word. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff in here and target reg. Um, It's, why can I do, can I do indexer here? Because I do use, it's not pub use, but since I'm below it, I can actually do this. Uh, I guess I can do that for these other ones then. Um, RG crate colon colon, uh, there we go. Let's take a look at um, IL source value. So these can just be uh, word and indexer for now. And then also we can pull in results. Since those are used, pub use makes them public outside, but since we're actually below that uh, module, we can actually access those right here. Um, so pull all of those things in. If this alloc a ref for self, if we're already a reference, then just get the reference. Um, we could also implement that for... Um, um, we could also implement that for, uh, we do it for woe, we do it for ref ref index, and then we also could implement that for, um, what's the other field that we can have a ref for? A ref points to here. Um, it could be a reg, right? So theoretically, we could turn a reg index into that as well, and that would do alloc uh, ref. And basically anything that is into um, uh, how do I do this? I want to do it for I want to implement this automatically for types that implement um, that would handle alloc ref, which is this um four things that implement. How do I do a blanket implementation? I always forget. Uh, oh, I think I can just do this, can I? For things that can be that? Or do I have to make a, a templated value? I don't think you can do this. No. Um, oh, wait. Uh, value. Yeah, that's a trade object, exactly. So this is for, I guess, types T that implement uh, into value this. Um, Jesus Christ. And then we can do this for T. And then that takes a self and we just do that. Right? Um, value is private. in a public interface. And yes, this does need to be public. Into ref needs to be public. That's interesting. 
so what do I do? Do I just implement the two the two variants of this? Or I just say like that uh, well wait, we're never gonna have a register. A user's never gonna have a that actually that error makes sense. We will never have a register given out to a user. And if we never have a register allocated out to a user, then that really doesn't need to be public. And thus that was uh, over uh, oversharing. So uh, reg read, reg write. Let's implement those quick. Um, and then let's also steal this documentation. Impl this thingy. Where do we do this? Uh, add comma, this operation add AB, this instruction, uh, and then we have, how do we capture that? Comments is a literal. Um, bup, 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 and then uh, doc is comments, I think. Okay, so uh, implement these, and then here we can just say uh, x plus y, and this is x minus y, and we could make these more generic if we need to. So x, x plus y, x minus y, and that is correct, and our documentation should be accurate for those. Yep x plus y, x minus y, add and sub. Super simple, don't need too crazy of documentation for that. Uh, this is a read a target a register. So this will be a pub fn. Uh, should I do read reg or reg read and reg write? Thoughts? Reg read, reg write, reg read, reg write. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, value, um, we want to read from a target reg. And that's a TR. And then we will allocate a return register, which is this. Allocate the output register. And then um, this will return a result. Um, ref. Yeah, result ref, ref index. And then here we can do... Uh, Okay, out. Uh, Self.instructions.push. Instruction reg read. And we have an output reference. And we have uh, input register. Uh, create the instruction. Uh, and return the uh, result. Create the instruction. Yeah. Yeah. Create the instruction and return the instru uh, result. You have verb first in other places? Yeah. Um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, write to a target register, reg write. And then we're going to write to a register with a, a value, which is anything that has this, right? Anything that implements that can output. Uh, and then the output of this is none. We don't actually have an output register. Um, and this is reg write. And this is uh, to the target register and the value. And this is going to fail. OK, bop, 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 bop. Uh, create the instruction. OK, this is going to fail. Yep, fantastic. Um, and that wants a ref. Uh, so this is going to be val is equal to val dot into ref. And this is. Um, uh, get a reference to the inputs and then here that's just a value that we convert to into ref we check the results this needs to take self so it can have access to the graph to allocate that 
And that's it. So now what we should be able to do is il.reg read. Um, let a is equal to uh, target reg ax. And this should just work. So this is going to emit a register read operation on ax. And that's what we see. We're reading ax and we're reading it into ref0. All the other things have been pushed. We can now do a and we'll add a6. Uh, this is the result, and then we can do isle.reg write uh, target reg ax, and we'll write out the result of that. Um, and this should complain that we're not checking the results, which is good. Uh, so let's check the result of that. And now we're happy. So we read into reference 0. We then take reference 0. We add uh, a reference 2 to that, and reference 2 is going to be the immediate 6. And then we write that out to uh, that register. Is that not fucking cool? Write the result of that to that register. So now we have uh, basically kind of what we already had before, except we're missing a couple operations, but that's fine. We can add operations very easily. Um, yeah, we can do this. Uh, and, and, or, zor. Um... and or zor do i actually need not i use not on this but i don't know if i need not let's see if i have not in uh nice spelling um not if there's not a not instruction then there's no reason um not complement comp uh, VP not VP. Yeah, I don't think there's a way of doing a not. Right? If there's not a way of doing a not, then we don't need to have a not. Because they don't exist. We just XOR with Fs. Um, add sub and or zor. And or zor. And then all we have to do is allocate these. Output is this and or zor. Uh, and or this is way better. Yes, it is. Um, but this also would be slower in a more ge in a like more standard environment. But in this case, we're actually happy with this. Uh, and or zor. So bam. So now you have and or zor. What other things did we have here? So we had an immediate, which we don't need. We have reg read, reg write, which we have. Immediate, which we don't need. Uh, add sub and or zor, which we have. Bitwise, which we don't fucking need. Uh, we have shifts. And then branches and all those sorts of really hard operations. So. Um, let's just finish this out. Yeah, let's just keep going. Um... Uh, so this is going to be unsigned shift left. Um, uh, shift right, shift arithmetic right. So this is signed, sign shift right. This is unsigned, unsigned shift right. It's 2021. You also need an inclusive or just always in <laughs> sick. Um, uh, over shifting by larger than a uh, bit width uh, results in zero. And then here, over shifting results in that. And then over shifting results in um, uh, the signed bits uh, propagating to all bit positions. Right? It's really important to define these. Um, uh, this is, uh, wrapping unsigned arithmetic. This is, uh, wrapping unsigned arithmetic. And those are bitwise. There's really no caveats there, but it's important to clarify your undefined behavior here. A lot of things will often do this, where Y and, uh, like, bits minus one, or, like, uh, specifically one shift by bits minus one. Um, so, or... One shift by bits minus one. We got there. 
Uh, this is pretty common uh, for architectures to do this. Uh, however, we don't do that. Uh, we just do overshifting results in zero because that is what SIMD instructions do. Uh, right, so these will shift by that amount. Um, and basically, if they shift them out, they shift in zeros. So uh, they actually, I think, explicitly say it. Uh, nope, they don't. Anyways, that's important that it matches up with basically what I'm jitting to. If that behavior needs to exist, then I will emit an AND instruction to mask off Y on the target architecture. So like when I lift, you know, risk five does that, for example, I'll just mask it with, you know, one, 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 or one, 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 or whatever it is to kind of mask those all off. Um, okay, so these variants aren't used, which is fine. Bop, bop, bop. Uh, so we have unsigned left, unsigned right, uh, signed right. And this is SAR, shift right, shift left, shift left, shift right, shift arithmetic right. Okay, so now all those operations are implemented, which is good. Um, uh, let's see, grab this. I need to update Tibia. They just updated the server and I've been logged out and I need to make sure I'm training. Uh, download the clients there. Um, uh, uh, V2 on 6.1. Oh, it's not done downloading yet. Okay. Sorry, I just have to get back logged in. Is, uh, is your bot playing Tibia? There, yeah, this server has a built-in bot that I'm using to train and kind of use magic and stuff, which is nice. So... Hell yeah. Um... Okay. Uh... Wine... Um, yes, log in. Hey, we're logged in. All right, sweet. Okay, we're training again, chat. Good, 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 good. Okay, um, should there be a cell? Nope, it's impossible to shift in that direction. Um, all right. So, uh, we have everything we had here except for sign extend and zero extend. So we can add those as well. Um, and those take immediates. So we'll do, uh, sign extend ref ref index ref ref index, um, U32. And this is interpret and we'll do this as u8 actually interpret um uh so this is output is equal to uh sign sign extend uh a u8 and this is interpret a as a u8 bit integer and sign extend it it to the uh, processor, uh, to the uh, word width. Okay, these are really good operations for when you're working uh, with smaller architectures. Um, honestly, it's hard to say if I really need these instructions. Um, let me think about it. Be right back.
Um, we do want Sign Extend and Zero Extend as they're really popular on uh, larger architectures. Things like uh, Risk Five, uh, sixty-four bit, where you're gonna have thirty-two bit operations pretty prevalent. Same with X eighty six and ARM sixty four. So uh, these will be actually pretty heavily used. So we're gonna keep these. Um. Okay. Would be kind of neat to have a left shift that fills with ones in some cases, but hardly ever worth it. Um, that would be fucking weird. <laughs> that would be really weird. I like it, but it's weird. Okay, so then these ones we're going to special case as well. They're kind of the same as these. Um, dynamic bitmask generation. Uh, so this is a sign extend uh val uh when interpreted interpreted as a uh you uh as a uh bit uh size value okay bits u8 uh, get a reference to the inputs. We also need uh, output allocation. So allocate an output register. Get a reference to the inputs. And then here we'll do a... Um, uh, this is an instruction. Sign extend. And we have an output. We have a value. And we have a bit. Um, ah! And we return a ref ref index. Okay, and this is the outputs. Create the instruction, sign extend, and then this is sign extend. Chat, we're so fucking dumb. Did I say that? <laughs> I don't think I said that. Um, I don't think it's worth making a macro for this. But <laughs> you were thinking that. No. Zero extend. Bam. Yep, and we're missing a delimiter somewhere. Blah 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 blah. Here. I told you we're dumb, chat. Yep. I missed the up arrow like three times. Okay, sign extend and then zero extend. Okay, so now we have reg read, reg write, add sub, all of these. We got rid of not because we don't need it. We, d we decided we don't need it. Zero extend and sign extend. And then we need uh, conditions. Shit. Damn it, chat. I thought we were getting close. Set condition, branch, branch condition. Oh, and that was just scratch. Okay, sweet. So we only have like two more, two or three more things. Um, okay. Okay, so. Um. This is really cool. Um. No warnings, no errors. Everything's looking good. Everything looks fantastic. We're using all the code. Everything's generic as fuck. Uh, so now we're gonna do um, output is equal to if uh, x condition y not zero else zero. Um. Set cond is what we called it here, yeah. Uh, and we're gonna have an output. We're gonna have a this. We're gonna have a condition. We're gonna have another input. Okay, so now we need a condition. Um, 
Impul debug for condition. Okay, and then we'll do this. FN format self format mute core format formatter uh, the lifetime core format results match self something like this Chad, did we do it? Fuck. Uh, core formats debug for condition. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I can do uh format dot right stir. I think. Is that what it's called? Sometimes, chat, we're just too smart. Sometimes we're just too smart, chat. I'm sorry that you have to deal with us being so goddamn smart. But sometimes you just gotta deal, okay? Um, sometimes we just know what things are called and we know how to write code. Sometimes we don't. A lot of times we don't. And sometimes Desu tells us what to do. But what is Desu chat? Why are we not scared of Desu? Because he is... I don't have chat open right now, so I'm not really interacting with you, sorry. Um, Desu is AI. <laughs> Avoid Desu at all costs. All right, uh, so this is good. That's never can, uh, created, which is fine. Then uh, we'll do the same thing here. So these are all like special cases. I don't think it's really make worth making a macro for these. So um, set uh, the output to all uh, ones if the condition if the uh, condition is true. Okay. So we have x, we have y, we have a condition, uh, which is a condition. Okay, and then this yields uh, results ref ref index. So we allocate an output register, which makes sense. Then we uh, this is set condition, set condition, allocate an output register. Um, then we create the uh, uh, this is get references get references to the inputs and then we have y and x x y uh, creates the instruction why not use rust format because i think it produces really ugly code instruction.push instruction uh set cond out x cond y uh, I like aligning things a lot, and uh, with Rust format, you don't get those alignments, which is really annoying. Okay, out. Okay, and then here we can do uh, let z is aisle dot uh, set cond a condition equal. Uh, if a is equal to r, then set that conditional and then pass that in as z. Okay, into ref, uh, not implemented because we didn't get that result. And there we go. So now we have set condition equal, comparing those two, which is fantastic. Rust format sev sda, Jesus. A little aggro there, chat. You don't need to be that aggro. Um, okay, and then we'll do... Uh, that's for condition. Okay, with that, we have a graph. We have a literal. Uh, okay. 
now what we want to do is for an instruction we want to pretty print instructions but i don't know if we can yeah we would need a lot of shit to pull in for a graph so what we're just gonna do is um uh uh resolve uh immediates and pretty prints and instruction and then this is gonna be a pub fn uh pretty prints instruction this will take a self um and then this will take an instruction which is a reference to an instruction uh instruction tr and ref index Okay, and then this will return a, uh, I guess a format, a core formats results. And then here we're gonna do a match instruction. If it's an instruction adds, then we have a out x, y. And then we can do a right to out is a uh, mute core format formatter okay right to out of this plus this and then uh we'll just say uh, five um and that looks pretty good and there we go we're done just make sure that works. 238. Lawyers, what are those? Copilot.allow? Wait, is that a thing that you can do now? Jesus. Um. Nice. Okay, so we have this. We need to resolve the inputs for these. Uh, um, uh, resolve, and we'll say uh, val. Um. Hmm. Okay, uh, right. This is equal to this plus this. And these are the aisle registers, those are refs, and then the refs we can resolve, and when we resolve a ref, we're just going to look it up in the values table, and then values, uh, value, hmm, impl core format, debug for uh, value, uh, whoa, reg index, uh, okay, then we'll do fn, uh, format, self, format, mute, core, format, formatter, I don't know why I don't like pulling in formatter, uh, or core format, because I know I can use those, of course, but uh, I don't know why I'm just not a huge fan of it. Match self value m val. Uh, this is just going to be a write. And we're going to write that value this way uh, to format. And we're going to write that as... Uh, Actually, yeah, we'll just do this. Um, a word implements uh, 
Oh, it implements display. Okay, so we can just use straight up display. And that's just val. And then here, if we have a register, then we have a reg, ring, reg index, and this is an index. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, say ILR and then index for that. Um, okay, and then in this situation, we have... Is that gonna work? Is index printable? That's a reg rig index, and a reg index is an indexer and an indexer. I don't think an indexer implements that, but uh, I think this code just hasn't compiled yet, but that's okay. Uh, bop bop. Bop bop. Um, then we're gonna do some gross stuff. Self resolve. Oh, actually, we'll just say resolve. Mm. Look up. Oh, look up X and look up Y. And then put a little question mark on there. Okay. Macro rules. Uh, look up. This is going to take an expression. And then uh, we'll do something with that. We'll just return five. Okay, that's what I thought. Exactly. Uh, display is not implemented for reg reg index. Um, but what we can do is we can get that, which is now a reg index. And reg index can't be uh, with that. Let's see if we have uh, debug implemented for it. We don't. Okay. So we're just going to go into... Uh, else source indexer and then here we'll just require that you also have a uh, core format debug and core format display those are supported for everything anyways so that's really easy and then we have this where we look up these add sub uh, and or zor and or zor uh shift left shift ah shift right and shift arithmetic right uh unsigned and signed shifty shifty okay Um, yep, those are not used, and that's fine. We can just, uh, use those here. Let's just implement this correctly. self dep values, um, uh, expert. Wow, it's really that easy. Maybe I don't need an LU. Um. Oh, I can't do that, can I? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I can do that. Fuck yeah. Okay, now we have a reg read, reg write. Uh, let's do sign extend. Um, that's okay. We'll continue this down. Sign extend that. With that. Oh, that's actually uh, that's actually a constant. Which makes sense, because we can't propagate that. We actually specifically want sign extend and zero extend to operate on constants. Um, because that uh, has... Uh, it allows us to optimize it better on the JIT side of things. Uh, we'll have set conditional here. Um, okay. Then here we'll say uh, this is equal to this, this, this. Um. Okay, reg read, reg write. We'll put those at the top. Uh, reg read is uh, O and targets. Um. 
So we have an output and we just read the target register, which is fine. And then a uh, reg write is the same thing, but uh, T and O and then T is first and we're assigning that. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, 248. Hmm, maybe we should do some of these. What's going on here? There we go. I think that's right. Uh, 236. Uh, private type. 234.91. Is that due to debug? No. Uh, we can have debug there. Can't leak private type on 234. Oh, instruction is private. That's okay. Uh, pretty print instruction doesn't need to be public. That's the solution to that. Uh, is this going to fit? No. Okay. Okay. So then we can do uh, pub fn pretty print. Self, this will actually do a graph traversal in the future, but right now it's not going to. Uh, pretty print the entire graph uh, for inst in self dot instructions uh, can be a ref self dot pretty uh, print inst inst question mark. Uh, and we also need the formats, the outputs. And they normally say format, so we'll say format here. Same with this. FMT. Done. Okay. Uh, S out. Format G. Oh, God. Um, S. There we go. And we should be good. Uh, 235. Yep. This is just okay. Um, dump all instructions. Bam. Eventually, we'll need to do a graph traversal once we have a graph. But now what we should be able to do is... Um, Uh, how do I get access to the core formatter? Uh, I guess. Uh, do I just do this? Do I just do this? Um, il dot uh, pretty print mutable reference to this. Um, what's the right way to do this one? What's the right way to do this chat? Standard out. It implements right, but that's, uh, IO right. Um, Can you print a... F mm. I guess we can just... um. Format... Thoughts, chat? Why is chat being so quiet? Uh, right, format args, arguments, formatter. Uh, 
Um, this should be possible. Yeah. Standard out. It implements uh, IO right. Hmm. Standard format right, dine right. So I feel like this is the most performant way to do this. Got my hands full of OpenGL. Oh, hell yeah. Bashing on a server. Uh, also don't know uh, Rust or how to make an aisle. Oh, it's just basic stuff. It's just some basic stuff. Ooh. Big brain. Um, eh, we can just do this, uh, uh, use standard. What? Do I need to say the specific version? Ah, oh, that fucked up result. Um. Oh yeah, the prelude doesn't shadow. So if you define it before, I think you're fine. Uh, whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> Alec, string, string new. Fuck it. I ain't got time for that shit. Um, temp print ln. Uh, Alec. Really? Oh, you know what I do? Uh, so debug has those. Pretty print will go to something that imples. Um, right. I guess I don't want to do move. Uh, you can't do this, can you? <laughs> I don't think Rust allows you to do this. Does, oh, it does. All right. Hell yeah. Uh, S right, right, LN, G. There we go. Um, so then can I do uh, standard... Can I do standard IO standard out now? No. Okay. Fuck it. Um, all right. So ILR zero is AX. ILR one is zero plus six. Uh, ILR2 is set depending on if they're equal, and then AX is ILR2. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That looks pretty damn good to me. Um, let's do add 8 now to uh, R, propagate that even further. Yep, and we'll just keep getting more and more expressions. So now what I want to do is this is... 
A five and six? Let's try this. Um, R. We don't need that. We're just going to have this be R. Okay, so we have a sink. So five, six, five plus six plus eight, and then that props into there. So what we should be able to do, uh, we're going to write this as a quick temporary um, const prop uh, mutable reference to self um, for, uh, we'll do uh, self.instructions.retain uh, things that match in this closure, and this is going to give us an X, and then we can say match X, and if it is an add, uh, OXY, then, um, um, If let sum, if let sum x sum y is equal to self dot values dot get x, uh, we can just say x dot zero dot as u size. Um, x uh, y dot zero dot as u size, and we could add a deref target for this if we wanted to, but we're just we're hacking this right now. Um, okay, so if that's the case, then those aren't sums. These are going to be if they are value immediates. Um, okay, if let sum that, blah, 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 blah. If let this is equal to this. Um... Okay, what's going on here? If let this is equal to that. Oh, yikes. Um, back to the hacking part of this. <laughs> All right, that looks good. Um, Uh, we're going to keep it. In this case, if they're both... Uh, otherwise, we're going to keep it. If they are both immediate values, then we're going to do self.values size is equal to um, values uh, value immediate x wrapping add y Okay, and then uh, we do not want to keep that anymore, so we can remove it from the vector. Um, oh, should we call it, chat? Should we call it? Let's call the function. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, and then let's try this. Let's, uh, r is equal to isle dot add r with x. And then let x is equal to isle dot reg read, uh, target reg ax. That's what I like to see. So that just propagated everything through. And then we have uh, 19 plus ILR3. Pretty happy with that one, chat. Um, We get AX. We add that to 19. And we write that out back to AX. We be cons propping. Yeah, only for ads. But this works great. This works great. It just updates everything. We don't actually have to go through and modify any immediates or any inputs or anything. We just replace things. And we can replace registers wherever we want to. 
Um, so this is just done. Like, this is const prop for ads. That's actually really good. Um, and this should be pretty fucking cheap, I'd imagine. Um, for blah and zero to one, uh, this R is equal to this. Okay, R with six. Is this just gonna delete everything? Uh, it's also going to crash. Really? Really? Oh, shit. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, we just had those uh, too large. So this will fail, but U16s, this will fit in a U16. So we can probably go up to like 50k. Oh, actually, probably not. Probably like 20k. Um, out of refs. Nice. Cool. 20,000. Uh, let it is a uh, standard instant now. Uh, instant, instant now. Standard time instant now. Uh, and then prints ln. Already making use of the generics? Exactly. Like, I don't know why chat told me not to use the generics. Because you're just wrong, chat. You're just wrong. Um, then... Uh, cargo test, release, no capture. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go to U32. Uh, let's change this to... Yeah, we can do that, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I was worried if these values lookups or these enum variants would be too bad. That's really not that bad. That's 100 million iterations. 100 million iterations of a constant propagation. Wow. Wow. And then we can do uh, il.reg right, target reg ax, and we can uh, write um r a reg under right and let's make sure that we didn't fail okay there we go so um this overflow so we can't see the result let's just change it to 128 bit architecture thoughts chat done 128 bit architecture complete um it's a little bit slower uh, 32. Let's actually just have this be ours, add 0 and 0, and then we just add 1 to that. So this should be uh, 100 million is the result here. Um, and that'll fit in a U32. Yep, 100 million. U128. Boop. Just shoots through. Yep. 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 It's that easy, chat. It's that easy. Uh, yep, yeah, and then if we did U8, this will probably actually be really no different in perf. Uh, yeah, that's about the same. So U32. U64 also will maybe be a little bit slower than the 332. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, it actually was. Um, perfect. So, yeah, we can just change the architecture width to whatever we want it to be. Uh, which is really fucking cool. And then we can change these if we want to, to cut down on storage. But yeah, 369 milliseconds to do that iteration. So if we do this, uh, divided by 0 0.3691288.03, um, we're getting 270 million iterations per second of cons prop. And that is fucking good. Yeah, could it be faster? Sure. But it's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. Chat? I think... We're gonna call it here for the night. And then we'll stream at a respectable time tomorrow. I'm gonna get some dinner, because I had a very small lunch. And I'm a hungry boy. And that's what we're gonna do, chat. I'm pretty happy with this.
I'm really happy with this. It is probably still the fastest cons prop. Yeah, because we just don't have to do... We don't have to, like, look up if it came from an immediate instruction. Like, this might genuinely be faster than uh, what we were doing before. So, anyways, we got to find a place to send you off to. Um, so we're going to send you off to... Let's see. Uh, we're going to send you to... Well, now everything's fucking hot tub streamers. Um, science and technology. Uh, we're going to send you over to Lana. You're going to check in with Lana. We're going to see what she's been up to. Um, looks like she's working on a game. So we're going to send y'all over to there. Be nice. Have fun. Uh, enjoy game dev. Unity game dev? Hell yeah. All right, see y'all around, chat. Behave, be good.